Kia ora te whanau. Uh, welcome to day two of the National Tertiary Championships here for volleyball run by UTSNZ. Um, today we have a semi-final in front of me. Uh, I'm currently soloing at the moment. Uh, may have someone come along in about five minutes or so. Unfortunately, he's uh, dealing with some car issues. Uh, but the two teams we have in front of us, uh, University of Waikato uh, coming from Hamilton and we've got the University of Canterbury Obviously, this is their hometown. Uh, this is the first time I think Canterbury have been on the on the live stream thus far. So hopefully, a few supporters there. Uh, looks like teams are just getting ready to go out. Got Labira on the side, ready to jump on. And we've got Victoria University of Wellington um, on the, the duty stand by the looks of things. Uh, so, just so you know, this is day two of the competition. This is the semi-finals here. Uh, but obviously, aiming for a final spot. I think both. Both teams here are, are quite strong. Uh, they've got a wide, wide range of players. Uh, just looking at the list here, University of Waikato woman. Uh, we've got Matamata College uh, alumni. We've got Hillcrest High School, New Plymouth Girls High School, Matamata College again, Kadi Kadi College, uh, Tauranga Girls. Uh, a wide range of, uh, of of girls from different schools there. Um, obviously coming into the University of Waikato, uh, and then for the University of Canterbury. We have uh, alumni from Rickerton High School, Burnside High School, the likes of Waimea College, the, the Mount, that seems to be a common theme amongst teams, is, you know, the Mount Monganui College, uh, Burnside High School again, even Guerin College from Nelson in there. So it's quite common to see. Uh, mostly, mostly Canterbury teams, mostly Tasman teams and the UC team, where you've got a lot of teams, um, schools from the Waikato that are feeding into the University of Waikato itself. So should be very interesting to see how this game plays out. Uh, Prediction-wise, oh, I mean, being maybe a bit biased uh, living here in Canterbury, but University of Canterbury have a pretty strong team here. Uh, lots of Kelsey Butlin here going back to serve, number 29. Uh, 22, obviously, Petra Manson's probably a standout player to look for. Likes of Alana Pyle there through the, through the middle of number 11. Uh, should be interesting. And obviously, Ava Dixon on the other side of the court for the Waikato. Here we go, first play out of out of system there. Kelsey Butler having to take that uh, that first touch. Big swing from the Waikato, but unfortunately uh, Alana Piles just blocked that out of the court. So that's the first point done here. Uh, that's 1-0 to the University of Waikato. Uh, for anyone who's curious, uh, right now it's currently minus 1 degrees in uh, Christchurch. Uh, meant to get to about 11 degrees by midday at a high of 11. I know this ain't the weather forecast, but hey, might as well inform people out there. So that's a nice play there from uh, Kelsey Butlin running a line of pile through the middle. Kelsey Butlin having to do a lot of passing this game. And Canterbury just making little mistakes, uh, putting the ball just out, not able to make that contact with the block. Hey, it's, it's 8 o'clock in the morning. Anyone who gets out there on the court at 8 o'clock in the morning, you know, I, I applaud them. Here we are. So we've got, uh, no, it looks like Molly Allison Carney here, but the serve. That's a big swing there from uh, Eva Dixon out on the on the outside for the University of Waikato. Yet again, going for the swing and capitalising on that. Uh, University of Waikato starting off really strong this game. Just, you know, opting for the outside, not doing anything too special. Great pass here from, uh, well, not, not the best pass for PJ Ant Madison, but enough to be out of system and play it in. You get used to that D. Um, can we start, I can't seem to find an answer this morning. Uh, down 4-0. Uh, we've got coach Gabby Evenson and Fran Evenson on the side there. Um, they'll be trying to think of some elaborate plan to get them out of the situation. And, of course, on the other side, we've got coach Alexander Mariano. So Waikato holding that serve, bit of a low pass there. Kelsey obviously opting to send it to Petra, smart move. And there's yet again a block that's gone outside the court from Canterbury, if we just watch that replay. Obviously they knew it was going to the outside, uh, Eva Dix has just got up there and had a swing. And again, uh, just a nice slope serve, nothing special, uh, a lot of pile through the middle there. Birdside alumni, uh, this seems to be your uh, first year of study I believe at the University of Canterbury. Mm -hmm. 
And obviously we have quite a few Shirley players on this court. Majority of these, I'm pretty sure all of these players are Shirley Volleyball Club. Uh, they've got that chemistry already on the court. And here we are. Hopefully that chemistry is going to actually shine through for them eventually. Uh, started off a bit slow for them. Uh, Petra Madison back to serve here. Uh, fun fact about Petra is apparently she's uh, travelled to 20 countries. It's pretty impressive in a, a lifespan of only, you know, qu quarter of a hundred. It's a roll there and it's, it's just gone out. Waikato starting to make a few mistakes. Um, that puts Canterbury on 3-5. Right, at the moment it's just a service game. I think both te teams are a bit cold this morning. You know, maybe they're, they're a bit sore from yesterday playing, you know, free games. I think Waikato only played one, but Canterbury have played an extra game there. Eva Dixon swinging into the net on that ball. Unfortunately, she's just waiting out there, and that's really been their only option. They haven't really had the chance to use the middle so far this game. Pitch Madison back to serve again. Obviously putting that serve pressure on Eva Dixon. It's challenging her to have to, you know, pass the ball and then get to the outside position quickly. Oh, I think that's uh, Rebecca Colson there. She uh, just unfortunately couldn't get that ball. I think it was just put a little bit too tight on the net for her. Yet again, another Burnside uh, alumni. Uh, coached by Sam Ryburn, I believe. Got quite a few on the court. Three of the, three of the six on the court right now. Uh, went to Burnside High School, all coached by Sam Ryburn. He'll be, uh, he'll be quite proud. I believe he's up in Hamilton at the moment, uh, coaching the NZ Under-19 women's team, who've just currently won uh, the third game of their test series and to play their fourth today. So, you know, he'll probably hopefully be tuning in to, to watch this game as well. Right, so Eva Dixon, you know, just capitalising off that block there. Right, looks like we've got number 17 for the University of Waikato back to serve here, uh, Kaylee Strange. Just use of uh, Eileen Dixon there through the middle. That's a nice connection there from uh, Kelsey Butler to Eileen Dixon. Uh, both Rickerton High School girls in the past. Uh, you know, Kelsey's played at that extra level. She's she's played in the NBL. You know, she's she's a good setter all round. She, you know, one of her strengths is the ability to set that right option at the right time, no, knowing who to go to when you're in those pressure moments. Uh, so hopefully we'll actually get the chance to actually see that this game. So number 25 here, um, Philanfa back to serve. That's a nice slow serve there. Bumps it to the outside. Yet again, just using Eva Dixon. Petra Madison, fantastic pick up there. Yet again, just using Eva Dixon all day. Petra unfortunately not able to get underneath that ball to pick it up. University of Waikato just holding their own, you know, they're not using too many options, uh, they're sending it to Eva, they know that she's, you know, the one option to go to. Um, Eva was part of a very successful New Cliff Girls uh, high team coached by her father. Um, Maya Dixon obviously her older sister, successful player herself. Right, so University of Canterbury to serve here. Uh, Rubik Colson uh, just coming back to serve. You know, one of the shorter players on the court, but, you know, do not take that for granted. You know, do not underestimate her. And Waikato have successfully made a dump there uh, by the looks of it into the three metre line, just in front of it. Um, she seems pretty stoked with herself. I would be. All right, so it'll be interesting to see what happens here. Uh, obviously... Eva Dixon's in the back hall here. So interesting to see if they're going to go to her on the pipe option. That's a nice serve there. Great pass in from Petra. Use of Eileen Dixon on the uh, opposite there. Setting it outside. All right, so that's obviously a theme, is that they're going to be setting it to their outsides. You know, they're not going to be really using that middle option too much. And that's off the blocks there. So yet again, uh, University of Waikato, just able to, you know, not playing that big game but just just getting out there having a crack having a crack and uh, they seem to be winning that oh, coach Alexander Mariano here obviously speaking some words of wisdom interesting fact about uh, Alex is uh, you know he came over from, from Brazil and he actually ended up at Invercargill to start with you know not a great place to start your career but I mean he had a really good time at Southland Boys High School 
uh, uh, sorry, Southland Girls High School, uh, coaching girls there to start with. Uh, and he did a lot of good things for uh, Volleyball Southland when he first came here. So, you know, he's, he's got a lot of practice. He's, he knows his stuff. He knows his game. Knows the game of volleyball, and he loves the game of volleyball. Well, Eileen Dixon back to serve here. That's a unfortunate. The, the float just dropped a little bit too soon and didn't get over the net. All right, number 11 from the University of Waikato here. Back to serve. Number 11, there's even no number 11 on the sheet. It's a bit awkward. Right, Kelsey Butler back to serve here. Uh, just taking your time, I believe. Just breathing in that, that rich Canterbury year. Right, looks like Felicity Hatcher. Uh, she's just been brought on the front court there. Number 10. Cool, Kelsey Butler, successful serve there. So Canterbury back in the game here. It's 9-11, uh, it's early days, it's now 10-11. They've crept back in, they started off a bit slow, but uh, I think they found a bit of their pace here. Right, Kelsey Butler need again to serve. Nice float serve there into the deep. Serving on uh, Molly there. And Waikato, just, you know, I think Alana Pyle kind of went, oh, Probably, you know, should have got there. And unfortunately, she just, you know, she got up in the air and it just it's just come off her block a bit awkwardly. Just need to, to penetrate. And it looks like I've just had my co-host arrive in the stadium. I believe he's had some issues with uh, technical issues starting his car this morning. But um, I th hopefully he's ready to go once he jumps on the mic here. Uh, so that puts us at 11-12, I believe. Uh, Canterbury down 11-12. Or is it 10-12? Sorry, 10-12. Welcome, Luke. Oh, kia ora. Oh, it's Christchurch frosty mornings got to me again, you know. Oh, it's you know, it's I had to get out there as well this morning, Luke, and uh, yeah, it took a while to defrost the old car. Oh, all right. So yet again, we're just seeing that theme of uh, it's being sent to the outside for Waikato. Um, so to update you, Luke, uh, it looks like Wa Waikato held a five 0 lead at the start. Uh, Canterbury have kind of crept back in the game. Uh, serving has been a big thing. Not too many rallies. I think that's just due to that. You know, it's pretty cold out here. Yeah, it might take these players a little bit longer to get warm. Warm in the mornings, you know. I don't think they got the heaters on pumping this morning. <laughs> Do they even have heaters here in Pioneer <laughs> <laughs> All right, so it's 11-14. Uh, Waikato down by three points. Uh, sorry, Waikato up by three points here. Canterbury down by three. Nice serve there. Uh, just seem to be serving on Petra Madison a lot. I don't know how I feel about that option. Uh, Molly just picking that ball up at the backcourt. Use of Ava Dixon there. Kelsey Butler opting for the pipe option with, with Petra, but I think it just came up a bit too short for her. And that is a timeout there. So, you know, coaches uh, Gabby Emerson here and Fran Emerson, daughters of Mary Emerson, uh, or Meza, as many people know her as, um, you know, they'll be trying to say something to inspire the girls. You, you know, you're still in the game. But we're coasting a bit. We're making a lot of errors, just swinging errors. Nothing to do with the passing, but we're just not able to execute that. And it's interesting to see how they deal with the game when Petra's in backcourt. Yeah, that's one of their strongest hitters uh, in their team, you know. And, and with that option um, on the pipe not, not being executed well, um, who's their go-to person? That's it. And so someone, someone's probably going to have to step up to that. So we've got Rebecca Colson here, first year out, uh, out of Burnside High School. Um, she's, she's out here on the open. You know, not the biggest hitter. You know, and if I look at the pairing from the other side of the court, you know, she's going to be easily blocked out. Oh, Alana Pyle, the middle, having to take the ball. Successfully takes the ball and executes the hit. We love to see that, don't we, Luke? Yeah, we love to see it, mate. And, and the coaches will be happy with that. It's a well, well, uh, well used timeout. <coughs> Excuse me. And uh, yeah, good execution on that play. So here we go. Alana Pyle back to serve here. It's an oh, unfortunate error again. So we've had a few serving errors here from Canterbury. I think that's been the difference. Yeah, and that's just been the story of the tournament, hasn't it? Serving the team that serves better t tends to win this in this tournament. That's it. Age-old philosophy: put the ball in the court. That's a great pass there from the libero, number one. 
There we go. They've got to get a free ball here. Petra's just been able to get behind that ball. That's a fantastic pass. But it looks like it's a big touch there from the University of Waikato. Yeah, I like that, eh? Running, running through the middle again, you know, two balls to Eileen Dixon in the middle, and, and look what they've got. They've executed on the point. Substitution here. Number 25 here if, uh, for Lampert. Uh, she's just going to serve. Good float serve on her. Let's just see if she can execute that here. Yet again, that's, there we go. That's a nice serve. Putting them out of system and giving them a free ball there. Kelsey Butler just using that middle again. That, that's obviously her preference. When Petra's in the backcourt, let's go to the middle. Going to get another free ball. Great passing from the libero. Use of Rebecca Coulson. Doesn't have to do anything too special. Just puts that ball over. A bit of a double swing there. We <laughs> love the, to see it. Missed the first one and then still have a go at the second one with the left hand. It's, it's pretty impressive. I, I rate that from Wiley Dixon. Right, Canterbury having to fight back here. 14 16 down. Now, yeah, Flanford for back to serve again. And it's a great flow serve. She's opted to serve on Eva Dixon. It's going out to Eva Dixon. And Kelsey sent it out to Rebecca Colson, and she's able to execute that hit quite nicely. You know, Canterbury is starting to get a bit of momentum here, and then and we can see their gap, they're closing in on that gap there. And that all stemmed from that timeout as well, you know. It's a, a bit of a shift in um, uh, mentality as well, I think. You reckon they brought the milk bottles into that timeout there, Luke? Probably not, <laughs> eh? Probably not. Not, not. not the milk bottles. It's a bit too early for that. Sorry, was. <laughs> Oh, I would have seen that as a two-touch, but... Oh, great chase Great hustle there. there. Oh, pitch has just fallen into that volume New Zealand uh, flag on the side there. But she's uh, back up. That would be uh, a, a huge, uh, you know, damage or, you know, to the overall U University of Canterbury side of pitch was to go down for an injury now in the semi-final. 15-17 down. And Pitch has let that go. <laughs> it and it's goes gone out. <laughs> All right, so it's pretty much neck and neck here now. It's 16-17. Uh, Rebecca Colson back to serve here. Uh, so interesting to note here that Rebecca Colson and Alana Pyle um, both starred in a 2021 High School National Finals uh, last year, taking out of Burnside. And Petra was also in that same position about seven years ago now in 2015. Uh, you know, so they've both had the ability to actually win uh, Div 1 National Champs. So they understand what pressure is. Yeah, that's really impressive. You know, Div, Div 1 Champs is, 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 a, is a big ask, you know. Yeah, you've it's got three ask. of them on the court. And the, the amount of people that are actually watching those games, like, the, whole, the, whole, the whole tournament goes. That's it, so uh, there's a lot of pressure in those kinds huge. of situations. So th th they they should thrive in this in this environment. Kelsey Butler sitting it to Petra. Unfortunately, just couldn't quite execute that. Use of the middle for the first time from Waikato to set, I think. And Petra's just getting up there and having that swing. Waikato, the hustle game is strong. And a big roar there from the, the University of Canterbury supporters. Yeah, it's good to always good to see see the uh, the men's teams come down and support the girls, and vice versa. You know, um, it just breeds a bit of culture, and, and and especially when you're on the court playing, you know, you love to hear that that energy come from off the court as well. That's it, and oh, that's another point for Canterbury. The even. It's 18 all now. And it's interesting that you're pointing that out, Luke, about, you know, that supportive culture, you know, and having that community in volleyball because uh, Felicity Hatcher here has said that, you know, she started playing volleyball in high school because the boys' teams were nice to look at. <laughs> you know, now, that's, if you want to talk about culture, yeah. You know, I always used to say to the boys that I used to coach that, hey, you've, you know, you've got good odds at the, at the social. I was like, you know, there's always got to be more girls' teams than boys' teams. All right, you've got good odds right there. You know, Canterbury have done well to claw their way back in here. It's, it's all tied up 18 all. Um, Waikato have caught a timeout, and I think it's good before calling that timeout before they've lost that lead. Because um, being up on the scoreboard is, is a real mental game, right? Like, to, to, to be on top and uh, know you're on top almost changes how you play as well. Completely. You're wanting to take a little bit more risk, you know? You don't yeah. play it so safe. 
Here we go. Eileen Dixon, number 14, back to surf here. And oh, that's a coach's point right there. <laughs> Time out from Alex Mariano. He's stoked with himself. Number 11 back to serve here. It's a nice deep serve. Rebecca Colson taking it on the hands. Lada Pile unfortunately just serving it out. That puts Waikato 2018. So, you know, they were 18 all, and then that timeout happened. Things yeah, change. Great use of a timeout. And we've, we've seen um, from Coach Alex Mariano this whole tournament that, that he's. When he calls these timeouts, the, the game just shifts. Eh? He, he knows what to say. I'd, I'd love to sit in yeah, and hear what he's telling me. I want to know what he's, what what he's saying. What are the magic little words he's saying in there? All right, Kelsey Butlin back to serve here. Look at the substitution yet again. So it looks like Fizz Hatch is being used as uh, that front court D, uh, whereas her, um, uh, Philanthropy is just coming in in the back court. Played a little bit of passing game. Nice serve there from Kelsey Butlin. Couldn't quite get on that block. Yeah, a bit of a gap there in that block. Middle they needs to it. close out. And unfortunately just, yeah, couldn't quite get there. 21-19 up here for the Waikato. Kelsey using a lot of oh, pile. Oh, that's great. That's a great option there. I, I, I might, you know, be jumping the gun, but I don't think I've seen a team use a middle as much as this University of Canterbury Women's Day. Well, it's a great option, you know. It's, it's running through the middle court, especially when it's one on one. Um, you saw in that last play that they were set was offset; they were stacked to the post a little bit more, and the, the opposing, the blocking middle didn't shift across. So all that means is it's you got an open net for the middle. It's almost easier for the post hitter to come in and block that the a quick rather than the that's it middle. Hundred percent. And it looks like there was a net touch there from the University of Canterbury. You know, uh, some unforced errors. All right, it's a nice serve there. So it's just, oh, yet again, use to the middle, and that's four touches, unfortunately. So it's a timeout going there to uh, University of Canterbury. Yeah, I think uh, uh, Waikato is starting to catch on a little bit to that middle and, and, and seeing it a little bit earlier. They, they managed to get two blocks up on that, and it, it, it ended up working for them. That's it, and I feel like, you know, this is because at the moment we're seeing that, you know, they, they can't rely on Petra all the time. They're, they try to use that middle, and they just don't have their other outside option. And I think Kelsey is maybe lacking that trust. So it'll be interesting to see what option she sets now. I'm wondering what the Edmondson sisters set in there. Waikato two points off the, off the set. Oh, that's a great pass there from the libero. And use of Petra. All right, there's their go-to. And Eva Texas just having a swing there. That's a great shot down the line. And we just rewatch that. And yeah, Felicity Hatcher, unfortunately, you know, I think she's a bit outmatched out there on the uh, on the block to, the, to Eva Dixon's hit. So this is set point here to Waikato, 24-20. And that is the set. So we have 25-20 to Waikato. Didn't see that coming, people. I think uh, the underdogs here have uh, come out of nowhere. They've come to play. You know, they've just been looking really well on the court, you know. Um, especially when, when they go to their outside option, that mismatch uh, uh, down the line uh, with Ava Dixon. You know, they're, they're really using that post ball well. Highlights from the game. And again, we're seeing we're seeing uh, University of Canterbury use that middle quite a lot more. Um, what I'd like to see is is to mix it up a bit, and instead of keep going to the middle, uh, mix it up every play. You know, middle outside D, uh, spread the ball around the court, give them a little more to think about. 100%. Now, having a look at this University of Waikato team, it's interesting to see we've got quite a spread across the first and fourth years. So there's a, a, a wide range of you know experienced players in the University of Waikato team, as well as some some youth, youth, youthful people coming through as well. A lot of first years in this team. Um, 
interesting to see that uh, one of Grace Cooper's highlights here is um, staying injury free. <laughs> well, that's that's a pretty good highlight. I'm, yeah, I'm not yeah, gonna that's lie. a highlight of your volleyball playing career. I'm like, damn. I wish I could have had injury free. Now it's interesting to see as well that um, across the uh, on this bit of paper I'm just looking at here, describe what preparation you've put into this event. And all of them have said that actually we've had the chance to train, you know, a, a lot together because a lot of these players, well, all of these players, in fact, all play for Hamilton Huskies. <laughs> so actually, what we have here is basically the Hamilton Huskies versus Shirley Volleyball Club game. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe maybe this is a matchup we'll see again at nationals then, and uh, and maybe maybe a bit of a grudge match, maybe potentially, potentially. All right, here we are. It's uh, second set now. So, uh, those of you who are tuning in, uh, Waikato are up one nil. Uh, it was 25-20 in the first. <coughs> Waikato want to, uh, you know, keep that momentum. We all know how important it is. If you win that first set, Luke, you know, you just bring that momentum into the second. Yeah, well, it, it goes one of two ways. You know, it's often teams can switch off. The winning team can switch off a little bit and, and uh, let the opposing team back in. Or, um, yeah, if you're, if you're the opposing team, you... You want to come and hit hard straight from the get go. Yeah, you don't want to. You don't want to be down a set and then come into the next set losing. Interesting to see here. Uh, it looks like uh, the University of Canterbury have made uh, a sub here, so they've put on Bridget Noble, uh, who's from Garen College originally. Uh, so that's a Nelson. So she's got some nice little skill here, but still, yeah, again, Kelsey Butlin using using the uh, middle there. And it's interesting to know that uh, Kelsey Butlin noted that one of her biggest strengths was actually setting the right option at the right time. And it seems like she's, you know, over-relied on that middle here. Great pass in there. Nice use of the D. Petra having a big swing. And she's able to execute that. A big roar from the UC men's team up in the, in the stands. <laughs> I think they'll be happy about that one. Here we are, Petra back to serve here. Great serve there, putting that serve pressure on. Bit of a flat set Yet again, there. Kelsey Butler's use of the middle. You're really using a lot of pile. Honestly, I don't think I've seen a middle get more touches in a game this tournament. Number 17 there for University of Waikato. Kayla Strange just getting up there and having a swing. Uh, she seems to be chuckled by the way she actually hit that ball, I think. She's having a bit of a laugh now for teammates. Good to see everyone's having a bit of fun. It's what it's all about, you know. We're, what, else, what other reason do you play volleyball for other than to, to have fun, right? That's, that's what gets everyone started. Um, obviously, there's like the competition aspect and, and, and a lot of these players are uh, competitive and high-level players but you know at the end of the day we're all here to have fun right oh 100 percent that's exactly the reason it's a deep tip there from alana pile that's a great block Bridget noble able to get that block there let's watch that replay here so that's a that's a you know she got both hands on that ball there so alana pile back to serve here It's a great serve there. Putting that pressure on uh, Eva Dixon, it means that she can't, unfortunately, get out to the outside as quick as she thinks she can. But she's uh, had that ball put on her. It's another great block, you know. Just two hands on the ball, in the right spot, square, taking the right shoulder of the hitter. It's coaching one-on-one -on -one stuff right there. Whew. Damn. That, you know, that, that, that's what they teach you at Pals North Boys High School, eh? Fundamentals, but fundamentals. fundamentals. That's what they drill in. I love it. I love it. All right, here we are. Can't need to get a lot of pile. Putting the, they've obviously got a tactic. Let's let's put the pressure out there on the outside so she can't transition and they're having to rely on that middle. 
they obviously, you know, the coach is aware that, all right, put that pressure on the center to have to use the middle a bit more. It's a set to the outside there. Yusuf Amy Jackson, unfortunately, swinging into the net. Right, so Canterbury now up 6-4. First time they've been up this entire game. All right, number 17 there, um, Kelly Strange, getting up and having a swing from the offset. Fortunately not able to keep that ball off the net. Wouldn't be surprised if a timeout is coming here from Alexander Mariano, but I think he's just telling them that just all right, let's get, get this one done, let's yeah. side this one out. A few little errors creeping in here. Uh, they're playing a, a little bit more out of system. Uh, UC's forcing them to, to scramble a little bit more and, and get the setter out of position. And there's a net touch there, I believe. Oh, hold on. I believe that, yeah, two touches uh, called there. And there's that timeout you were talking is. about. So, if you're coach Alexander Mariano right now, what would you be saying in the huddle, Luke? Well, I'm not even going to try and predict what he's been saying because whatever he is saying, it's been working. And, and every time he comes into one of these timeouts, they're down. And every time they come out of it, they claw their way back in and, and end up taking back the lead. So, whatever he is saying, he's saying something right. That's it. You know, you're know, right. I don't even want to try to predict what he's saying because, you know what, he's got at least 30 more years of volleyball <laughs> experience than I do. All right, let's see if that timeout, uh, you know, it can be put to good use here. All right, a lot of piles still on the serve here as well. And oh, she doesn't crumble to that timeout. Push the Eva Dixon on the outside there, and there we go. He's obviously said, you know, yet again, those, he's just got golden nuggets. <laughs> I like to call them the golden nuggets, you know. He just sees these little things and they go out there and execute them. And that's on, that's on having a good coach, you know. A, a great coach is able to turn turn team around. You know? Turn team around, um, yeah, regardless of what's happening on the court. He can, he's, he's got this ability to, to reset the game almost. And you again, they've got another point. They're crawling their way back in. It's 6-8. Lucy Fornhill back to serve here. Kelsey opting for uh, Rebecca Colson on the outside. And yet again, she just saw that. It was really nice placement, dropping the thumb, kind of rolling that ball. A little bit of confusion on the court here. I think they uh, heard, heard the whistle from the other court and, and thought it might have been uh, uh, our ref in the stands, but, but it wasn't. <laughs> Sometimes it happens, you know. Uh, quite often, if, if there's someone on the, a, a court... Uh, while another game's going on and, and the ref blows their whistle really loud, it, it can sound um, very similar to... 100%. To I've, I, I've actually been caught off by that a few times as well, thinking, what's going on? Right, double substitution like, yeah, here. Double sub. All right, looks like they've, they've been limbering up. I saw Alex Mariano just saying to them before, all right, get ready to go on, get ready to get warm. So Waikato hold the serve here. Uh, it's uh, number seven from uh, Paige Wilson uh, going back to serve here. Oh, great touch. Ah, uh, Rebecca Colson just opting for that tip there. You know, she like I've said before, she knows that she's not the biggest player on the core, but she's just smart. You know, we've seen them. We've seen Alex Mariano run this rotation a few times, where he brings two subs on and, and always plays the back backcourt setter. You know, six two, um, and it just gives them three hitting options the whole time. It's a great way to you know just have the ability to spread the court a bit more and just you know make them a little bit less predictable. Oh, great touch there from the libero, but it looks like it's a net touch called, unfortunately, by the second ref. So 
So Can Canterbury up and they're holding this lead here. So it looks like actually Mary Edmondson's actually joined uh, the bench there. So we've got the entire Edmondson family basically on the bench. Uh, well, well Watu Roji uh, joining on as uh, physio. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I hope she's on that sheet. <laughs> I'm sure she'll be bringing some uh, uh, valuable experience and expertise to the to the benching. Here we are, Bridget Noble back to serve here. Sorry, Rebecca Colson back to serve here. Great serve, cross court onto Eva Dixon there. And that's come off the top of the blocks by the looks of it. Now that's uh, number five from the University of Waikato getting up there having a swing, uh, Adrian Top. Dixon back to serve. Oh, that's oh a great that's a fantastic serve. serve there from Eva Dixon. Off she seems back. pretty chuffed for herself. Well, you would be too, wouldn't you? Love, love an ace. An oh, ace is always great. Love it. Oh, and she, fought, you know, you get, you've built that confidence. It's one of those classic coach killers, isn't it? They, they, they serve a great first ball, and then the second ball goes straight into the net. You know, I, I, quite often uh, I always get told uh, not to change your serve, you know. Um, serve, if, if, what, you're, what you normally do is working, don't change it, right? Like, why would you change it? Yeah. Don't fix something that's not broken. But, but people get into the mentality where they're trying to, they try to hit it harder or, or they try to put a bit more pressure on. But if your serve's working, go to the same place, you know. It's, it's, yeah, it's place just harder, not more. harder, right? Yeah, and it, it, it's harder to mess up something that you'll repeatedly keep doing. You're, you're less likely to uh, mess it up. Don't change the variables. Minimize those. Here we are, number 16 uh, for University of Waikato here. Uh, that serve, uh, Jess Pacini. <coughs> Optic with a short serve there. It works. Unfortunately, Lucy Fornhill just not able to get a block there on Alana Pyle. <laughs> Kelsey Butlin back to serve here. Probably wanting to hold this lead for Canterbury. Nice rally, number five, excuse me. I'm still a bit tired. Point going to Waikato. Yeah, Canterbury have done well to hold this lead throughout the set. Uh, it's a nice change of pace from the last set. Um, again, look, we're seeing here uh, the substitution uh, bringing, bring the setter on in backcourt. And they've been doing really well with running two setters. It's quite often there's a lot of variation in between how setters play and how setters set. So it, it's it's a, a, a tribute to how well these, uh, both the setters and the hitters, uh, uh, their chemistry, um, for them being able to swap out like this um, so frequently. And like, like I've said before, you know, it's that Hamilton Husky chem, obviously. They all, they all play for Huskies, so they all know each other. Right, Petra back to serve here. Canterbury just uh, not, not quite able to shut that one down, but there's enough to get it off the top of the blocks. Um, hitting out to Mollis, Molly there. She's able to execute that well. Yet again, swing into the blocks there. Rebecca Colson, not the biggest player on the court, and I think they're just using that. You know, they know if you use the D, you're going to get some action. Right, great serve there from Alana Pyle. Oh, that's a, that's that's a serve ace. ace. A little bit of confusion. I think think might have called the ball out there, uh, but that's a great serve. That's the serve you want to you want to hit. Nice deep in the seam. Well, it's Canterbury 17-13 up. It's a nice. She changed up her serve there. She served down the line. 
And can Waikato get it over? And I believe, yes, they can. Oh, use of the pipe option here. And that's a tip. And Waikato able to keep it up. Bridget Noble taking a swing there. Even Dixon just seeing that line and just going, hey, that's mine all day. Yeah, had a nice roll on it, kind of almost curved towards the line. We just watched that again here. Look at that. That's nice. And a bit of miscommunication there. We're seeing this uh, uh, short serve re work really well for Waikato at the moment. Uh, dropping it almost on, on the fingers of uh, like the libero having to come forward. And um, it's, it's putting them out of system. And, and I think that's where they're going to start finding uh, a lot of their points. Is, is forcing them to get out of system with, with serves like that. Great serve there from Flanfer. Trying to use that middle, and I think that ball just unfortunately was a bit low. Number 16, uh, uh, Jess Pacini, just not able to get on top of that ball. Yeah, Flanford back to serve here. Uh, interesting to note, actually, that she's a New Plymouth Girls High School uh, old girl. Uh, so she's actually playing against two of her old teammates on the University of Waikato team. Sending it out to Eva Dixon. No surprises there and a fantastic swing from her as well. Yeah, she has this ability to find the gap in the block and just swing and expose that line. So Canterbury up 19-15 here in the second set. Uh, Waikato took the first. Number seven, uh, Paige Wilson uh, from the University of Waikato back to serve here. And it's just gone short. Canterbury with a five-point lead here. This is this is another story from the last set. Great serve there from Rebecca Colson. Kelsey Butler sending it to the outside to Petra. Nice uh, flat ball there. Great swing. Finding the gap in that block. Hitting, hitting that into the deep spot there. Vic Colson unfortunately not able to get on, to, on that ball. Yeah, Ava Dixon back to serve here. Petra getting up there having a swing. Ava Dixon able to return that ball. You can see she's sitting deep into that, into that backcourt in the six. She's really looking to expose that uh, the gap in between the middle blocker and, and the out, outside uh, blocker. Because there's, there's that little gap there. We keep seeing that she's hitting, hitting in that gap every time and it's dropping just short of six. Oh, that's a great serve there from uh, Eva Dixon. She'll be stoked with herself uh, putting her team back into a position, you know, where almost, you know, there's a bit of believability in themselves that, hey, we could actually come back here. Wouldn't yep. be too surprised after this point, Luke, if we see a timeout, if uh, she gets another service ace. But yet again, putting good pressure on. And it's just gone short there on the libero. That's a great little cut, you know. Three blockers go up and you we just, just watch chop that it again. sideways. Look at that. She's a beach player at heart, I believe. <laughs> Love that, you know. It's great ball placement. Eileen Dixon back to serve here. Great serve pressure down the line. Ava Dixon having to make a move for it. And that is a near touch. Right, number 16 here for University of Waikato. Jess Benice back to serve. Kels Butler sitting it to Petra again. Trying to use Petra in the front court now. Yet again, go to Petra. 
Yeah, and that's why we're seeing her execute on these these tough shots. It's just the power, you know, just powering it through the block. And we've seen that shift now. It's, uh, you know, they're not sitting in the middle as much. They're yeah. going, hey, let's go out to Petra. Especially when, when she's in front court. That, that's their ace hitter, right? We're, we're all well aware that she's got the power and she's, she's got the skill to execute on those tough points. Oh, yeah, I would like to see her spread the court as well. Um, but it, it, it's obviously working well for them. D option there. And it's just come into that, that middle spot. Justin short in six, and Rebecca Colson just kind of standing there unsure of, oh, well, probably should have got that. All right, here we are, double sub again. It's tight here still, 20-23, second set. <clears throat> We'll leave it back to serve for Waikato. Kelsey Butler, oh, yet again, opting for Petra. Hey, oh, Molly just swinging high off the off the top of the block there. Yes, yeah, she almost aimed out because she saw those hands there. Um, and yeah, she used those hands. And, and, and that's a that's a respectful play, you know. That's Some it. people get like annoyed when when there's a big block up and uh, you, like you, you just tool it off the tips of the fingers, but um, yeah, it actually does take a lot of skill to, to aim for the hands and not get roofed, you know. It does indeed. It does indeed. And when you do get roofed, it hurts. <laughs> that definitely hurts. It hurts your heart and your soul. And your morale. Yeah, and your morale, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, Canterbury called a timeout there. Just go, uh, You know, if I was Gabby Emmonson, I would be just saying, hey, guys, just let's just relax a bit. Okay, we've got this. We just need to go out there, do what we know, and probably be saying to Cal Scotland, see you, Petra. Now it's interesting, Molly Ellison, uh, who is, uh, who's our front court uh, outside head of the University of Waikato, her interesting fact about her is that she grew up in Matamata. I don't think that's that interesting, but, <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know uh, if you grow up in a rural farm town in Waikato, sure. I don't, I don't know if they would play much volleyball out there. It's, it, is it, well, there's not much out there, is there? Uh, but so there's only one school in Matamata, that's Matamata College. And... Uh, Coached by Andrew Killam, who's just recently come back from uh, Australia with the uh, New Zealand uh, under-19 uh, development squad over there. Uh, so, you know, he's really the one, he's a one-man ship out there, uh, just kind of running everything. Uh, he does a lot for the Mata Mata Volleyball. Right, uses a D here. So, yet again, going to Molly, and that's uh, looking like a net touch. Yeah, that's a great stop on the, on the set point, you know. Winning that point early and, and getting the momentum back on your side. They're still down by two, but, but they're, they're in a great position to work way back Molly here. back to serve. That's a great float serve. No spin on it whatsoever. Bridget Noble just taking a swing there. There's a little bit of, you know, oh. Petra just rolling that ball short. Waikato unfortunately just not reading that. Big roar from the crowd. Love so to, love that to leaves us at one all. After the second set, uh, this might be. This is the, there's been no fourth set played on this live stream court. Is that right, Luke? No, I don't think there has. So been. this will be the first four setter we've had. Could be a five setter. I'm sure how things are going to go. So uh, for those of you who are unaware about the rules of volleyball, so uh, we're playing uh, best of five. So uh, the first team to win three sets uh, takes the game. So both teams can now have one set all. So we're just seeing a few highlights here. Much closer game than the first one. Yeah, I think Wyckoff uh, 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 well, did a good job at the, towards the end of the set of working their way back into it. Um, but it wasn't quite enough. anyone's game you know it's one all it's still anyone's game early days as they call it early days I, I think this is uh, uh, really high potential to go to a fifth set 
These teams, two teams are, are, are quite evenly challenged uh, in terms of their skill. It's just how they're going to play on the day is, is what's really going to decide this game. That's it. It's all about <laughs> who's going to show up. So here we are heading into the third set. It is one all between the University of Waikato and the University of Canterbury. The winner of this game will go on to the gold medal match. And play, I believe, the winner of Massey, Massey Otago. Massey Otago, that's the one, yep. I'm definitely feeling the cold here this morning, Rick. It's uh, yeah, it's a lot colder than uh, yesterday. Um, the sun's out and shining, but wasn't out early enough to, to get the frost off my car. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I was talking to some of the uh, you know uh, event organisers who were down from Auckland, and they were like, "What's this whole frost thing?" <laughs> they were a bit unsure about what that was. Yeah, welcome to the south. Optic for Petra there. Some great touches from Waikato's defence. They're playing a really good defensive game in the backcourt. Lana Pyle just sitting that high. Bridget Noble putting it in short, and it works. Does it have to look nice? No? Does it win the point? Yes. She was shaking her head and laughing about that one. Uh, <laughs> it's not a, I don't think it's the, one of those playbook plays, but, you know, something different always uh, changes it up. We all love those accidental points. Yeah, Kelsey Butler back to serve here. Nice float serve there onto Molly. Ava Dixon just swinging deep. Oh, great, great hustle, hustle there. Oh, great last minute leave there on the line. Kelsey Butler having a bit of a laugh about that one. Going, oh, I was going to go for that. Yeah, she, she had a little bit of a look. Uh, oh, I'm going to take it and then made the right decision. Here we are, Kelsey to serve again, creating that service pressure. Nice deep serve there. Oh, and that's been uh, swung nicely uh, by number 17 there, uh, Kelly Strange on the outside. A lot of space there on uh, the number five on the court. So it's okay, uh, we've got Molly. Molly back to serve here. Great pass there for the libero, use of Petra. And off the block there. It's a bit of a, you know, Petra versus Eva Dixon kind of affair out there, really. But of course, the large difference between these two players, you know, who are probably the two standouts on this team is, you know, Petra's been over to the States. Uh, she's, she's played volleyball for, you know, about, you know, 13, 14 years now. Where, you know, Eva's been playing that long, but at the level, not the same level. Libero's just going to go a free ball there into the Libero. Probably not the person you want to give a free ball to. And it was uh, Rebecca Colson, a bit of a, oh, whoops, I probably, <laughs> probably should have got that. Just giving a lot of a lot of angle there. A lot of line as well. Yeah, so you were saying again about this comparison between uh, Ava Dixon and Pe uh, Petra Manson. Is, uh, the, yeah, but it's Ava's first year of study, like... She, she's probably got a long time playing for this team and, and she's playing with a lot of skill. So she's going to be a, a valuable part of this team and a keystone a really piece good of this point team to make there, Luke. for the next few years. And she's studying law and psychology. So, hey, uh, get ready for, uh, you know, at least five to six years of study and maybe, you know, a $100,000 loan. <laughs> Tell me about it. Oh, it's a great swing there. Kelsey Butler opted to send it to Rebecca Colson there on the outside. Nicely done. Great option. Just a little late on the outside block there and then, yeah, hitting, hitting that line. Yeah, Lana Pyle back to serve here, number 11 for the University of Canterbury. Up 5-2 for Canterbury. That's a great float serve there. I think uh, Molly was a bit uh, surprised by it about how much float that had on it. But Waikato managed to win the point. 
kind of jealous about these players on the court right now that they're getting warm and I'm having to sit here on the bench, you know. I know that you're a warm-hearted person sitting next to me, Luke, but uh, damn, it's cold. Should have brought my heater. Oh, a bit of a, um, you know, not caught, not able to make that connection there between Eileen Dixon and uh, Kelsey Butlin. So Waikato calling back into this, only down by one point. It's a nice serve there. Kelsey Butlin unable to get it up. And now the game is 5-all uh, in the third. Great serve there. Eileen Dixon, you know, used to that middle again. Canterbury just not able to get out of this uh, serving situation here. So, yeah. potentially could see a timeout after this point from Gabby Edmondson. Well, it, it, it's, the, it's the first time Waikato's led this set. It, it's still early in the set. I think I think you let the game play out a little bit and, and see where they go uh, from here and how they bounce back. Yeah, Rebecca Colson able to just, you know, tip that ball there. And, and Canterbury still just unable to get out of the situation. Kaylee Strange just, you know, she's really just keeping up that serve pressure there. And it looks like there's been a reach called on Petra Anderson. So uh, I think this is actually one of the first times we may have seen this tournament where the back or player uh, gets set and uh, she steps foot on the three metre line, which uh, is, is deemed as a reach. I think you're right. I don't think we have seen a reach, at least not on this court. Eileen Dixon just putting that in a nice spot there, deep into one. And, oh, great pick up there from Petra Manderson, falling to the floor. And that is just out, and it's coming to the commentary box. Interesting note about Petra, so uh, she actually has said that her biggest on-court on strength here is um, having a level head and her serve receive. And I think she, she has proven both of those things in this game. You know, she is the, the key component of this team. She is the, the leader. Miley Dixon just uh, using that overpass there. Yet again, Rebecca Colson, you know, she's on a big swing, but she's smart about what she does with the ball. Oh, that's huge. We're talking that's about big, big swing. swings. Holy hell. That's a big swing. Ava Dixon again. Over the top of the block there, I think. She's really showed up and, and changed the pace of this game today. And that's just unfortunately served out. Sometimes as a hitter, when you side out of a great hit like that, you go back thinking, you know what, I'm going to serve this ball as an ace. And, you know, great idea there, uh, serving down the line. Unfortunately, just couldn't execute it. Nice pick up there from the libero number one. And Kelsey oh, Butler for the left-handed dump. She'll be happy about that one. Yeah, that's a great little tip. You know, open court, no blocker. Nice pass in there. And unfortunately just hitting the net. Now, you know, I've, I've co-coached uh, half a season now with Kelsey Butland uh, for Shirley Volleyball Club. And, uh, you know, it's interesting. Uh, I think one of her biggest attributes as well is actually her ability to really not show emotion on her face. So, you know, it makes it really difficult for the opposition team to know what she's going to do with that ball. And things are falling apart here in the commentary box due to Felicity Hatcher, I don't know, doing something marginal on the sideline. We'll send her the bill after. <laughs> Right, Canterbury 19 down, Waikato up. Oh, that's a nice serve. It's a little deep though, a little deep. It had a nice float on it, it was floating out, came, came back in on the line. But um, yeah, a bit too deep on that one for Miley. 
So Waikato up now, 11-9. He's been a, a power dynamic switch. Nice pass in there. Kelsey opting for the outside. It's a great swing there from Petra Anderson. Ava Dixon having a good swing on the pipe option. And looks like we've had a, been a some kind of call made there, I'm, I'm sure. Net touch? I don't know. It seemed like she was pointing to the ground as if the ball had died. Uh, we'll have to go to our TMO team and, and get a review on that one. Great swing there from Petra to come off the blocks. Ball's gone out there. Right, 10 12. Canterbury down by two points. That's so one all here in the third set. Kelsey Butlin back to serve. And that's a nice serve, just hitting the tape as it goes over into the opposition side of the court. Great pass there for Rebecca Colson. Going to Petra. And I that's think my grandma in heaven felt that one, Luke. <laughs> that one really shook the room up, I'll tell you that. Holy hell, the whole of Christchurch felt that one. Great serve there again from Kelsey Butler, serving on the libero. Opting for Molly there on the uh, outside, number eight. And Petra's gone for the tip, and she's used that. Man, uh, you, you, that's something you don't see from her very often, you know. She's the power hitter, power hitter. Everyone's sitting really deep, and then that little short tip, and we, we'll mix it up, you know. We'll mix it up. There's, there's a gap there. I love that. Unpredictable. Oh, and there we go. And Kelsey Butler has just now managed to get... Canterbury back in the lead after a two-point deficit coming back. Yeah, this has been a great serving run, you know. Great serve there. Yet again, go opting for Molly. Down the line, great pick up there from number one, the Libero. And a lot of pile getting blocked out. Big block by Lucy Thornhill in the middle. I think she's just stoked for herself that they finally got the point back. Kelsey Butler had a good run there. Yeah, they'll want to hold here and, and, and get that momentum back on their side. Great cross-court serve there. Probably not the person to serve on, though. Petra Madison. And Bridget Noble, unfortunately, swinging outside the court there. Which does put Waikato back on top. 14-13 here in the third set. Yeah, that's a tough ball. That was, a, that was open net, but... Uh, there was a bit of misconnect between the set and, and, and the hit. Um. Another point for Waikato there. Interesting to just see there that Alana Pyle actually took the receive there as she was uh, transitioning to hit. Yeah, another serve there from number eight, Molly. And, oh! Oh, damn! That was a rapid fire swing there. See that again. Oh, that adjustment on those last two steps. You know, we call them the power steps in volleyball. Those last two steps before you jump. She really exploded. She held her run up. And she got up there in a high contact swing. Nice serve there from Petra. Opting for a roll there. And yet again, that's some great receive. Great defense. Oh, nice little Probably touch going to Eva Dixon here. Can she execute it? And there's a great touch. The ball's still alive. The hustle from Petra Manderson. Kelsey Butler putting the ball oh, into the backcourt. Oh, great save. Oh! The crowd's roaring. You love to see the we've hustle got a, play. We've got a game on our hands. So that's a big point. And not just because they're coming back to tie, but, but they've got that energy now. That, that those points charge the team up, you know. It gets you really going. I'm excited. Here we go. Used to be, oh, and she's just pounded that ball in there. Looks like there was a, yeah, that was a great swing there from Eva Dixon. I think uh, I think this game's starting to uh, pick up in the, in the crowd. Actually, uh, I believe uh, the Waikato men's team have have come down in support. So, so we've uh, got the <laughs> University of Canterbury men's team and the Waikato men's team on the sidelines there. So I think we're going to get a, you know a bit of a a nice you know crowd feeling there. Yeah, and we could see these two, those two teams match up in the final, in the men's final too. So this might be a, a, a little bit of a rivalry forming. me. 
So here we are, 16 all in the third set here. Uh, number 11, Alana Pyle back to serve. Great service there, nice pick up there from uh, Waikato. Managed to block out. Eileen Dixon opting for that tip. And it looks like that ball's been hit in. Oh, from this angle, it looked like it was just a bit out. But, I mean, hey, I'm not the one standing on the line. Yeah, the lines, line, linesmen have a great look at the line um, on, on both lines. You know, baseline and, and the sideline. And uh, we trust their on-court on decisions. One of my favourite things about Judy is that flag, Luke. Love <laughs> waving that flag. I can imagine. I get a bit too excited sometimes. You see making a sub here. Yeah, yeah, Flaff has just been brought on uh, in the backcourt there for uh, Bridget Noble. Uh, just to, you know, execute that kind of, that serve clearly and, and play a bit more defence in the back here on the opposite. Oh, and a nice challenge there by Eileen Dixon at the net. Canterbury back in the lead, 18-17. It's still anyone's game, you know. It's been, it's been point for point this whole set. And I think that just shows a testament that these teams deserve to be here in the semi-final position. Kelsey Butler opting for the outside there. Ricky Colson able to execute a nice hit <coughs> off the blocks. Wouldn't be too surprised if there's a timeout here by Alex Mariano. Another great serve, you know. That's what she's there to do. Great pass in and use of Petra. Oh. There it is, 2017. Looks like we're getting a, a double sub potentially. He's rolling on that double sub again for the University of Waikato. You see a Paige Wilson uh, looking pretty cold covered on the court. The, the temperature. Uh, might be getting to this Waikato team. I think it's an advantage the Canterbury team have. Uh, uh, home court advantage and, and, and being used to playing in the cold. So uh, for those of you who aren't familiar with the, the cold temps of Christchurch uh, and the south, it was minus 4.6 degrees this morning. <laughs> so it's pretty cold out here and currently we're playing in zero degrees. Yeah, that's pretty ridiculous. Oh, good swing there from uh, Eva Dixon. Use of the middle. Oh, <laughs> and she's number, uh, number 12 there. Uh, number 12? No, I've got that completely wrong. Ignore me. Timeout's been called here. Nice. Okay, 18-20. It's tight here. Apparently we're meant to get to a high of 10, but that doesn't come until 2 o'clock this afternoon, Luke. <laughs> You know, I'm, I'm just used to it now. I've just kind of accepted the fact that that, that it's cold. <laughs> There's nothing I could do about it. So, just uh, just so we're all aware, it's the third set. It's one all. Uh, 2018 um, up for Canterbury over Waikato. Canterbury will be wanting to take this set after losing that first set. You know, they want to just be able to ride that momentum into the fourth set and take this win. Yeah, big potential for our first five-setter here. I, I kind of hope we see one, you know. A, a big five-setter in the semi-final. Uh, uh, there's a lot of energy in that fifth set. Very exciting game. All right, interesting to see here because uh, Ava Dixon now in the backcourt. Um, let's see if they can use her as well as number eight here, Molly, uh, in the front. So it's a bit of a... Bit of a miss pass there from Petra. Uh, Kelsey Butler's still able to use it though. Nice pick up there from Flapper. And Becky Colson able to just swing that nice sweet angle there. Yeah, it was off was it off the tape or off the block? Unsure, Luke. Good serve. Big swing there from Molly. Becky Colson playing it off the blocks there. 
Oh, and unfortunately, Ava Texas swinging into the net. So 22-18 now to Canterbury. Yes, that big pipe swing, you know, trying to swing hard on, on, a, on a pipe ball. The net's so much further away. It's such a different swing than, than at the post. The net's so much further away, and it's so much harder to hit the ball down. There we go. We've got a nice high ball there. And, oh, she's tried to swing that, that line. Unfortunately, it's uh, gone, to, gone to Canterbury. Twenty-three, eighteen. Greg Colson still serving. Great float serve there. Why can't we need to find a solution? And they've managed to find it just there. I think they've managed to find it at the right time as well. They've still got. Oh no, twenty-four, nineteen. I uh, take that back. Actually, I think we've got the score wrong, but that's okay. Great pass in there. Eileen Dixon, oh, great, great down swing. the line. I think there was a big ooh from the crowd there. I think, think they uh, they were loving that. You know, Love middle that. middle hits the Love hits the D base. side. Oh yeah, and Eileen Dixon seems pretty tough for herself there, coming back to the baseline, and she's just served <laughs> it out. Again, I like the spot on that serve. You know, down the line, uh, really tight to the line. Don't know if it's going in or out on the line. Just a little bit too deep. So we've got that double sub coming back on. Number 11 here for the University of Waikato. Uh, it's Ashley Shanley. Great pass there. Great swing, but an equally great pickup for the Libero from Waikato. And I believe that seals the deal for the third set. 25-20 to the University of Canterbury. Up 2-1, heading into the fourth set. They'll be looking to put it away in this fourth set. Make it the last one. Don't want to have to play five. In particular, the teams that are waiting to come onto the court, they are the ones who definitely don't want you to have to play five. They just <laughs> want to get on the court and play the game. That's for sure, but I'm telling you, if you're University of Waikato right now, you want that fifth set. You want to force the fifth set, uh, win, the, win, the, win the fourth set, sorry, and then uh, come in hard, start strong, uh, ride their momentum from, from that fourth set into, into the fifth set. That's it. Just a few highlights here. For the third. So, you know, Waikato just, uh, you know, they couldn't seem to find that, you know, even if it was swinging hard at the start, they, they were actually leading the way for quite a fir the first part of the set, and then they just slipped away from them there in the middle, you know. Canterbury, Kelsey Butler really put about four or five serves in, and all of a sudden there was a good power shift. Yeah, they're really, that was a big part of the game today, was those serve, that big serving streak for Kelsey Butler. Uh, gave them the lead and put them back into the game. You know. So here we go, <coughs> heading into the fourth set. The other semi-final of the women's division has been played on the, on, a, on the other court right now and it looks like a very close game too. I believe it's 2-1 uh, uh, to uh, the University of Otago, but the set score is 2019. Very Ooh, close that's game. That's tight. So I heard there was a bit of an upset yesterday. University of Canterbury went down in a five-set match to the University of Otago women's team early on in the day. Uh, Canterbury will be wanting to redeem themselves here with this game to solidify themselves in the finals. So if Otago don't win that game over there, Canterbury will be chuffed the fact that they lost to them on day one and then they are on day two potentially heading into the finals. Could be a potential rematch at the same time. You know, that, that if, if, if the rematch is there, I think the, the girls will be excited, you know. To try and win that one back. Um, well, captains have been called over to the ref. Unsure of what uh, the reasoning there may be. Mm. 
Number 11 for the University of Waikato team here, back to serve. Great serve there. Oh, oh that's great a great spot. Here from Eva Dixon. Standing in the right spot, just unfortunately couldn't get herself around the ball. Petra Manderson here back to serve. And she's oh, got the great, tape. Great little drop on that. You know, again, the, that's one of those serves where you, you go, oh, is it, is it gonna is it gonna hit the net? Is it gonna hit the net? And then it just drops just short and, and works out very well. But I think we'll see here Petra go a little bit deeper on to, to try and stop that this time. Yep. Here we are, so option for the outside option there. And it looks like that's been called as a four touches. So hopefully those watching at home, I mean, it's a Sunday morning, so usually people who are students at uh, this time of the morning aren't usually awake. But those of you who are watching, just a reminder that in volleyball, you know, you're only allowed free touches. Uh, and uh, if the ball sometimes hits the top of the tape uh, and then you play on on your side, it's considered four touches. So that's a point there to Waikato. Yes, second ref calling a net touch there. I think there was a little, little touch on the block uh, in the front court from the University of Canterbury. Molly Ellison back to serve here. Number eight. And a bit of a shank ball there. Kelsey Butlin, way to play it off the net there. Petra Madison going for the swing. And Petra's really come to play now. You know, they've, they've, they've got, you know, she's making a lot of those those big kills, those big hits, big points at the right time. Yeah, Coach, Coach Alex Mariano wasn't happy about that call. He was calling for, for a reach. Uh, ref didn't agree, so uh, the, that point will go to University of Canterbury. And that's what we like to call, you know, hey, as a coach, if you could do that serve every single time, wouldn't that be fantastic? Just hitting the tape and letting it drill on. That would be fantastic. A lot of pile back to serve here again. Canterbury up 5-1. Oh, there, there she is. There she is. She's back now. Eva Dixon getting up on that ball, having a swing. You know, when the ball's, I've noticed when the ball's in system, they're able to go to her and she's able to execute that with much more efficiency. Yeah, I agree. Nice pass there from Petra Manderson. Running through uh, Eileen Dixon in the middle there. And Eileen Dixon getting the block. Pretty stoked for herself. Canterbury, you know, great 6-2 lead here at the start of the... Was that a point to Waikato? No, well, yeah, it was, it was a point there to Canterbury. And that serve, unfortunately, has just gone out. I believe the, the, the other semi-final is just wrapped up, so that means uh, Otago University will be moving on to the gold medal match, and Massey University will be playing for the bronze medal. So Canterbury will, you know, they'll be wanting to take this out then. They want that rematch. And a little bit of one-armed action there from Canterbury to get the pull up. And it looks like it's been a uh, net. Oh, it's a foot under, over the line. You don't see that very often at, at this level. It, it still happens, though, you know, when you're jumping with so much power and forward momentum, especially on big swings, uh, it tends to happen. Nice serve there from Rebecca Coulson. Uh, serving down the seam there between um, Molly Allison and Eva Dixon. Eileen Dixon getting up there and having a, having a big swing. There's one of those trademark Petra rolls there. Great up. Petra's gone up for the swing again. Just too much power, eh? There's not enough uh, power in the block to, to, to stop that big swing. You can just see the momentum carrying off the block and off the, off the passer's hand. That's it. There's definitely a mismatch there. You know, Petra is a step above the rest on the, on the Waikato team here in terms of their blocking ability. 
use of the, the pipe option there. Molly Ellison getting up. And oh, the ball's still alive. A, that might be one of the best plays I've seen in terms of defense. It's getting that ball up and the hustle's real. Oh. The girls will be stoked about that one, you know. Look at that play. How many how many touches? How many one arm touches? So I think Canterbury is starting to run away with it here. Coach Alessandro Mariano just, you know, he'll be trying to figure something out. What's what's the solution to the problem? Yeah, I think it's a it's a it probably could have caught a timeout earlier. They've started to run off of the lead. 3-9, it, that's, a, that's a big deficit to come back from, especially in a, a, a fourth set, you're down two sets to one, morale's probably really low, and I think they need a watermelon uh, <laughs> South South patch kid. 100%, <laughs> get the sour patch kids out. That, see, that's maybe a secret that Alex Mariano doesn't know. Sour patch kids, watermelon flavour are the way to go. <laughs> Well, he definitely didn't know what a milk bottle was yesterday, so he's on the right track. Oh, dear. Well, it's probably actually a good thing to avoid those uh, milk <laughs> bottles. Any advice about lollies from uh, Warren Smith? Probably don't take it. So here we are, full set. Canterbury up 9-3. Rebecca Colson for the serve here. Eva Dixon having a big swing out there on the open. Man, the, the, the UC women's team here are, are playing really well with these one-hand touches. Like that was almost a, a two-and-a-half pass right there. One hand running backwards, no look. I think they need to teach me how to pass again. Oh, and they've oh. successfully blocked out that middle. We haven't really seen the use of the middle from the Waikato. So the fact that Canterbury were ready for that, you know, Petra just got that on the left side there. Fantastic work there. Great lead for, for Canterbury. They've shown their composure. And that's four touches, potentially. Oh, damn, I just missed that ball. It came to me and... Uh Passing. I tried the one hand, you know, I tried the one hand, but... That's all right, you're, you're a middle, Luke. It's okay, we'll forgive you. There's a reason why I'm not playing in this tournament. <laughs> <laughs> all right, here we are. He's uh, bringing on the uh, double sub by the looks of things. And, uh, you know, it was working in that first set. Uh, it started to work in the second, but things haven't been going that well. Uh, but, hey, you know, sometimes change is good. Yeah, I think maybe a, a bit of impact off the bench, freshen, freshen the squad up a bit. Uh, uh, bring a new perspective to the game might help them here and, and call their way back into this game. So here we are. Becky Carlson back to serve here. And that's, that's an ace. That's an ace. So we see Canterbury go up 10 points, 13 to 3. If you're Waikato right now and you're down 3-13, how are you feeling in your head, Luke? Uh, it's it's got to be it's gotta be a dark place right now, but my advice to them is don't even look at the scoreboard. You play your game and the points will come. Oh, and it looks like potentially a foot on the line, which, yet again, we don't really see at this level either. We've had a, a foot under, uh, sorry, a foot over the line and the, the centre line, and we've also had a foot fault now. And yeah, these things happen. It, it happens. It's not, it's not something you want to happen, obviously, but uh, it's part of the game. Oh, great swing there from uh, Eileen Dixon, but equally great pass there from the libero. Great swing there from Molly Ellison. Now on Petra. And unfortunately, a net touch from Waikato. We've seen that quite a lot from the Waikato this uh, this game. Yeah, I think they're blocking, trying to put, uh, push over too much. A little, bit pen a little bit too much penetration can sometimes uh, end up having your body drag along that net. So there's a point for the Waikato. Great serve there from number 16. And that's Waikato's first point. I think that they've actually successfully, you know, won in a while here. You know, they've, they've got a few points off uh, Canterbury's mistakes, but good to see that, you know, Lucy Fornil getting up there and shutting that down. And that's a great float serve there. Oh, and trying for that little behind the, behind the back tip there from Kelsey Butlin. 
Oh. And unfortunately just rolled out there by Petra Manderson. It's a smart shot though, you know. Little nice little roll down the line on right on the line too. Um yeah, when they're, when they're blocked, their line blocks up and, and your, your intention was to go swing line. It's kind of hard to bail out last minute. Uh, there's a shank there, but able to redeem themselves there. Philanfer making a move for it. Good pass there from Eva Dixon. Molly Ellison on the outside. Is she is able to use it off the block? They've just won successfully four points in a row. Yeah, they've, they've had a real momentum shift here. They've, they've clawed their way back. They were down by 10 points previously. And yet again, another shank. That's five points in a row for University of Waikato. I can't even count to five, Luke. <laughs> yeah, big serving run from Jess Bassini here. It's really, really shifted the momentum of the game. And I think there's a great call, time, time to call a timeout. Um, yeah, if, if you're UC, what's the plan here? I would say, hey, I can, well, from what I can see, Gabby Emerson's in there saying, hey, guys, take it on the hands. Take this ball in the hands. Let's just side out. Do what we know, all right? And that's, you know, let's just get get the ball to Kelsey and Kelsey's going to dish it out to someone. That's the plan, I reckon. Yeah, and we're, we're, we're forgetting. They're still on the lead, but the energy on the court doesn't feel that way right now. No, no, it doesn't. I mean, just coming in off that, uh, that time out there, Kelsey Butler will be a little bit stressed. But yet again, Petra Madison, just cool head. As she said, her biggest strength was just having a level head. She's sending back to serve here. Oh, yet again, still great service there. Petra doing what she's there to do. <laughs> Even Tixon coming in last minute for that ball. Oh, that's a great pick up there from a middle as well. Coming out to the outside, Molly Ellison going for it. <laughs> Straight over the top of the That is of the now block. seven points in a row, I believe. Holy hell, we've gone from three to three to ten like that. Coach Alexander Mariano will be very pleased with uh, his team's performance. Coming back, and <laughs> it's another serve. Just Pacini serving up a storm Holy here. Holy hell. You know, and she's just taking her time on the serve, doing what she's there to do. That's another great serve there. Uh, Rebecca Colson trying to, sorry, for trying to take her hands there. Going to Molly Allison. Molly Allison's coming off the block. Can, can Canterbury get it back over? And there's a free ball here. There's an opportunity to run the middle. But they've gone for Eva Dixon, and she's miscontacted that. And another great pass from the middle again. Lucy Fournil putting it over. Petra's gone up and have a swing, but she's she's a bit more reserved at the moment. I think this might be one of the longest rallies we've seen this game, Luke. Oh, it's been a great rally. I think this might be the longest can rally Molly we've Ellison seen put it away? all tournament. And yes, she can! Oh, oh, that's, that's a, a huge point. That's a massive point. <laughs> Woo! Okay, I'll tell you what, I'm warm now. I'm sweating a bit on the bench here. Sorry <laughs> if I start to smell, Luke. <laughs> They've closed this lead to only two points. Oh, it's another great serve there. Great pick up for the Libero. Hopefully Petra's able to put it away. And they're able to keep it in play. Why kind of a fighting hard here? And oh! Oh! <laughs> that's a bounce there from Petra Manderson. You know, that's the solution they needed. But hey, they're in the game now. Yeah, look at that. One on two play. One on one. Petra's got that all day. You know, you can't leave her open. Substitution coming in here. You know, that ability to play in the cold might be University of Canterbury's, you know. <laughs> it might be an attribute for them. Kelsey Butler back to serve here. Great service. Oh, that's a way to swing across court there from Lucy Fornell. And it's unfortunately an another near touch by the looks of things from the University of Waikato. Tough call there. You know, it's, it's hard, especially when when you're going up to joust the ball, sometimes the ball gets caught on the net and and, and it looks like a net touch because the net moves. Uh, but in this case, uh, ref's calling it was a net touch. Um, there may have been another part of the body contact in net. 
So use of Eva Dixon, not too surprisingly, but unfortunately she set the ball out. Now if I was in the University of Waikato's position now, I would not want to blow it after, you know, if I was Chess Bassini, I'd be pretty mad if you start blowing the, the comeback, you know, that, that, that was coming. <laughs> that was a massive comeback, you know, like, I'm, I'm very impressed, you know, it, it's, that's a big mental, a mental game coming back from a lead, uh, 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 from trailing like that. And we've really just seen some really good rallies, but I think it's tired out this Waikato team because now what we're seeing is the inability to make that serve receive. 18-12 out here at the uh, timeout by Alexander Mariano. Well, what do you think Alex is now saying? I think uh, uh, the, you can get quite caught up in calls uh, and that, that can change how you play. Um, and uh, we've, we've seen in the last couple of points uh, one or two calls not go Waikato's way. Um, and I think he'll be telling them just to calm down, relax. We had a good serving run. Let's just win the serve back and, and do it again. Here we are, Kelsey, Bat Kel Kelsey Butler back to serve here. It's a nice serve there, but hey, equally great pass from the Waikato Libero. Lucy Thornhill opting for the, the little tip there, just over the middle. Oh, and it's a oh, great pick up there. The game is live still. But yet again, Petra Anderson swinging that ball. I think what Waikato are really wanting to happen here is they really want to get Eva Dixon into the front court so, you know, she can get up there and have that swing. She's really the power hitter and, and they're struggling when she's back court. Uh, they don't have that hitting option. Um, number eight, Molly, Molly Allison's oh, been doing. There we go. Waikato have got the point back. And I think this is, you know, it's a make or break situation here. They've really got to hold this. Double sub coming on. Great serve there. Great receive from the libero though. And, oh, unfortunately Molly Allison not able to get that ball back up off the block. She did a good job on getting up on that though. Yeah, Petra Manderson just drilling it in between her arms. Off think, the head and it just drops short. I think Waikato will be pleased to know that uh, Petra's in the backcourt now, but at the same time she's as deadly a server as she is the hitter. And she's opted for that line. Great swing there from Molly Ellison on the opposite. And it's a free ball there from Bridget Noble. Sending it out to number five there. It's a free ball. Can Waikato use it? Going to find out here. Oh, so just some great defense here from the University of Canterbury. Yeah, they're just really get, getting that cover in the right spot. And there's a point to Waikato due to a net touch from Canterbury. And I believe that means Eva Dixon is now in the front court. Here we are, Molly Ellison back to serve here. Great serve. All right, do you think that she can uh, recreate the serving comeback that uh, Jess Bassini did before? Wow, never say never, you know, we didn't expect to see them come back from that, but but here they are. Great serve there. Here we go, we've got a, a roll here from Petra. Oh, Lucy Fornall just unfortunate, just couldn't get on that ball. She's a very long player, but, but it, it almost looks like she can block without even jumping, but uh, I think that time just wasn't, wasn't long enough on the block. A lot of pile back to serve. And it's into the net here. Jess Pasini back in the front court. Great serve there from Lucy Thornhill. Eileen Dixon unfortunately just couldn't get on top of that ball to hit it. 
Waikato on 17, Canterbury on 23. Two points for Canterbury to take the win here. Lucy Flournil back to serve. A nice float serve there. Unfortunately, probably not the person to serve on is Pitch Madison. Yet again, going to Petra, and that's sent out the back. That's a classic case, eh? We have just uh, bombed it. Absolutely bombed it. Look, Canterbury need to need to put the foot down here. There's two points left for them. Uh, and they're letting Waikato claw their way back in. And Waikato are doing a great job. And that's, you know, not a special serve, but it does the trick. And Bridget Noble swinging into the net. Potential timeout coming from Gabby Edmondson here. It's a four-point game. Yet again, it seems that the middle from Waikato are some of the most effective service. And what a serve oh, it is that's from Lucy Fordell. Great down the line. You know, that's what they say. Uh, middle, middle's the best server on the team. Who said this, Luke? Uh, all the middles. <laughs> 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 no, but that's, a, that's a great serving run, you know. That's a great option. Quite often people don't, they look to serve on the, the pass ahead of on uh, five side, on, on the post side. Whereas a, a great strategy a lot of teams have been implementing at the moment is serving down the, the one line where the set is located. Um, and in this case, it's Libero because they have to bring the ball back across. Um, and, and that's a lot harder than uh, uh, taking the ball from the post side. So do you think that this timeout is potentially going to, you know, threaten Lucy Fornhill? You know, her, her, she's lost her momentum a little bit here in terms of the overtime. It's just to break that, just to ice the, ice the server. We'll again, see if she's got the ability here, eh? Again, high pressure situation. Pressures make, pressure makes diamonds, so, so we'll see what she's made of. And she's just opted for that safety, eh? She's just taking off a little bit of power. And they've kept the ball in play here. Oh, unfortunate, just, you know, couldn't eat that ball there. And Petra is making an error into the net there. 21-23, Waikato only down by two now. The serving on this Waikato team is unreal. Phenomenal, it's been phenomenal this set. Holy hell, this is, you know, I feel like I'm at Lux Cinema right now. This is some premium seating, what I'm watching. And unfortunately, you know, her passing from Lucy Fornell isn't as good as her servant. Couldn't quite get that ball up. The University of Canterbury men's team uh, have just come over and, and paused their, their warm-up to, to come cheer the girls on and uh, uh, help them finish this game strong. Here we go. So who have we got here to serve? Uh, okay, so yes, this is our sub here. Lanfer, New Plymouth Girls High School alumni here. Old girl. And she's serving. Oh! oh! That's a way to finish a game. Eva Dixon not looking too happy about that on the side there. Molly <laughs> Elson having a bit of a laugh. It's a way to end a game. It's been a fantastic game though. Yeah, right. there's been some great, great moments. You know, I, th I think credit to, to the White Castle team for this set. They clawed it back to within two points from being down by 10 points. And there's been some amazing serving. And we've talked about a serving a lot this tournament. And... and We've seen them execute here and, and improve upon what they have done previously. Unreal. So that's 25-21 there in the, in the, fourth, uh, the fourth set to uh, Canterbury. Uh, great, you know, just, you know, Canterbury start to make a few errors at the end there, but in the end they, ma they managed to make it work. They just, you know, they gave me called a timeout. Let's get this job done. Let's get it sorted. Um, so that is Canterbury into the final. And so it will be a rematch match uh, between... Uh, University of Canterbury and University of Otago, leaving University of Waikato to versus Massey University in the third and fourth bronze playoff. Uh, I believe now we are going to get uh, a semi-final for Pins on our hands on uh, this court here. Yeah, and that'll be uh, Victoria University of Wellington uh, playing off against Waikato University. I believe University that is to go. And then on the other court, we have the University of Canterbury versus the Invitational team, I believe. Uh, yeah, and I think uh, people are going to underestimate that game as well. It's, it's, that's, that's been the story of, of the, uh, the tournament for the Canterbury Invitational men's team. Um, they're a great squad, and they have some, some great potential, and they, they play a lot of good volleyball. They're a very young team, like as we, as we said before, uh, 15 years old, uh, Thomas Vesti. Um, yeah, they're, they're really one to look out for.
cool. Awesome. So uh, we will catch you soon uh, in this next match, which is, uh, yet again, as we said, a semi-final between Victoria University of Wellington and the University of Waikato. Belief, the emotion that stirs your body into motion. One small drop contains the power of the oceans. And yes, with all this chaos and commotion, you'd be forgiven for thinking, what's my personal motivation? The new normal so abnormal that now normal's an abstraction. What happened to civilization? This world is a distraction. But still, belief will never fail to cause a chemical reaction. Fizzing up your synapses with purpose and possibilities to put into practice. Yet those ones. And so you pause. Breathe. And say... What do I want to do for me? The future me. The one who needs me to believe that I can make a difference unequivocally in whichever way I do. Even if that's flipping me into we. You see, that really is living the dream. So yeah, it's a pretty simple plan. Believe you can. This is the University of Waikato, where every day people are making a positive change. Where research helps tackle global challenges and elite athletes can compete at the top of their game. A place where people are given the tools to protect their whenua for future generations. Where talent is nurtured and excellence is celebrated. It's a place where industry, innovation and education converge and where moments are shared with loved ones. It's a place where teaching and learning has no borders and people of all races and cultures work together as one. Our people, our future. Positive change starts here. My world is my storytelling. My world is diverse. Our world. My world is astrophysics. It's always been a dream of mine. I don't know what my career path will be. I approach architecture from the point of view of my culture. I want to contribute to my people. It's a way I can give back. I want to change the perception of engineers. I want to take my tohu home when I graduate. Right now, it's about me. And this is my chapter. Only one New Zealand university is ranked among the top 1% of universities in the world and in the top 40 universities under 50 years of age. Auckland University of Technology, New Zealand's leading modern university. Home to world-class academics, called on for their research expertise here and all over the world making AUT the New Zealand leader in global research impact. Connected to an extraordinary range of organisations worldwide. Focused on a rapidly changing future where creativity, curiosity and collaboration will only become more vital. We inspire, nurture and find the greatness in every single one of our students. We are AUT. New Zealand's leading modern university. 
This is the University of Waikato, where every day people are making a positive change. Where research helps tackle global challenges and elite athletes can compete at the top of their game. A place where people are given the tools to protect their whenua for future generations. Where talent is nurtured and excellence is celebrated. It's a place where industry, innovation and education converge and where moments are shared with loved ones. It's a place where teaching and learning has no borders and people of all races and cultures work together as one. Our people, our future. Positive change starts here. We believe where you live shouldn't decide your destiny and that any place can be a place of learning. So much of modern life has a handy home delivery option. Why not your education? Maybe you'll start your degree in the same space you share with your whānau or from that corner of the spare room that catches the most sun. Start your new what at the place where where can be anywhere, online or on campus. Massey, New Zealand's leading online university. Apply now at massey.ac.nz. Belief, the emotion that stirs your body into motion. One small drop contains the power of the oceans. And yes, with all this chaos and commotion, you'd be forgiven for thinking, what's my personal motivation? The new normal so abnormal that now normal's an abstraction. What happened to civilization? This world is a distraction. But still, belief will never fail to cause a chemical reaction. Fizzing up your synapses with purpose and possibilities to put into practice. Yet those ones. And so you pause. Breathe. And say... What do I want to do for me? The future me. The one who needs me to believe that I can make a difference unequivocally in whichever way I do. Even if that's flipping me into we. You see, that really is living the dream. So yeah, it's a pretty simple plan. Believe you can. city is just so friendly. It's a big city, it's a big student city. I love that you can walk everywhere and that everything's accessible. The campus is just pretty much in the heart of the city as well. What the students offer to the city is something that you don't get too many other places. That's the great thing about this university, you will find your people. It feels like a university with a city attached to it. It's exceeded my expectations in every way. It's unbelievable. Do you want to study with world leaders in future thinking? New Zealand has been ranked the number one English-speaking country for preparing students for the future, and all of our universities are in the top 3% in the world. Start your journey to a high-quality New Zealand education by choosing a recognised study option available in your country. Take the first step towards your New Zealand education now, because the world needs new.
Kia ora Tufano. Kia ora Tufano. Welcome back to the uh, National Tertiary Volleyball Championships 2022 hosted by UCSNZ. Uh, I am Tane Gribsy here with uh, co-host Luke August. Uh, today we've got, uh, we've just had a match before which is the University of Canterbury women's team uh, versus the University of Waikato and it was a 3-1 win for the University of Canterbury to seal the deal to go to the finals. Uh, so what we have in front of us now is we have uh, one of the men's semi-finals. Um, there are two semi-finals occurring at the same time, one on the other court that is not being live streamed. Uh, what we have in front of us though is we have the University of Waikato men's team versus uh, Victoria University of Wellington. Um, so these two teams will be going head to head uh, looking to try to get a final spot and it looks like we have uh, the University of Otago here on duty. Uh, William White's about to take the stand and the game is about to start. Uh, what are your predictions for this game Luke? I think this is going to be a, a, a bit of a barn burner uh, to be honest. Uh, I, I, I know that uh, the, the University of Waikato team has uh, a very strong outside hitter in uh, Jack McManaway and a very strong setter. Um, however, this uh, this Vic team can can, can do anything. They've they've been getting better and better all tournament, and, and if they come with the right energy, th they could take this out. So I'm thinking maybe three one to to Waikato was my prediction. Three one to Waikato. You heard it here, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, so yeah, Victoria University of Wellington. Uh, one of the standout players in particular uh, is uh, number twenty uh, Tilly. Uh, he's been huge for them. Uh, he's been utilised in the middle and on the outside. Uh, ability to hit the ball anywhere on the court, really. Uh, man, the boy's got some springs, doesn't he? Yeah, and the boy loves his mother. He's asked us to give a shout out to his mother. <laughs> these these, these uh, Vic boys uh, uh, love their family and. and uh, <laughs> it's really reflected when yeah. we talk to them. It's great. It's great to see. You know that. You know. You can tell when they play too. It's all about fun. It's all about fun. All about that love. Sharing that aroha on the court. So uh, yeah, we're about to take the court here. Looks like yeah, twenty is definitely starting. Uh, so you'll see. I think the two people to watch this game for those of you who are sitting at home. Hopefully you're lying in bed on a Sunday morning. Hopefully you didn't have too big of a night. Uh, number twenty here uh, on the Victoria University of uh, Wellington team. Tilly, and then uh, the fellow to look for on the University of Waikato team is uh, number 16, Jack Big Manaway. Yeah, another another change they've just made to their to their normal starting lineup, number 30. Uh, we call him Big Sean. Uh, he's he's the real he's the real like uh, uh, hype man of the team. He, he gets everyone going, and, and he makes a real impact uh, to, to the culture of their team and the way they play. So uh, uh, it's cool to see him take the court uh, uh, to start. You've got to have those players on the team. They're essential. You've got to have those, you know, as I said yesterday, energizer buddy bunnies. Looks like uh, uh, Vic will be serving first. Number 17 here, Harry Palmer. To serve. Interesting hairstyle here. The mullet. We haven't seen too many mullets uh, uh, in this tournament, but. And thank God. <laughs> Not a fan. Here we go. Game started. It's a great block right there. And we have our first point there. And Jack Manaway has gone up and he's had a swing. Yeah, see, this is the thing Sean's good at. Uh, that big, strong block. Uh, might get tooled off the top, but it's definitely not going through the middle. So interesting to see a change from yesterday here, Luke. Uh, Blake Hunter not starting. Uh, it's Jack Shepard here, number 15 at centre. And not a strong start, serving into the net. Still early days. Number 19 here, Mitchell Grant, up to serve. Nice safety serve there onto Jack McManaway. Great swing there from Jack McManaway. The power, the power this man has, and and the precision. You know, he can hit a ball, any ball that they give him, he, he can just swing, swing hard on, and, and put it in a place that uh, gives him an advantage to win the point. Here he goes for a topspin jump serve. Oh, oh it's an overpass, not quite. Big Sean able to capitalise. There he is. I think he's a bit of a crowd favourite, number 30. Got the Victoria University of Wellington uh, women's team there on the sideline here to support. 
as well as the University of Waikato uh, women's team supporting the, uh, the men's team here. Big Sean back to serve here. And can I say that facial here? Very impressive on number 30. What a serve too! Nice, uh, you're starting to see that use of uh, number 24 here from the University of Waikato. Um, Ratavatia, alright, he's just being utilised out there on the opposite. Great pass up there from number three, Barrett. And there's a point to the University of Waikato. Will White there, referee's just uh, called for two touches. Yeah, he called a two touch on Harry Palmer and uh, his teammate has just informed me that it's his birthday. So, happy birthday, Harry Palmer. He'll be looking for a, a, a win today to, uh, as his birthday present, I think. Oh, and that's Tilly getting blocked out there. Seeing him used on the outside, but uh, that, that was a pretty big block. Number 24, right here, Vatia Herman. Getting the team going. Nice we roll there from Victoria University of, Wy uh, of uh, Wellington there, number 20 Tilly, just, just rolling that pull over. Number 28 here, uh, Bernard uh, Tolova, back to serve. That's a nice flat serve there. I think, I think the middle over jumped on that, that, uh, that A quick there. Jackie went away, he's managed to put that into the deep corner there in one. The linesman has called in. Herman back to serve. Oh, and that's unfortunately just gone out. That's a great leave there. Uh, deep serve gone out. Nice serve there from number 20, Tilly. It's a free ball. Are they able to utilize? Going to the outside there. Unfortunately, number 19, uh, Mitchell Grant. Unable to get that uh, pass the loss. Yeah, I think we just saw a great cover there uh, uh, from the libero, um, managing to pop that back up. Oh, and that's a great use of the C-click. Yeah, haven't seen too many C-clicks this tournament. No, we haven't, we haven't. And uh, uh, that's a Palmy Boys special from Thomas Morty Boy. Uh, uh, us middles from Palmy North Boys High School uh, love to run a C-click. They should be looking to go there more often today. Nice pass up there from number 28. Nice little roll there from Grant. Just over the tips of the block. 26 back to serve again. Yet again, interesting facials uh, from... Uh, the Victoria University of Wellington. I see they've got quite a lot of facial hair going on. <laughs> Some dirty mows. Looks like that hit the aerial there, and it's, so that means that it's a point to the Victoria University of Wellington. <laughs> Thomas Mortarboy, pretty pretty happy about that one. Serves that one out. Libero, come on now. To right, looks like Jack McManaway is having a good chat there with the boys, you know, telling them what to do, what we need to do to make sure that we keep this lead. It's a very close game, 8-7 to uh, Waikato. Number seven there, Javan, back to serve. Mitchell Grant there, just a copy on we roll. And unfortunately, you know, Herman just can't seem to get that over.
Harry Palmer back to serve. Oh, that's a great serve there, cross court. <laughs> Jack McManaway coming all the way in. And he's got to get out wide here. And Jack McManaway with the, the left hand, but unfortunately it's uh, gone around the aerial by the looks of it, or it's hit the aerial in the process. Yeah, that's a tough shot. I think he hit that with his left hand as well. Here we are, number 17, Harry Palmer back to, back to serve again. And I think that uh, that Vic team, they, they, they knew you could see signaling from the opposite player there. Hey, let's, we've got a stack out here to the opposite, um, to the outside, sorry. You know, that's where the ball's going to go. I think when uh, University of Waikato are under pressure, it's going to Jack. Oh, that's a beautiful block shape from Herman. It's straight seal over the ball. Saw it coming early. It's quite interesting to see here in the replay, Luke, that uh, Jack McManaway gets quite heated about the referee's calls here from, from Will White. He's a very vocal uh, uh, player. And, uh, and we have an outer rotation call. Or no, it's... Uh, oh, it looks like he's just... Uh, Will White is calling over the captain here, Mitchell Grant. Leave an out of rotation call. Bit of confusion between the opposite and the middle on where you're supposed to be standing, or who's supposed to be standing. Nice set there from Harry Palmer. Unfortunately, can't quite execute that hit. Trent Webby, pretty content now. He's happy his team are back on top after Victoria had a few serves. And that has just gone out. Is this the commentator's curse coming back to bite us I again? I really hope not, Luke. Mitchell Grant back to serve here. Putting that serve on Jack McMahon away and the use of it. Oh, oh there he swing. is. Great you swing. know, Luke, some would say that he's the man to put the ball away. I, I would say so. He's Look, one-on-one, -on -one, it's, it's pretty tough to take him one-on-one. -on -one. And, and if you're not in the right spot, then it's almost like a guaranteed point. And if I was uh, Jack Shepard, as said, I would be going to him all day. You know, 90% of the time, he's probably going to put that ball away. Yet again, Jack McManaway getting a touch there. Off the top of the blocks from uh, Watia Matia there. It'll be interesting to see how, how, how the setting changes with Jack in backcourt, actually. Um, whether they're going to force him to go through the pipe uh, a lot more often, or if they're going to spread the ball a bit. And that's a great serve there from Jack. And that's a timeout called by Victoria University of Wellington. Yeah, Waikato just starting to run away with this lead here. I think that's a, a good time to call a timeout. Still still enough time, 10 points in the set. You know, anything could happen. I think they just need to come in, reset. I think their energy has dropped off a little bit, and, and it's visually apparent because they're not celebrating as much and they're not talking and laughing as much on the court. And that's the best volleyball they play, so... So I think they're going to try and get back, get a big point, and get back into that mentality. That's it. You got, you know, this is a team that we've seen that when they get excited, the gameplay comes. But if they're not pumped and ready to go, the game falls apart a bit more. So it really looks like Jack McManaway is really leading the talk in there. You know, I think Trent Webby could just get on the plate and go home at this rate. <laughs> I think you've got to give him a little bit more credit than that, you know. <laughs> I think Jack's just, uh, 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 he's got a lot of experience playing high-level volleyball, so, so he's got a lot of... He's quite a vocal lad, some would say. <laughs> yeah. Trent Webby, maybe a just bit more, you know. Hey, you take the lead on this. That's just good coaching from him. <laughs> bit of clapping going on on the other court there. Yet 
10, it's a point one by Jack McManaway uh, from the point hurt there. And by the looks of it, University of Canterbury have just taken up the first set there against the Invitational team. Yeah, big cheers from them over there. Uh, they uh, <coughs> won the first set 25-13 uh, from a topspin, uh, a, a jump serve from uh, Toby Gardner. Not something you see very often. Oh, Jack McManaway just putting that service pressure on uh, Libero here. Yeah, he's, got a, he's got a great jump serve. It's, it's, it's precision and it's power. Oh, that's, a, that's an ace there from Jack McManaway. The boys really need to do something here. Now, now if you're in the backcourt here, what, what's, what's something you would do here to, to change it up, to, to beat the serve? You know, I would almost be, you know, if, if I was in the backcourt, I'd be telling the boys, hey, maybe let's just shift the way we're standing. Where are we standing in regards to where he's serving that's and, a and force him? Pass. Oh, and it's a great swing too from number 20 there. Silly. Oh, oh and it's still a great alive. Oh, and it looks like it's still alive. There's no way that ball's not coming around. Wow, that's a great set. And there's that energy you were talking about that's, that's just come back. Yeah, they need to ride this wave now to, to bring, this, bring this lead back, short, uh, shorten this lead. We are number 30 here. Big Sean, back to serve. Look at that beard, ladies and gentlemen. Look at that beard. Great serve there. Oh, that's a great swing from, from number 14, Lewis Wyatt. He's chuffed with himself. Eight point lead here from Waikato, really running away with it now. Yeah, that's a great pass in from Libero there. Great use of the middle option too. Safety on the outside there, and unfortunately, that ball's just gone out. Waikato lead 19-12. Victoria have served position. And that's a flow serve out the back there from number 28 from Victoria University of Wellington. You know, I don't actually think it's warming up at all in here, Luke. <laughs> I'm still as cold as it was an hour ago. I think you're right. Oh, and it looks like yet again we've got... Uh, Another out of rotation? rotation? Cool. So for those of you who are unaware at home, uh, the way volleyball works is that you have to be standing in a certain position and for example here uh, number 26 needs to ensure that he's in between 20 and 17 you need to make sure you're in between those players that you you start next to uh, if you were to stand in front or behind of those players you will be called for out of rotation it's a tough position here now because uh, your number 24 is going to serve down the line or not uh, commentator Chris uh, <laughs> got down the line and it's out the back of the court Yeah, tell you about to serve here. Nice high float serve there. Use Jack McMahon away in the backcourt. It's just a nice seal safety roll there. Tilly through the pipe. Oh, yeah. great spot. That's a great spot to drop that ball. He, he saw it on the way up. Two blockers, and they didn't come in enough. And he dropped it short just and on his, that. His mum will be proud. It. His mum will be very proud. That's oh, a great flex. That's a huge jump from, from the number seven, uh, Javan Weehuppi, but not enough, you know. It, it, it jumps too high, too much time, you know. You've got two-man block on it. Here we go. So, University of Waikato, a little bit of pressure here. I can see Jack away just saying, hey, I've got this. I'm going to take this side of the court here. Libero's taken most of the that side. That serve's unfortunately just gone out. Yeah, not the time you want to be making service errors when you're down by six. Uh, in a semi-final match. Oh, 
Number 14, Lewis White here. Serve. And that ball's gone in there for the Victoria University of Wellington play. Yeah, Mitchell Grant's been having a great swinging game today. He's, uh, he's been making some smart options. Uh, hitting the ball when it's there and then when it's not playing a, a, a hard shot. So either either rolling it or, or tipping it short or just putting it in the position where, where the other team's going to struggle to defend it. Oh! Oh, and that ball was blocked out, but uh, number 23 still covered in touch. <laughs> and I don't think they'll be too happy about that. <laughs> we just watched that replay there. Oh, look, his hand's on his head and he knows. He knows it. Number 26 back to serve here. Thomas Mortarboy. Oh, and unfortunately, Big Short, he got a touch on it and he's trying to turn around and he couldn't quite find the ball. Timeout called there by the. Uh, University of Waikato there, I think. Oh, I believe it was uh, oh, a Victoria was University. Was it Victoria? Yeah. Uh, uh, kept <laughs> Referee Will White did not signal the direction early enough for, <laughs> for your call. Apparently <laughs> so. I'm, I'm quite disappointed. That's okay. Yeah, Waikato's really run off with the lead here, but it's, it's still quite a tight game. There's some good looks from uh, Vic. Uh, I, think, I think their hitters are playing quite well. Um, but there's just something missing there, and I'm not sure what it is. If you're if you're the Vic, Victoria University coach right now, what what's your what's your plan? I would be saying, hey guys, we need to just fix this. Make sure we get out of this rotation as soon as possible because we, you know you're 20, you're on 23. You're only two points uh, away from you know have, having the set gone. You know, let's just fix this up. Let's just get a nice pass into the center, and you know, l l let's be able to utilize some options. And if we're gonna free ball it, don't make it easy. Because at this level, you can't afford to make those free balls easy. Communication breakdown. Unfortunately, not able to utilize Jack McMahon away, but it doesn't matter. Victoria make the unforced errors there. No, it was, it was actually a, a great option from the setter there because you have the, uh, this, the the Vic setters all the way in the backcourt running to get forward. So if you want to you want to play that fast ball to the outside, uh, maybe a B quick there would have worked better, but it's a great great thought, you know. Oi, Vic Shaw getting up there and having a swing. He's a happy man about it. Doesn't even look like he swings hard on the ball, but it comes out with some speed and power. And a bit of speed there on that set, but uh, Jack Manaway not able to put it away. 19-24 here. Waikato on set point. Just need to put one ball away. It's a nice take there. And it's an open... <laughs> Open bar position for uh, Jack McMahon away to swing into there. Yeah, that'll wrap up the set. 25-19 to Waikato University. Uh, they'll take the first set. And uh, uh, moving into the second set, I think we can expect to see a lot of the same stuff from Jack McMahon away. Um, set of pushing him the ball when he's in the front court. Um, but also, we saw some great blocking from, from Waikato. Some amazing blocking. They've got a huge, uh, a huge front court. And uh, uh, Javan Weehubby with his block. And also, Ratia um, Batia Herman, they've, they've both got massive blocks there and uh, looking to make the most of it again in the next set. Just watching a few replays here, obviously, you know, Waikato just massive swings. I feel like, uh, that, you know, they've, they've got the swing capacity, but unfortunately, they're just not insistent enough to be able to use those. So that puts University of Waikato up 1-0.
and they'll be pretty happy with that. I think they're favourites in this game to get to the finals, which is looking like it's going to be against the University of Canterbury. Yeah, I think they're putting on a, a bit of a display against the, the uh, under-19, oh, not under-19, sorry, Canterbury Invitational team. Uh, close second set so far, though. I think it's 8-6 uh, eight, eight, to uh, UC Men's team. Um, so they, it's not to underestimate these boys, but they're, they're playing a, a pretty good game. So these, you know, they're, they're the underdogs, these uh, young invitational team. You know, they're, they're there to, you know, as Ben Lang at Shirley Volleyball Club said, sometimes, you know, there's one team that's going to come in just to ruffle the feathers of the competition. Yeah, that's you definitely know? them. Just come in just to ruffle the feathers, you know, put a couple of pe people out of play. It's, yeah, no, that's what they're there to, there to do. Yeah, and I think they're doing a great job of it. Um, a lot of talent in that team. We're about to start the second set of the semi-final. Here we are, teams taking the court. Just an update on the temperature. Apparently it's about three degrees now, which is uh, three degrees warmer than it was uh, an hour ago. <laughs> but three degrees is still pretty cold. Oh, it might make all the difference to this game, you know. Both these teams from uh, uh, up the North Island. Uh, <laughs> you used to a bit uh, warmer temperatures, I'd say. I don't think North Islanders know what frost is. Second ref just checking the rotations, making sure everyone's in the right place. Jack Shepard, Seto back to serve. Use of the D set there. And number 19, Mitchell Grant, able to capitalise on that block. Victoria start up 1 0. Put your ground back to serve and into the net. Yeah, that's disappointing, especially after a big point. Winning the point, go back to serve and then service error. And Jack McMahon away on the service line here. Yeah, we've been seeing these serves all tournament from him. These big power serves that people struggle to get an in play. Uh, and play pass off of. And it's, it's, it's made a lot of difference to the team, you know. They've been able to go on, on big scoring runs and it's really demoralising as, as the defending team when that happens. You know, we saw that before from the University of Waikato women's team. It was highly impressive, you know, two massive comebacks but couldn't quite execute the, uh, you know, the 100% the, the comeback of actually getting the win. Jack McManaway with the power serve there hitting off a tape. And he's going for the chase. For a big guy, he can move. Sean just opting for that little tip there. Big swing. Way to put it away. Number 14 there, Lewis White. Yeah, honestly, there must be something in the, in the water up in, in Waikato that, that, uh, that uh, fixes the serve, you know. Uh, uh, a great serving uh, university all round. Oh, that's a great pass there, though, from the Wellington Libero. And that's just hit out. No contact. Waikato get the point. Yeah, Jack looking here to continue this run. Yeah, I heard, actually, that they put Waikato drought in the Waikato River up in uh, Hamilton. <laughs> heard it's healthy for you. Must be what's helping with the serving. Hopefully the boys didn't get too much on the rock last night. That's point there for Victoria University of Wellington. Now number 30 here, Sean to serve. Got a nice deadly float serve here. Down the line. Oh, that's right on the line too. It's a 
Great up there from Jack McManaway. Lewis White to swing through the ball. Opted for the pipe there. It's come up a bit short, unfortunately. Yeah, a bit of a change up for the uh, Victoria University lineup. Uh, they've subbed out uh, Thomas Morty Boy in, in the middle and uh, put in Harry Miller. That's a great float serve there. Libero shanks the ball. Back managed to get it back in play. Jack McManaway pushing out there to the uh, opposite. Great set there from Jack McManaway. Oh, he can do it all, can't he? Jack of all trades, some would say. <laughs> Jack of all trades. It's in the name, Luke. It's in the name. Here we are, number 23. Back to serve here for Waikato. Lauli Alfred. Oh, 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 big block there. Javan. Javan Weehuppy tells him to sit down. Look at him. <laughs> Look at the way he came off that. It's a great serve there. Hit again, Lauli Alfred. Just great service down the line. They've clearly picked the target, and I think that's the libero. Uh, timeout called by uh, Victoria University and uh, a good time to do it too down by six early in the set Big Sean doesn't seem too faced he's keeping that happy face you know I think he's there just to keep the boys at bay it's all good it's just a game let's make sure just we keep on having fun yeah he's, uh, <laughs> he's, he's when he comes back on I think he'll, he'll be making a big impact um, and, and it's, he's, it's like the the match that starts the fire right I like that. I, I really like that. That's a good way of looking at it. Hopefully it'll warm up this arena because it's pretty, it's pretty cold in here. <laughs> it's pretty cold. I, I, I can't even describe people how cold it is in here. You know, if you're sitting up in Auckland or you're sitting up in the North Island, somebody watching, you know, just, just be thankful that you're not here in Pioneer Stadium uh, freezing your ass off. Here we are, number 23, uh, Lauli Alfred back to serve again. And he's still opting for that. The service ser pressure on the libero. Look at him. He's going, hey, it's nothing. It's nothing, boys. Yeah, that's a great serve off the timeout, too, you know. <laughs> not, not letting them get that uh, momentum early off that timeout. I'll tell you what, if I was on the bench right now, I'd be pretty cold. Just seeing these fellas here on the bench. <laughs> They're smiling. They're happy and content. Oh! And he, he was loving that serve, but unfortunately, he's uh, served into the net. Yeah, really picking that libero apart, eh? Uh, putting that ball in a tough spot on the line and uh, forcing him to make a decision whether it's in or out. Now, it can go one of two ways when you serve on a libero. It can either be, you know, the best plan of the game or it could be the worst decision you make. A lot of the time as a libero, you feel the pressure. And if you don't feel like one, you can do your one job well, you start to buckle to that pressure. Mitchell Grant opting to set that ball. Fortunately, coming up short there Some on the great, outside. Great defense here from Weehuppy. Just all over the place, you know, big blocks in the right spot. Really nice and high hands. He knows it. Boy's got springs, Luke. He sure does. Unfortunately, Lewis Wyatt un just couldn't quite get on that ball. Yeah, that ball just slipped through his hands. Great take there from Jack McMahon away. Lewis Wyatt managed to get a swing on that on the outside. Big roar from the bench there. Could this be the energy they need? All right, uh, Tilly back to serve here. Number 20 for uh, Victoria University of Wellington. He's had a great tournament, hasn't he? He has. I think he's a standout. And I've, I've been made aware that uh, coaches have had to uh, nominate other players from other teams for a bit of a tournament type team. I think a lot of people will be looking at uh, looking at him as the standout for this Wellington side. Oh, 
short float serve there. Good pick up there. Libero just putting it out to the opposite. Fortunately, he's in backcourt, so he's not allowed to actually hit that ball in front of the three meter line. Oh, <laughs> banging it down the lines. Ratia Vatia Herman almost catching that ball. Oh, big Jack McManaway just calling the boys in, saying, hey, let's, let's fix this. We've got to fix it now. Don't let them back in the game. Good serve there, Jack McManaway. Great, great hand pass. And oh. he's been blocked out, ladies and gentlemen. This is the battle of the middles here. No blocking at the net. Harry Miller dedicates that one to his mother. Loves it. Looking to run one back here, another block. Oh, timeout. Timeout. Oh, Vicker back in the game. The energy. It's back up. <laughs> I don't know if you can hear that, but the the the, the, the Vic boys chanting in the background. Uh, they're, they're loving it, eh? Uh, this is the energy that they need. This is the type of volleyball that they play best. And uh, I think we're seeing that, that come out here. So, yeah, we're starting to see Vic on the comeback here. You know, Waikato just, even, you know, Jack McManaway, the go-to man, just getting, you know, getting blocked there on the pipe. You know, one of the big things they say, you know, and I remember being coached by as well, is just, you know, if you're hitting the pipe, Never swing straight. Never swing straight. You're just going to most likely get blocked there by your, your middle blocker. Oh, that's a great serve there as well. Right Jilly. on the line. Oh, and he's back, ladies and gentlemen. He was gone for a short while, but he's back. Yeah, great finish by Jackie Manaway. Through the pipe. Yeah, Lewis, Lewis White back to serve here. Topol Boy. Overpass blocked there. Oh! oh. Okay. Big shot down the line. They felt that. I think the Waikato River just shook a little bit. Trent Webby, very pleased with that. Coach of the sideline, he's still clapping. Great serve there from Lewis White. Not four touches, surprising. Yeah, a little bit of joust there on the net. Uh, Harry Palmer, he's uh, he's been up at the net a lot today uh, in the last few points. He's uh, been up contesting everything. And unfortunately that serve's gone out the back. Javad back here to serve. Great serve there from Javan. Nice hit there as well from Mitchell Grant. And it's just a short roll there. He's gone for the over the top of the block roll. Jack McManaway. Waikato lead 14-9 here in the second set at Pioneer Stadium in Christchurch. 1-0 uh, up for Waikato. And that's a great serve from Javon. Yeah. Nice and flat. <laughs> Giving oh. it to Jack McManaway. <laughs> oh. I think, I think they're looking at the dent in the floor there, Paul, mate. I think that's if he keeps hitting like that and hits someone again, I think we're going to need to call uh, an ambulance in here, Luke. Uh, someone's going to get hurt. Yeah, that's, that's some impressive. That just speaks to the skill and, and the power of Jack's head. Whoever his coach was at Tauranga Boys, he'll be smiling now. Oh, lack of a chase there. They got a bit of a breakdown there. Number 24 for University of Waikato, uh, Raitia Vatia. He, he kind of stood there thinking, oh, I don't need to go for that ball. And the center kind of went, oh, maybe I should have run after it after all. 17 for Vic, back to serve here. Javan not quite completing a nice pass there. It's a great spot to put the ball for the libero. Nice high ball. Uh, uh, it's a very hittable ball. 
especially out of system from passing from almost the baseline. Jack Shepard back to serve here. Great serve there down the line. Opting for that nice outside ball. Now, interesting to see here as well, Luke, that uh, number one uh, for University of Waikato Libero, uh, Ravi Serna, he's actually been subbed on for the uh, outside. Interesting. S we're switching it up, uh, uh, keeping the keeping the middles on, having a bit of faith in the in the middle passing. Is that Javon, uh, Javon there, number seven? Javon, Javon middle, middle playing through the backcourt. All right, Jack McMahon away back to serve here. Now he had a really good service run in the first set. Uh, who knows? Let's see if we could, you know, complete all the way to 25 here. The way he eyes up the ball. Again, another great, great pass, serve. though. Tolling him down the line. Number 30, Sean from Victoria University of Wellington to serve here. And into the net. Waikato will want to be wrapping the set up now. And uh, we've got one of the most effective servers, uh, number number 23, Lauli Alfred. Uh, that, you know, with <laughs> Last time he had service, he just managed to serve on that libero three or four times, and unfortunately, he's been he's been caught out this time for admiring his serve a bit too much. Yeah, it was it was a great serve, and, and it forced the the, the libero to pass an overpass, but just out of system. And uh, sometimes, as a server, you know, you serve the ball and, and get caught sitting there admiring your own serve and being like, "That was a great serve." Where the game's still going, and you have to get on the court and uh, uh, actually play the rest of the game out. So that's the third best serve in a row there for Victoria University of Wellington. Uh, putting Waikato on 19, 19 13 up for Waikato versus Victoria, and it's uh, 1 1 0 2 and set score to Waikato. Number 14 here, Raitia uh, Vitia, uh, back to serve. And it's another, another era, another service era. Well, they're starting to, starting to creep in these service errors, and, and that's been what's changing some of these games. Uh, if you're Vic here, you want to you put a serve in. You've missed, missed three in a row, so the next one has to count. So Tilly back to serve here. McManaway taking that ball, unfortunately coming off the top of his hands. And it's a big swing there from Mitchell Grant, and it's coming to the commentary box here. And he's managed to hit that in. Yeah, great swing. You great know, swing Vic, Vic are holding on here, Luke. Yeah, they're, they're, they're staying in here. They're, they're just not wanting to, to bow out just yet. Only four points behind. Tilly serving. Highly effective server. Jack couldn't quite get the connection. I think he wanted there. Going to get it out of system play. Bit of a stumble there. Oh, and unfortunately... Tilly has hit the ball out the, out the side of the court there. A couple of legs got tangled there. I think uh, Harry Miller and uh, uh, Mitchell Grant uh, off the block just came down, landed. No ankles, but just, I think, to, to, upon turning around, uh, feet getting tangled up. Oh, that, that is a shank and a half. That looks like shanking 101 over there from, uh, from Mitchell Grant. Uh, it's that classic. You look back at your platform going, what went wrong there? Waikato 21-15 up as Vic call a timeout. Yeah, six-point lead here. Uh, uh, if you're if you're Waikato, you want to put the foot down now, finish this set early, move on to the third, and 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 ride that momentum into the third. I think what Vic is struggling with at the moment is that is that serve. Uh, I think they're getting beaten a lot on that serve. Um, like you said before, shanking a lot of balls and also sending a lot of overpasses. Uh, those overpasses are giving it almost a free hit for for one of the hitters because they're, they're getting splits too off the block. So why kind of want to be going out there and just finishing up this set really? They just want to be up two 0 and I think they'll you know hit into that third set with, with a lot of comfort. Fourteen here to serve for University of Waikato, uh, Lewis White.
unfortunately he's just served that out. It's a great timeout call from the coach. You know, that's that's the coach's point right there. Ice the server. And again, interesting to see. So he's uh, looks like Trent Webby's keeping Lewis White on in the backcourt this time, and the Libero's on for for the middle. Oh no, a bit of a communication breakdown there. Yeah, both both players just looking at each other, saying, "Are you going to take it, or am I going to take it?" Uh, 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 and uh, led to a point uh, off the serve. If I was, uh, you know, Trent Webby, I'd be saying, "Hey, Libero, you need to be taking that. That's your ball." Anything that comes in towards you, you take all that all day. Javan just taking that ball and putting it deep into one. Fortunately, Mitchell Grant heading into the aerial there. You know, Victoria were right there on the cusp, only 17-21 down, but now they're 17-22 down. Javan back to serve here. So, yeah, it looks like they have gone with uh, keeping Lewis Wyatt on here. Looks like Javan's going to come off this time. That is a big swing, and it's unfortunately just gone, just gone out there. Yeah. From my angle, it looked like it was just in, but hard, hard to tell. It looked like it was quite close. Trent, Trent Webby there, uh, uh, signalling that it was out. Uh, love that, love that sportsmanship. Um, yeah. Here we are, number 17 uh, for Vic back to serve. Jack Manaway, you know, his receive game hasn't been that great in the last few points. Looks like a almost could have been considered a carry there, Luke. <laughs> oh, yeah, a bit of a 50 50 call, but great finish there uh, with a 3D hit. Fantastic finish. Going on the outside of the block there. Here we are, set of Jack Shepard uh, getting back to the service line. Waikato on 23 18 here. Two more points to go. Nice serve there. Trying to use that middle. Unfortunately, out. Sean's just hit the ball out. <laughs> but looks like Sean's saying, hey, weren't there any tips? Yeah, he's arguing no. Will White's got a bit of a smile on his face there going, nice try, buddy. <laughs> you know, sometimes you've got you to try and see if there's anything there, uh, even if you know there's not. <laughs> and that's a big shank there, but can they play it back in? Vic's still in the game. Oh, oh the oh, try oh, 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 bro! <laughs> It looks like they were fighting over whose ball it was there. Yeah, if we just watch that replay here, we see that the ball's been set. It's what called an AZ there for Jack McManaway to come around and wrap around over the top of the middle. What a big point to finish on as well. That, that's, that's massive. <laughs> and, and all I can think of, you know, if Waikato end up taking out this game in this third set, uh, it's going to be a spectacle between them and the University of Canterbury. Yes, yeah, so uh, the, University, the University of Canterbury up two sets. Uh, and have a, have a, have a three-point lead in the, in the third set. Um, but the, those Canterbury Invitational boys are, are giving them a good run for their money. Jack McManaway quite stoking himself on that last play there. You know, I think we're really seeing, you know, I think I would almost go as far as saying, you know, I haven't really watched Canterbury on the live stream yet, but, you know, standout player from, from those of you who are watching from home. Yeah, some great blocks there as well from uh, Harry Miller. Uh, two in a row he got and then missed the third, but some, some great blocking skills all around actually. Uh, we're seeing a lot of blocks through the middle um, from the likes of uh, uh, Javan Weehubby and Harry Miller. Um, bit of miscommunication on that play. Oh, I love that one, that was a great play. The irony of it was unreal. <laughs> Sometimes as a server you just get a little bit too carried away looking at your serve and admiring it and then the ball comes back over. Yeah, that's an impressive finish there. Icing on the cake, some would say there, Luke. Right, so, third set's just about to start. University of Waikato are up 2-0. Uh, Victoria University of Wellington will be wanting to come back into this game here. Do you think they've got what it takes to, to come back out of this one, Luke? You know, anything can happen when you're watching these guys. They 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 the, 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 they ride the energy, and, and it all depends how they come out and start this set. It'll be the real tell on how they finish it. Well, 
Looks like number 20 might be coming on there for University of Waikato. Cody Tanner making an appearance. Yesterday's uh, wannabe center from yeah. the middle. Yeah, he actually uh, he played through the middle and uh, set some great balls. He actually had a pretty good service run against uh, Otago, I believe. So it looks like uh, Trent Webby here is starting to play his bench a bit. Putting on uh, Cody Tanner and also uh, the likes of uh, Paul Lager uh, to a Ulfai. Still yet to see Blake Hanna take the court in the set. He's uh, he'd been having a great tournament, uh, uh, spreading the ball, using his medals a lot, and uh, got a lot of splits for Jack. Back starting off strong with a shank ball there off the serve. Yeah, great serve from Harry Palmer, just off the back of the libero's uh, forearms there. Great pass in there. Jackman ran away, swinging for the back there. Deep corner. Great serve there from Jack Shepard. Oh, it's still alive, still alive, ball's still alive. Boys started celebrating early. And use of the middle again, and he's managed to do the double. Thomas Mordiboy having a great run there. Yeah, but I was a bit worried for Victor, you know. It was a, it was a great hit, but the uh, ball's still alive, you know. You can't be celebrating too early. Oh, bit of a misconnect there, I think. I think this is this is the type of play that we've been missing from uh, uh, Vic this game, and uh, they're playing really well here. If, if they can carry this energy and this momentum uh, throughout the rest of the set, they might be might be good for the set here. Opted for the roll there, and it has uh, done the job. Jack McManaway back to serve. He's been key at creating serve pressure this game. He's, you know, he's probably going to bring them back here. That's what his plan will be in his head. Let's just, you know, get this ball over. See what comes of it. And it's a great serve there, but that's a great pass from uh, the libero. Oh! Back. <laughs> that's the ceiling. <laughs> Big roof block. That hurt. The crowd felt that one. Look at that. His hands penetrated over the net. Holy hell. Be looking to get that one back this time. Oh, Jack just serving down that line on Tilly. Jack Shepard sending it through the pipe to Jack with Mataway. That's the Jack duo. Set it to header. Well, some might say that's the Jack attack. The Jack attack. <laughs> I like that, Luke. There we go. Jack McManaway back to serve again. Oh, oh, that has gone on the line. Uh, I believe Joshua Fitzpatrick here from University of Otago has, has deemed it in. Uh, the, the bench from Uni the Vic, Vic aren't happy about that. Yeah, they're calling for a TMO, uh, TMO here, but I think the ball expands and it, it, <laughs> they're going to expand it on, on, on collision and touch the line potentially. That's another great serve from Jack McMahon. Away! Yeah, number 20 there. Cody Tanner getting up on it. He's got up on it twice. And William White up there on the stand calling a double touch. Yeah, and great, it's a timeout. Great, great to see Cody Tanner come in and, and make an impact straight away in the set. He'll be feeling pretty pleased with himself there, Luke. He'll be fizzing. He'll be fizzing. Sitting on the sitting on the bench watching these boys play a great game and then come on and have an impact like that. What more can you ask for? Waikato up 6-3 uh, in the third set of the semi-final. Oh. 
So as I said before, before Jack McManaway went back to serve, you know, he's there to do a job. He's there to, you know, thump that ball. Put that ball in the court. You know, put that pressure on. And Vic can't seem to answer it. They just can't seem to find a solution to it. And when they do get the pass, Tilly then got blocked. That was a massive block too from uh, uh, right here, but here. Massive block. Big shift in energy. Jack back to serve. Let's see if that timeout is, is going to change the way Jack approaches the serve here. Still putting, you know, at least 90% head into it. And Jack McManaway jumping over the UTZ advertising signs out the back there. Unfortunately, couldn't quite get it back in. Yeah, he got caught in the back net like a fish. Uh, <laughs> I think maybe if, uh, if that net wasn't there, he might have been able to carry through and, and maybe even got the ball, but uh, not today, unfortunately. Yeah, number 26 here from the Victoria University of Wellington, Thomas Waterboy. Serve. And Vic, uh, well, why can't I manage to pick it up? But Jack McManaway heading into the net. I have to say, I, I've never seen a player so dramatic after they make a mistake before, Luke. He's, Jack doesn't like it when he makes those mistakes. He's very passionate, but he's got to be aware that, uh, uh, of, his, of his actions because this could turn the team around, you know. It could, it could bring a bit more negative energy and, and, and uh, reduce their momentum and drop, drop the team's attitude. So he's got to be careful about how he reacts to things. But I think he's just passionate because of, because of the love of the game and he wants to win. Here we are, Cody Tanner. Impact sub. He's in the serve. Great serve there. It had a nice wee float on it. Use of the middle. And it's managed to come off the top of the block there. But a middle on middle action there. Uh, Harry Miller going up against uh, Javon Weehuppy. I'm actually quite excited to see this matchup. Uh, they're, they're two very similar players with uh, very similar abilities. Both can jump really high and hit the ball well and have a great block. Nice topspin serve there. Oh, and that's a fantastic up from Tilly there. Back out to him. Unfortunately, not enough time to get out there. Ball was put a bit wide. Oh, Javan. Look, they're just going one-on-one, -on -one, these two. They're just going one-for-one. A-quick one, A-quick, one, just match up, match up. I'm, I'm very curious to see, uh, as a middle player, how this plays out. I think it's going to come down to who's faster. I've been thoroughly impressed by Javan this tournament. All right, number 24 here. Rotia Avitia back to serve. Oh, opting for that little cheeky dump. Number 29 there, Scotty Talanaga. Nice little roll there from Tilly. Yeah, Vic right. have really clawed their way back into this game, you know. They're and on the, the fringe. They're playing, they're playing a lot better volleyball and a lot more of their style of volleyball. And it's really, really working out. The changes that they've made, uh, I think, have made a big impact as well. It's a nice float serve there from Tilly. Oh, and Jack's coming on that pipe option to, to have a swing there. Off the top of the blocks. 9-7 to Waikato here in the third set in, uh, at Pioneer Stadium here in uh, Christchurch. Number 17, Fulaga to a all fight. Back to serve. Number 19 there, Mitchell Grant, taking a receive. And he's pretty stoked with that. You can't complain there. Yeah, big, big crunch on that post hit. Nice line, oh, nice big angle, sorry. Off the block, a little touch off the block. <laughs> a little bit of confusion there. The Thomas Morty boy uh, not, not ready to come on the court. I think he's uh, enjoying this commentary too much. Great serve there. All right, can they play out of system? Oh, the ability to just throw that back into the into position one. But unfortunately, Jack McMahon away, getting that steep angle swing. We've got a bit of a match point going over here. From Toby Carter on the other court. <laughs> Great serve there from the Waikato. It's a free ball from uh, Victoria. And Jack, unfortunately, is headed to the net by the looks of it. 
Yeah, I think a, a bit look, looking too much on that angle there it needed to a, a, a come a little bit less steep. Uh, little right update: uh, uh, the UC uh, men's team have, have taken out Canterbury Invitational in uh, uh, three sets, three close sets actually. Uh, last set was a bit of a runaway, 25-16. Uh, so we'll see them uh, play the winner of this game in the gold medal match. A fortunate short serve into the aerial there for uh, number 17 for Victoria University Wellington, uh, Harry Palmer. Oh, Harry Palmer trying to do the one hand set there. And that's another point for Waikato. You know, interesting to note that, uh, you know, Harry Palmer there, he's got a bit of a mullet going on. I'm just looking down at the information sheet. He's uh, from Nayland College in Nelson, and I think that might explain a lot for people that are from Nelson. Probably from Stoke. Says a lot about someone's character when they're from Stoke. A little tip over there from uh, Cody Town. Oh! And another point for Victoria. They're just uh, trying to stay in this game, taking it point by point. Mitchell Grant back to serve here, number 19. Yeah, I think they, they just need to keep playing their game, and they're doing that fairly well. Uh, they just need to not, not get caught up too much in, in some of these big hits that Jack's doing um, and, and not get discouraged. And there we go. There's a, a roll from Jack. Roll from Tilly. It's a roll game at the moment. That's another tip. <laughs> Look at those limbs. Yeah, and Jack McManaway will go back to serve after that tip. So here we are, yet again, you know, he's been the big service pressure guy in this game. Let's see how many he can get this time. He, you know, last time I think he got about five in a row, you know, and a lot of overpasses coming back. But that's a great pass there from the Vic. Libero, and they've put it away. That's a great side out for Victoria. Yeah, Thomas Mordibo with that A-quick is very long, very up there, and just swinging with power straight over the top of the block. Libero for Vic will be very pleased with himself after that pass. Morty Boy back to serve. And off the tape there. Dribbles over onto the other side. Oh, Tilly getting the block. He's a happy man. Mum's got to be proud, mate. And Bench eating it up. Bench is loving it. Nice little block there. Dropping it inside the three metre. Oh, and it's another one. The defense is going crazy here at the net. And the bench is going crazy. I'm feeling the vibrations from the excitement. So Jack Manaway pulling the Waikato boys in, saying, hey, all right, we need to side this one out. It's 13 all now, Luke. It's a, it's a big comeback here. I think uh, <laughs> the Vic bench are giving uh, Thomas Morty boys some of their powers with their spirit fingers. Uh, they think they might have jinxed it, though. <laughs> All right, we have Waikato up 14-13 here in the third set. We've got Cody Tanner back to serve here, number 20. Oh, there it is, Javon for the block. Honestly, this game, more blocks than a Lego factory. i say it again, more blocks than a Lego factory. I must be completely honest with you, Luke. I actually went out and bought my first Lego set for the first time in five years the other day. Oh. It was a, it was a great wee uh, Lego Star Wars set. Fantastic. Rated it five out of five. Great swing there on the outside. Cody Tanner, unfortunately, not able to pass that ball up. All right, we've got number 29 here for Victoria University of Wellington. It's been a very Sean. competitive set. Scotty back to serve. Oh, and he's hit the aerial, unfortunately, off the serve. Waikato up 16-14 here in the third set. Ratia Vatia back to serve. It's a great serve there, cross court. Libero picks that up quite nicely, though. Getting a free ball touch. Yeah, middle, middle taking their ball over the center there, I think. Oh, uh, that's a fantastic up there for the libero. They like to play that deep into one. 
Jack's just going to give them that like, high ball, making the move, Diaz. Libero's, oh, that's a great spot for the Libero. Unfortunately, he's had the garbage thrown back in his face. <laughs> he, you know, he gave them trash and he got the trash right back. Wasn't even recycled. Yeah, I think there was a, a lot of battling at the net in that, in that point, and uh, yeah, Waikasal came out on top. Right, Tia Vatia back again. It's a great serve. Mitchell Grant opting to. Now, uh, unfortunately, Waikato touched the net here. Bit of a net, net, net touch there from uh, uh, Javan Weehuppi. Vicar just holding in here, Luke. Yeah, no, they're, they're playing the game well, and I think uh, they're, starting, they're, they're making a lot of points while Jack's back court. And uh, I think it's getting getting Waikato a little bit more flustered. That's it, Javan. That's a great swing. Springs That's for days. Through the middle of the block. Here we are, 18.15 up for Waikato versus Victoria. Set out to Mitchell Grant there. He's given them quite an easy ball. Waikato give it back. Mitchell Grant for the swing. Unfortunately, I think he's been hit into the net there. And uh, Will White has determined that to be four touches. Number 17 here, Paul Lager. Back to serve for Waikato. Substitute. Great take there from the Vic Libero. Oh, a little bit of a little bit of a fist ball there over the Oh, they called it a reach. Oh wow. So yeah, it looked like it was over the, the playing field. So uh William White there, the referee, has called a, a reach on it as it was already over the playing field and in Waikato's uh domain, I guess. Nice push out to the outside there. Oh, that's in! <laughs> it's in, it just trickles over and, and drops uh, drops on that line. Vic, hold on. 16-20 down. The libero will be happy about that one. Harry Miller here, back to surf. Yeah, Javon Weehuppy just sitting in the air for like oh, a few seconds on that, on that play. It's like a, it's a quick, but it doesn't look quick because he's up there for so long. Javan back to serve here. 21-16 to Waikato. 2-0 up. Four more points, and they've secured themselves a, a place in the final. Ah, McMahon away. Up in the air. Off the top of the block. Takes him to 22 points. Yeah, just using that outside hand. That's a timeout there from Vic. Yeah, uh, Waikato started to run away in the last uh, last few points. Um, it's been a very close game up until this point, and, and it's been a lot of point for point stuff, and and sitting around the the two point lead margin. So it, it's yeah, I think Waikato uh, Vic have just started to switch off a little bit later in the set, and then uh, Waikato are starting to execute on that. It's hard to be in Vic's position right now. You know, you know, you're two 0 down. You've got to climb a, a very big hill. Exactly. Even even if they win this set, they they know they still have to play another. They need to win another two sets to to, to take this game, which can be mentally draining. Uh, so we'll see how they how they uh, come out of this timeout. So here we are. Javan's back to serve. Three points to go for Waikato to secure themselves in the uh, tertiary champs final for 2022. And the timeout has worked. Javan has unfortunately served that out the back of the court. Harry Palmer here back to serve. The birthday boy. Great serve there. Big swing for Thomas Morty boy. Free Having ball. to jump in and set. Oh, I think oh. Oh. one is determined that it's a double touch, double contact. Oh, as a middle, you know, you hate to see it. Uh, <laughs> it was a great set other than the fact it was a two touch. But um, I think, yeah, 
I don't, as, we don't really train to sit that much as, as, as middles. But we're, we're all about hitting, serving and blocking. So we don't really get many touches on the ball. So things like this happen and quite And Mick Manaway. There he is. And oh, Jack's talking to William White. William White's just telling telling him to calm down. So here we are. as gentlemen, 24-17. It is match point to Waikato. Big serve here. Jack Shepard been serving well all game. Top spin. He's gone for it. And it's an overpass. Oh. <laughs> what a way to finish it. You know, big flashy point on the last point. Oh, that's a, you got to go out for hit. you got to go out for hit. That leaves it 25-17 to Waikato. Uh, 3-0. That means Waikato move through to the tertiary, National Tertiary Champs uh, final for 2022 against University of Canterbury. Uh, do you know what time that's going to be on, Luke? I have no idea. I think it's scheduled for 2.45 this afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. So, you know what, go out, have some lunch. Uh, you know, come back, schedule in. We've got the women's final at around uh, 1 o'clock, I believe. So, schedule yourself back in for those times. Uh, they're just going through now and shaking hands. It's, it's great. It was great to see, you know, Waikato, they were really composed in, in the end there and they just broke away finally. You know, McManaway went out there, hit some balls. They put the serves in. They did what they needed to do. Um, and that will be it for the next 20 or 30 minutes here. Uh, and we'll have a, the fifth and sixth playoff for the men's, I believe. Women's, I believe. Oh, it's women's. One of them. One of them. <laughs> We'll figure it out. <laughs> hey, we're not paid to tell you the times. We're paid to just sit here and look good and talk some, talk some spam. <laughs> All right. Thank you for listening. This is the University of Waikato, where every day people are making a positive change. Where research helps tackle global challenges and elite athletes can compete at the top of their game. A place where people are given the tools to protect their whenua for future generations. Where talent is nurtured and excellence is celebrated. It's a place where industry, innovation and education converge and where moments are shared with loved ones. It's a place where teaching and learning has no borders and people of all races and cultures work together as one. Our people, our future, positive change starts here. Belief, the emotion that stirs your body into motion. One small drop contains the power of the oceans. And yes, with all this chaos and commotion, you'd be forgiven for thinking, what's my personal motivation? The new normal so abnormal that now normal's an abstraction. What happened to civilization? This world is a distraction. But still, belief will never fail to cause a chemical reaction. Fizzing up your synapses with purpose and possibilities to put into practice. Yet those ones. And so you pause. Breathe. And say... What do I want to do for me? The future me. The one who needs me to believe that I can make a difference unequivocally in whichever way I do. Even if that's flipping me into we. You see, that really is living the dream. So yeah, it's a pretty simple plan. Believe you can.
My world is my storytelling. My world is diverse. Our world. My world is astrophysics. It's always been a dream of mine. I don't know what my career path will be. I approach architecture from the point of view of my culture. I want to contribute to my people. It's a way I can give back. I want to change the perception of engineers. I want to take my tohu home when I graduate. Right now, it's about me. And, and this, this is my chapter. <laughs>New Zealand's leading modern university. This is the University of Waikato, where every day people are making a positive change. Where research helps tackle global challenges and elite athletes can compete at the top of their game. A place where people are given the tools to protect their whenua for future generations. Where talent is nurtured and excellence is celebrated. It's a place where industry, innovation and education converge and where moments are shared with loved ones. It's a place where teaching and learning has no borders and people of all races and cultures work together as one. Our people, our future. Positive change starts here. We believe where you live shouldn't decide your destiny and that any place can be a place of learning. So much of modern life has a handy home delivery option. Why not your education? Maybe you'll start your degree in the same space you share with your whanau or from that corner of the spare room that catches the most sun. Start your new what at the place where where can be anywhere, online or on campus. Massey, New Zealand's leading online university. Apply now at massey.ac.nz. Belief, the emotion that stirs your body into motion. One small drop contains the power of the oceans. And yes, with all this chaos and commotion, you'd be forgiven for thinking, what's my personal motivation? The new normal so abnormal that now normal's an abstraction. What happened to civilization? This world is a distraction. But still, belief will never fail to cause a chemical reaction. Fizzing up your synapses with purpose and possibilities to put into practice. Yet those ones. And so you pause. Breathe. And say... What do I want to do for me? The future me. The one who needs me to believe that I can make a difference unequivocally in whichever way I deem. Even if that's flipping me into we. You see, that really is living the dream. So yeah, it's a pretty simple plan. Believe you can. city is just so friendly. It's a big city, it's a big student city. I love that you can walk everywhere and that everything's accessible. 
the campus is just pretty much in the heart of the city as well. What the students offer to the city is something that you don't get too many other places. That's the great thing about this university, you will find your people. It feels like a university with a city attached to it. It's exceeded my expectations in every way. It's unbelievable. Do you want to study with world leaders in future thinking? New Zealand has been ranked the number one English-speaking country for preparing students for the future, and all of our universities are in the top 3% in the world. Start your journey to a high-quality New Zealand education by choosing a recognised study option available in your country. Take the first step towards your New Zealand education now, because the world needs new.
My world is my storytelling. My world is diverse. Our world. My world is astrophysics. It's always been a dream of mine. I don't know what my career pathway will be. I approach architecture from the point of view of my culture. I want to contribute to my people. It's a way I can give back. I want to change the perception of engineers. I want to take my tohu home when I graduate. Right now, it's about me. And this is my chapter. <laughs>New Zealand's leading modern university. This is the University of Waikato, where every day people are making a positive change. Where research helps tackle global challenges and elite athletes can compete at the top of their game. A place where people are given the tools to protect their whenua for future generations. Where talent is nurtured and excellence is celebrated. It's a place where industry, innovation and education converge and where moments are shared with loved ones. It's a place where teaching and learning has no borders and people of all races and cultures work together as one. Our people, our future. Positive change starts here. We believe where you live shouldn't decide your destiny and that any place can be a place of learning. So much of modern life has a handy home delivery option. Why not your education? Maybe you'll start your degree in the same space you share with your whānau or from that corner of the spare room that catches the most sun. Start your new what at the place where where can be anywhere, online or on campus. Massey, New Zealand's leading online university. Apply now at massey.ac.nz. Emotion that stirs your body into motion. One small drop contains the power of the oceans. And yes, with all this chaos and commotion, you'd be forgiven for thinking, what's my personal motivation? The new normal so abnormal that now normal's an abstraction. What happened to civilization? This world is a distraction. But still, belief will never fail to cause a chemical reaction. Fizzing up your synapses with purpose and possibilities to put into practice. Yet those ones. And so you pause. Breathe. And say, what do I want to do for me? The future me. The one who needs me to believe that I can make a difference unequivocally in whichever way I do. Even if that's flipping me into we. You see, that really is living the dream. So yeah, it's a pretty simple plan. Believe you can. city is just so friendly. It's a big city, it's a big student city. I love that you can walk everywhere and that everything's accessible. 
the campus is just pretty much in the heart of the city as well. What the students offer to the city is something that you don't get too many other places. That's the great thing about this university, you will find your people. It feels like a university with a city attached to it. It's exceeded my expectations in every way. It's unbelievable. Do you want to study with world leaders in future thinking? New Zealand has been ranked the number one English-speaking country for preparing students for the future, and all of our universities are in the top 3% in the world. Start your journey to a high-quality New Zealand education by choosing a recognised study option available in your country. Take the first step towards your New Zealand education now, because the world needs new. Kia ora koutou katoa, you're here with Stacey Niao and Spencer Lindsay uh, for this 5th and 6th playoff game against Canterbury Invitational and Victoria University. We're just here watching the net time for the Canterbury Invitational team. Most of the girls here from um, a few of the club teams in Canterbury. They've joined in in the competition. Unfortunately, Auckland couldn't make it. Thank you. 
We're just coming up to the end of the net time here for the Canterbury Invitational team. If you've just joined us, the UTSNZ Volleyball Championships is the third of the University Tertiary Sport NZ Championships. They've already competed in, not the same people, but they've already competed in the 3x3 basketball and the rowing um, championships this year. The winner of this tournament will gain points to the sh uh, shield points to the overall total and then the team the university at the end of the year with the total shield points wins the overall shield so when we look at the 5th and 6th playoff these are still uh, contention for points so pretty big um, deal for the universities to still finish really strong here Last year the final was Canterbury versus Auckland um, and we've got the final coming up after the 5th and 6th playoff. Have you played in any UTSNZ? Uh, no, I haven't actually. Uh, this is my first uh, tertiary champs okay. for volleyball. Um, coming out of high school last year so it's exciting I like, I like the setup it's really well run tournament um, obviously unfortunate that Auckland isn't here this year um, yeah. I think they would have bought some extra competition which would have been good um, usually a pretty strong area uh, yeah. up there so yeah um, but it's really good to see once again another year of uh, the tertiary champs being, being held in Christchurch with a really good turnout of players and spectators yeah, very cool. That'll be another that'll be another matchup that you won't be able to see. Last year, the men played the University of Canterbury men played Auckland in the finals as well. So you won't get to repeat that, but you'll get a good final um, after the women's final, regardless. Yep, definitely. So here we go. The Canterbury Invitational team. Starting six, we've got number 14, Shana. In the back row, she's in position one. Number six, we've got... Who's in number six today? Retita, Philly. 13, Wana. Who's on the outside number? Eight, 17, Beatrice. And in the back row, we've got the libero coming on for number eight, Lynette. And nine in the back court, Ana Maria. And on the Victoria University side, we have. Starting at position two, number 30, Val. Uh, libero number two is... I'm not 100% sure on that. Um, number 11, Italini. Number 19, we have Esther. 27, in the middle, we have Talia. And... Sorry, 27 on the opposite, we have Talia. And 22, we have... Daphne. See there a great start from Victoria. Using the ball and using that outside well. Oh, and that one is managed. out. Just out. We're sitting right here on the line too, just out by an inch. So Canterbury Invitation will draw first blood in this one. Strong serve from number 14, Shana. Uh, Lee, that's an ace. Many of the girls in their invitational team coming from Eastern Volleyball Club in Christchurch. Club that's on the rise uh, on down the, here as well. Yep. Oh, Told off the blocks there. Big swing on the outside. I think this game they'll try to use her as a bit of a threat out there. She obviously has the height, big swing, and uh, try to use those blocks. Yeah. Yeah. You see 
picked up there. Number 17 from the Canterbury Invitational team. Just falling in front of position one. And Victoria unable to pick that one up. Canterbury Invitational leading 3-1. Great short serve there. Another one in the toolbox. If you can go long and short over the net, that's really good. Sends it deep and she scores. The middle coming on for Victoria, number 20, Samara Blackwell. Great serve there by number 22, Daphne. Just finding that seam in the Canterbury Invitational passing line. Very accurate serve. Staying away from the libero here, let's see if she can do it again. Nice, good float serve. Both teams heavy on the outside, real heavy arms. I think we're going to see a lot of outside sets in this game. Great pass there from the libero, number two. It's coming over, easy ball, let's see what they do with it. 27. Up. Great defense from Canterbury. Just couldn't get it over the net there. Ran that ball through the middle. High set out to the middle there. Good option. Mix it up in the front court. Little substitution uh, coming on in the back court. Number seven, Talia Hopes coming off. And number seven is entering the court. Great swing through the middle there from Samara Blackwell in the middle. Nice high set. Academy Invitational, not able to get any blocks on that. It just finishes it off well. Deep push. Seda tries to get that out. Big block in the middle there, and it's touched off the hands. Great block there in the middle. Victoria just couldn't finish it off. Got some tall units in the Victoria team. They're just coming off in the back row um, for defense. Great touch down the line. This, she gets her on the swing. It's pretty evenly matched here, six, seven. There. Go back row. Oh, just beat the ball too fast on the feet. Good save there, got it over the net. Slips through the setter's hands there. That's two hits. If you are quite new to volleyball, you can't do that. Um, if the ball's coming off one hand and then the other, that'd be a two hit. So even if she did get that up, she wouldn't have been able to, the referee wouldn't have allowed it. Deep serve here. Great pass. Out to the outside. Heavy swing. 
Great touch in the backcourt, but unable to get the second one. Canterbury invitation and finishing that one off the swing down the line. Quite a rowdy team over there, that Canterbury Invitational team. Got a lot of energy. That's a big part of it, actually. Uh, volleyball is the energy. Yeah. Um, Quite often here, a lot of calls from the bench going on. Yeah. Pipes the team up. Definitely. Good pass. Run it through the middle. Way to get on top of it. Good job. That's number 22. Daphne puts it down right in front of the libero there. Good option. Seeing a substitution here for Victoria. Esther Crocker coming back on. Heavy, heavy serve there. Wow. Great swing on the outside. Libero could not do anything about that one. There's some heavy arms in this uh, game. Short serve doesn't make it over the net. It's a good option. A little bit risky, but a good option to try. Just creeps over the net. Some of the harder balls to pass, those ones that just creep over the net or come off the hands. Did well to get a swing on that, number 20. Uh, but unfortunately bit by the block of the Canterbury Invitational team. Massive block from number eight, Lynette. Big presence in the front row there. She's in the middle. She's got to move both sides of the court. So Another good touch. Again. Tip comes in. It's up. Bodies are on the floor. They've gotten it over. Oh. Roll comes in from the middle. And it's just in front of position one. Victoria take the point. It's been a pretty even start in this one. Yeah. Just two points in it. Lots of scramble play there by Canterbury. Unfortunate they couldn't get that point. Solid serve there. Through the middle. And through the seam of the middle blocker and the right side. Touches there from Victoria. Unable to get that one up though. Canterbury Invitational, a bit of a run here. Got a four point buffer. Let's see if Victoria can side out. It's a good time to push away as well. In the middle of the set, give themselves a little bit more comfort. Ooh. Tip comes in. On the outside, number 11, Italini. That tip covers just one step too far back if they can get that body positioning just closer, they'll get that ball up. Ball's up, not the best pass, it's over though, let's see what they can do. No, and it's out. Here we go, it's a bit of a comeback from Wellington. Number 19, Esther, serves. Great pass. Swing, and it is out. Goes for the deep corner. Just a foot out there. And Victoria closed the gap. They're one point behind this in the middle of the set. Yeah. 
finds that seam in the block. Just down the side of number 20. Great tool there. The middle is just late to the block there. Floated into it. Gave those hands up as a target for this uh, pass the hitter. And that one's in the net. It's a real mistake we've started this game off with some high quality serves. Uh, but unfortunately that one just going into the net. Wow, what a... That was very fast served there. A little bit of spin on it. Nice to number 20. Samara Blackwell. Let's see if she can do it again. She's staying away from the libero. Going between the two passer hitters. And that's a float. She very might float. get that. She's done it again. Now we see Victoria with a wee one point lead here midway through the first set in this fifth and sixth playoff. Let's see if Canterbury Invitational can get a good pass up here. She mixes it up, it rolls off the net, short serve. And nice they swing. Wow. They finished it off with a tool that's just gone out from Canterbury Invitational just off the Passer hit his hands and now they've caught a timeout. Great run here by number 20, Samara Blackwell. She's mixed up her serves for the for the three she's been on the back line. One she went for a toppy, then she went for a floater, and then she just dribbled that ball over the net with a short serve on the third one. Let's see if the coach's timeout's gonna put her off. Probably one of my biggest pet peeves is when you have a timeout yep. and then somebody misses their serve. That's not in volleyball, we call a coach's point. Coach claims that <laughs> as their own point. Yep. We've got the Victoria men on duty today. Victoria men unfortunately going down in their semi final earlier on to University of Waikato, um, who are a very strong looking team this tournament uh, as they have qualified for the final um, and will be playing University of Canterbury at 2.45, I believe. Um, so that will be a very, very good matchup. Serve coming in again. It's another great serve. She's, back, she's been back here for four points now and. Three of those she cited out. 18-15 to Victoria. Mostly led here by Samara Blackwell with a great serve. And that's all it takes sometimes, is get a couple serves in, put the other team off, give them a bit of a service run. Tickled the tape there. Good block. Middle managed to get it up. Oh, oh. That's a disappointing way to end it. Miscommunication there from the back row and the front row. Oh, the a great run. Great use for the libero. And yeah. Victoria got a couple uh, couple points on the Canterbury Invitational now. We've got a floater there to the libero. Manages to keep it up and it's an easy ball over. Go to the right side and it's tagged the corner there. It has. It's a great placement there from the Invitational team. Out of the D side. Quite often underused the right side in New Zealand, but as one of the most used positions probably internationally. So it's good to see that players here are using it. There we go, there's another one. And what a great high swing there. Just manages to squeeze it through there. Italini, and she's back to serve. Let's see if she can back it up. 19-17 to Victoria, getting to the End of the set. Uh, float serve just catches the uh, passer hitter's arm and she doesn't get it up. 
2017. Goes a wee bit deeper. We've managed to get it up. Good set. Oh, the block hustle from the Victoria nice. team. Nice. They get it over. Back row again. Set was off, but they got it over. It's a long rally here. He's gone back for a slide. Oh. Oh. Unfortunately, just missed time that one. 18 20. Can Canterbury Invitational get on the serving run here, get themselves back into this one? Jump serve into the net. Unlucky there. They've got a little bit of work to do now. They're three points behind. Uh, and the crucial end part of the set. They want to try to reduce the unforced errors. Great. Oh, oh and the ace there. Number 30, oh, Val. It's crazy how much a float serve can drop. There's no spin on that last serve. That is wicked. The next UTSNZ Championship tournament will be badminton on the 6th and 7th of August. So you'll see the Sky Sport next live stream with that too. Make sure you keep up with um, the UTSNZ Championship um, tournaments. They've got five more left and it's going to be a pretty close race. I'm, I'm gunning for Canterbury but um, I think the University of Auckland is leading the overall shield points at the moment. It's an awesome serve out of the timeout. Well, I think the difference between the two teams at the moment is the quality of serving coming from that Victoria side. Um, started off um, back backcourt here by number 20, Samara Blackwell now being uh, repeated again by number 30, uh, Val. Goes deep. Unfortunate she misses, but she's done wicked on the uh, service line there. They're two points away from finishing this set pretty strong here, unless Canterbury Invitational can pull four points back. Great pass. It's going behind. Big block from number 17, but they've got it up, and it's just gone out long there they could make their way back they're three points down serve comes in great pass off the outside over the blocks and in that was a good swing there by Esther Crocker Set point here for Victoria University. Float serve comes in. Great pass. Can Invitational get a swing? Yes, they can. Tip comes in. That one lands in the court. And that'll be the first set to Victoria University. Set one. It's going to be the best out of five sets. So if they win three, then they will take the game.
And we're back here now, live for the second set of the UTSNZ 5th and 6th playoff, Victoria versus the Canterbury Invitational team. You're here with Stacey Neal and Spencer Lindsay. What did you think of the first set, Spencer? Uh, I thought it was great, high quality volleyball from both sides. Um, I think the difference was some great serving um, by Victoria and Canterbury Invitational um, matched that but weren't able to uh, sort of uh, convert their points, uh, their serves to points in that first set. Like, so let's see if they can come out uh, the second set and uh, hold on some more serves and then I think we'll be in for a great game. Got a few new faces here on the Canterbury Invitational team. Number seven, Shana Ali. Press it to the outside. And to the outside, and deceptive tip, but they get it up and over. Left hand on the right side. Fortunately, number 19 from Victoria. Esther unable to finish that one off. Just into the net there. It's great defense from both teams there. Ooh, and that one just into the tape. Unfortunately, doesn't make it over. Let me start this one off at one all. I think we're going to have another good service game, um, but if the serves do start going into the net, that could be another determining factor on why one team beats the other. They use the middle, great option. One blocker in the middle there, so she's got both sides to go to, capitalises that point. 2-1 to Victoria. Great pass. Six high to the outside. Great defense. Heavy swing from 17. Set a tip. Unfortunately, that one a bit wide. It's quite an even start, this one. Two all in the second set. Jump, serve, down the line, but great pass from Victoria. And just a tip there, number 27, Talia. Not only has she got a heavy arm and a big swing, but she can change that speed and do a little tip. So it was a great option from her, and nobody was there. And a deep serve, put them out of system. Umpire's called two hits on that set. And well, unfortunately not making it over once again, hitting the top of the tape. We see a substitution here. Number 27 making way for number seven. To play backcourt for her, I believe. Yeah. 17 Beatrice with the serve just out the back. Yeah. That one not making it over. Went for the hard swing on the angle. Number seven, Easton. Victoria's just pulling away here. This could be... This could put Canterbury Invitational in a position where they're going to have to really work hard to get back into the game. If they don't catch up now. So it's 7-3. It's still early in the match, but don't ever want to put yourself in that position where you're trying to grind your way back into the game. Got a service here. It's deep. Goes straight to the libero. She nails that pass. And a 
Big outside swing. So a net touch here. One of the Victoria players. A bit too close to the net on the block, unfortunately. 7 4, second set. Number 8, Lynette, coming back for the serve. And a great float serve. Goes deep, Libero gets it up. Victoria played over. Great pass from the backcourt. So we see that tip. And it's just out long there. Here we go, they're pulling it back, they're two points away. Could get a good service run going. Ooh. I spoke too soon. Just missed that one there, 8-5. Number 20, Samara Blackwell heading back to the service line. See if she can repeat what she did in the first set. And get a wee run here, extend the Victoria lead. Great float serve there. Victoria with the chance to attack this one. Ooh. Little bit of lack of comms over there, I think. The ball was high and uh, they had enough time just to have the right option, I think. Jump serve. That one had a bit of a side spin on that. Going back, big swing, but picked up by number 20. Oh, that one. They've got a touch on that, I believe. What did that man do? Turn look at the replay. Just reached out there on that block, got her fingertips to it. And now she's back to serve. Setter took that ball. Peter Invitational fighting hard to get back into it, and they have. They turned a 7 3 deficit into an 8 all. So if they, see if they can keep going here from the service line. Just spin on that surf. Victoria able to get it up, but oh, once no. again, no communication. That's forced the coach to call a timeout. And Kenny Invitation taking the lead for the first time in the second set. Victoria just let that one ball drop. A bit demoralising when you see that after you've worked hard to get that ball up. But coach is going to pull them over to the side and give them a word probably. Just going back to the shield points, it is not Auckland in the lead. Lincoln University lead after one event with 15 points. Third is University of Waikato and then the University of Otago coming in third. Um, not only do they have the shield at the end of the year, but they also give out the Te Kaitiaki Award, which is the National Spirit Award. It was introduced last year and it's going to be here for a long time uh, but recognises the institution that captures the spirit of national championship events determined by the other participating universities so they all vote for the uh, university with the most spirit which is pretty wicked very positive addition to the uh, system they have going here got a great serve from Canterbury Invitational they're ramping up now, they're heating up. Number nine on the service line. It's a nice. They're coming back. What a great serve. What's up? Uh, great swing there. <laughs> Hustle from Victoria. They get it over. Easy ball over. Let's see what they can do. Nailed the pass. Out. Ah, pushed to the close. outside but didn't get it over. Number 14 from Easton. I'm going to butcher her name. I hope she tells me how to say it later, but I think it's Oyana. She has got a massive swing on her. She's done so good on that right side. Oh, oh and there's the kill. Number 22 killed it. Daphne, 
absolutely deleting that overpass. <laughs> In the three metre line, that's what you love to see from your middle, dominating. See if they can back it up at the service line. Get themselves in the lead here. Just misses that serve. 10 10. A big thing in volleyball is when you get a massive point like that, you want to try to point the score after. So it's quite important to try and back that point up. It'll give you a lead. Set the ball over. This is a good opportunity here for Canterbury Invitational. They go for the corner. That's oh, that in. Great long swing there. And that was a cannon. Creeps through the blocks there. That's just a tool off the blocks. That small seam in the middle of those two blockers' hands. Eleven twelve to Canterbury Invitational. See if Victoria can get themselves back into the lead here. This is nice and high, plenty of time. Oh, send it through the pipe, unfortunately. Number seven just hitting that one into the net. No need to worry yet, just put that one behind them. Next point. Through the hands. Great serve there from Victoria. Victoria on the other side of the net, they're firing up now. They've gained a couple of good points here. Invitational. Back to the service line. At 13 all. Float serve comes in that one, hits the net as well. Here comes the Libero back on for Canterbury Invitational. It's back and forth on this set. Great serve coming in. That's a great float serve and a little tip just behind the blocks. But they don't manage to get that point. It's a bit scrappy here on the net. Great hustle. Goes deep it corner. Deep. Unfortunately that one just out. Real scrappy play that one. Lots of tipping. Just over the net. Number 14 from Canterbury Invitational has been outstanding this game. Got a good serve in there, but that outside hit just down the line, off the off the blocker's hands. Hard to defend. 27's had a good game too. Talia Hope, she's back on the service line. Great float serve. See the swing from the left hander. 14, Canterbury Invitational. We'll just go into the net. Victoria with the wee two-point buffer here. I've turned it around. Let's see if they can extend their lead here. Another great float serve, but it's picked up. And again, Canterbury Invitational just unable to get that one over. Timeout called, Canterbury Invitational. Down three point to the second set, 17-14. Getting down to the business end of the set. Just going back to the Spirit Awards, the standings after the first event. Victoria University is at the top of the table with eight points. So they're having a pretty good game here, playing off for fifth and sixth, but they are leading the tertiary institutions on Spirit points. They will be going for the Te Kaitiaki Award at the end of the year. It's looking good for them. Let's see if they can pull home a fifth place in the volleyball championship.
Great fight serve from Victoria. That's nice. To the big time as well. Extends their lead to four. Victoria and Uni have been together since the early, earlier start of the year. I think they've been training twice a week and it seems like they've had an early morning training on Tuesdays. I'm not too sure the girls were that excited to wake up that early but it seems like that work they've put in is paying off. It's over, it's a high ball over the net. Let's see what they can do. And finished off through the middle. Great swing through the middle. Down to zone one. Not ready for that big swing. Deep swing there. Presentational. A little Victoria bit of nuts over there. Oh, and they just come back at them through the middle with number eight. Answers number 20's big swing in the middle with a big swing of her own. 19-15 to Victoria. Snags, she picks that. Goes behind and off from Canterbury Invitational. That set was just too tight on the net. Made it tight. Quite tight for number 19 to do anything with it. Big float surf coming in. It's up, it's over. They set it to the outside, but Victoria's back row pick it up, and then a small tip. Long rally here, let's see if they got, they've got it over the net. She's done well to keep that one off the net. Good set to the outside, touch off the block. Ooh. Ref had other ideas. That one the referee Victoria. said out, and he's just changed his mind here. The yeah, line judges said that ball was off the blocker's hands and out. So Victoria do lose that point, and Canterbury Invitational only two down now. Number 17, Beatrice, with the ace, and that's a timeout. Victoria's just taking a timeout here. It's pretty close, 19-18. Quite similar to set one. been run since it was first held in 2016. UTCNZ is still growing. Unfortunately our Auckland teams got held up at Auckland Airport so they weren't able to make it this weekend. But everyone else is still here competing hard. And 17 with a massive serve. Right up by number 16, the Bureau, and they've just slipped the outside ball through. Canterbury Invitational have just now closed the gap. It's 19 all. That surface pressure, just like the first set, is probably a big factor in how the teams are taking the lead right now. Wow, that's a bullet. That serves just set them up for a nice overpass block there. And Canterbury Invitational score another point, 19-20. Oh, 
big surf coming in. Victoria unable to get that one over. Beatrice it, behind that service line is gunning it. Wow, another ace. She's been back here for about four points, maybe more. What a time to get a service run. Steal that lead back. Try, finish off the set. Ooh, that one unable to make it its way over. Lucky break for Victoria. A great service run. Yeah, they were very lucky. That was great serve there. 2022. It's now or never for Victoria Uni. They've got five points to keep to finish off the set and they there's and one steal one from the service line there number 19 Esther Crocker Great another good the beer. oh big swing from number 9 Ana Maria Tulia Brings another point in for Can the Canterbury Invitational team. 23-21. They're two points away from taking a set. It will be one set each if they do. They go for a short serve. And they score the point. Canterbury Invitational here. One point out from taking the second set. Number eight back there, Lynette. Serves a massive ball, just goes long. It's not over yet. We'll see if Victoria can hold. Back at the service line, Samara Blackwell. A lot of pressure on number 20 to get this in. And she does. That was a great pass. Can it be the the And they get the ball up, and it's over wow great save they go for another tip and Victoria have managed to keep two balls up now Canterbury Invitational pump that one into the ground finish off the second set what a great swing to finish the set off just beat the blockers through that seam there we're one set apiece we're going to switch ends and we'll be going to a third set here it's the best out of five some highlights here
And we're back for the third set of the fifth and sixth playoff, Victoria versus Canterbury Invitational. They're one set apiece and probably similar, um, probably similar leading tactics is uh, the strongest serving team at the moment. Team who serves well seems to be getting ahead. Um, but there were a couple of really big swings in the last set. Both both the middles did well to put the ball down and then the outsides finished rounded off that set. So I think if we see a combination of really good swings and service pressure, that team's gonna take out the set. First point of the game goes to Canterbury Invitational with a middle block. And that serve's just gone long, so it's one, one point a piece. Pretty exciting stuff that the Sky Sport Next has jumped on board with UTCNZ. This is the first year and only the third event. Service ace on the libero. Not common you see that. I'm sure the Canterbury Invitational Libero will be working hard not to let that happen again. There she goes with a perfect pass. It's a roll shot to the deep corner. And a big block from Canterbury Invitational. That's the second block. Look at that middle just closing that seam. Getting their right arm across, nice and strong, putting that one onto the floor. And a big swing from Victoria. Here we go, they're bouncing back. Wicked effort from both teams, not a lot of unforced errors to start the game with. Goes for a tip, but another block. Three blocks out of six points. Blocking machines in the front row. Passes good, sets up into the middle, and the middle from Canterbury Invitational crushes it. Through the seam. And scores another point. 4-3 to Victoria. an overpass, lots of block touches here, but Victoria comes away on top with that one, tooled the blocks, dribbled over their hands and just behind them. Number 27 has had an awesome game so far, Talia Hope, back on the service line. Set goes out to the outside and tools the Victoria hands. We're at 5-5. Victoria making a sub here. So it just goes over the net, number 17 from Canterbury Invitational. Great serve. Let's see if we can keep her on the service line. She'll be going back for another one. Victoria just hit that ball into the net. Great set to the right side. Just couldn't <coughs> capitalise here. <coughs> she 
She just serves that one long, so we're at 6-6, six, six, tied game. In set three of the fifth and sixth playoff, number 19, Esther Crocker to serve. She's been quite reliable this, this game. Nice That's defense up. here, can be invitational. That one goes outside the aerial though. Victoria take the point. And lead this third set. Seven points to six. Esther Crocker back to the line to serve. Great float serve with a bit of dip. And number eight on the right side just finds that gap just in front of the libero. Unfortunately, unable to pick that one up. Good placement there. Substitution here for Victoria. Great serve. That's a great deep serve. Unfortunately, they can't capitalise. Victoria set the outside and score just through the blocks. 8-7. Samara Blackwell still back on the service line. Second serve. Absolute rocket of the serve. Victoria just popping that one over the net to the libero. Well defended in the backcourt. Little Great blocker for Victoria. Daphne Petey unable to get up. And just close her hands through there. Shana Ali finished the last set off with the big swing on the outside and she's doing well this set. Just creeping off those blocker hands. Ooh. Got a Victoria player under the net. She didn't think the ball was going over. She went to save it, but she went flying under the net. Great pass from the libero. Doria and the ball dribbles over the net and they score 9-9. Nine, nine. Still early in the set, but both teams just been going back and forth here. Wide set. Canada Invitation able to get that one over. Number 27, Talia Hope on the outside, finishing that one off with a lovely cross court shot. Landing right on the sideline in position five. Italini Manoa coming back to serve here for Victoria, who lead this third set by one point. Is that two hits call? Cool. Not quite a clean contact from Canterbury Invitational. So Victoria took a two point lead in this one. A lot of movement on that serve. Well picked up. And that's just out. It was a great option. See that again. Right side and then it just goes long. That was a wicked serve. Number 11, Italini Manoa. Just dropped in front of the passer hitter, taking her out of the swing, but also she just couldn't get that ball up. Floated and dropped. 13-9 to Victoria. Goes for a deep serve. Got another shot here. Go to number 27 who's been wicked all game. Talia Hope and she finishes it off. Let's see that again. 
Nice high set to the outside and just off the middle blocker's hands. Hard to defend. Great save by Victoria. The umpires just pinned Canterbury Invitational there for going under the net. The whole foot has to go past that centre white line there. So one of the players have uh, done that and they've lost the point for their team. It's 15-9 to Victoria. In the third set, they need three out of five to win the game. Timeout here uh, for Canterbury Invitational. They've got a lot of work, six points to catch up on. This championship event is run in um, unison with Volleyball New Zealand and with the support of Christchurch City Council, so a bit of a shout out to both those organisations alongside UTSNZ offering tertiary support to the students of the tertiary ed education providers that are attending today and yesterday. Served there by Talini Manoa and she gets the pass up as well but unable to capitalise on that They've lost the point and Canterbury have just hit the double digits. Need a big push here from Canterbury Invitational. And I've just served that one just out of on the sideline there. Just roll that one over to position six. Victoria unable to get that one over. 27 tally, I hope. Caught off guard there, facing the wrong way. Makes it a lot harder to get that ball over the net. Big set to the outside. It's over. Nice. The blockers have been lining up great. They've been getting some good block touches. And going to be invitational there. Pull another point back with block on the right side. You can feel a bit of momentum shifting in this one. Going to be invitational on a bit of a serving run. Getting themselves back into it. Down four points now. Seems like they get a little bit of energy when they get a couple of points. A bit of oh. a rotation call here. Victoria University. Not in the right position. Tough call there. It gives the point to the invitational team from Canterbury, who are now only down by three points in this third set. Big swing. They go to the back row and she almost scores, but uh doesn't matter because Canterbury Invitational just Bomb that, bomb that one out the back there. Bit of mistiming, but let's see if they can turn it over. 17-13, the third set. Big swing of the overpass. Get that out of here. An overpass is a middle stream. Gone wide outside the antenna. If it goes outside the antenna, regardless of if it goes in the court, it's out. Got some subs coming on here. Number 13 for number 17 on the Canterbury rotational team. Beatrice is on. I'm sorry, Beatrice is off. And number 13 on.
Great float serve here. Oh, number 20. Samara Blackwell, not only has she been killing it on her serve, but she's just added a, a block right there. And a timeout. 21-13. Seems almost impossible to catch up, but I have seen it done before, so never say never. Number 22 for Victoria University, Daphne PT to serve 21-13. Can she close out the set? Another great serve. Pass a hitter. Kate Invitational. That one looked like comes off the block. Easter Crocker just unable to get a strong outside arm to that one. Hitter uses the block and it hits the antenna. Big serve, but a great pass from Victoria. Managed to get it back over the net. And it's an easy ball back to them. Through the middle, great touch. Ooh. Try to be cheeky there. Canterbury Invitational will try to just get that cheeky set of dump into zone four, but it just goes wide out the court. They've lost the point there. 22-14, three more points for Victoria to close this set out. They will be 2-1 up if they finish this set. Another rotation call this time against Canterbury Invitational. Second ref there, really keeping an eye on people's rotations. She's got her eyes glued on the rotation sheet. for a short serve and it's paid off because she's got an ace 24-14 10 point lead Victoria's just taken a big push on Canterbury Invitational predominantly through their blocking and their serving sets up set point for Victoria University with a big serve coming in was there a touch on the block? Ref says yes. Kennedy Invitational will take the point. The last up here, 27 7. Uh, switch on and off. From front court to back court. And unfortunate there, but Canterbury Invitational just missed that last serve. 25 15 for the third set, and Victoria go up 2 1. Victoria one set away from finishing fifth out um, out at the UTSNZ Volleyball Championship.
And we're back here for the fourth set of the fifth and sixth playoff, Victoria University versus Canterbury United. I'm Stacey Neal and Spencer oh, Spencer Lindsay um, is with me. What do you think for the fourth set? Um, I think we're going to see another even one. Uh, unfortunately, in that last set, Canterbury Invitational just lost it a little bit, uh, but that came from the great serving of Victoria. So I think it's going to be a close one. Um, but yeah, wouldn't be surprised if we see five sets, that's for sure. Yep. Start of the set seems to be pretty even, goes back and forth point for point. Uh, it's the middle of the set that both teams typically try and get away from each other. Um, and it's been that service run. Um, last set was quite a few blocks, but a good service run at the back line there, number 20, number 14. Um, and the Victoria team, they just went away with those serves. Wicked to see some big blocks there from the middles, both teams. We've just got some clarification coming in from the second ref to the Victoria team coach. Just delaying the start of the fourth set here. But we're ready to go now. First serve up by Victoria University and they almost get an ace. Somebody's going to get there, but referee has called that towards Victoria. Looked like a wee bit of a net touch, didn't it? Good start here for Victoria University. Getting on top early in this fourth set. Bell's back there with another wicked serve. She's got a gun cannon on her. Floats to that deep part of the court. It's quite hard to pass. Four on pass. You've got to get your hands ready. Get your mitts ready, but unless you move your feet, it could be quite hard to pass on your forearm. She's just served another cannon over the net. They've just managed to get it over. They run a C. Wow. They run the middle on a C. That's just one small set just behind the setter. The middle comes around, hits it. They've scored off of that. It's 3 0. Strong start from Victoria. Kennedy okay, Invitational. Just hitting that one down the front of the middle blocker from Victoria. Dropping in front, winning the point. So they're on the board here. 3 1 early on in the fourth set. There was wicked serving from Bow. She got four serves back there. And it's just score off three of them. She's hitting some dimes. She's gone to the outside. Number 27, Talia Hope. Consistently good this whole game. She's managed to get that just over the roll shot that over the blocks and score for Victoria. It's 4 1. Canterbury Invitational. Got some work to do, but don't count them out. High quality serving still coming in from the Victoria side. Number 22 back there, Daphne. She's just caught in herself an ace. Another strong serve. Great set to the outside, and the tip comes in. Great scramble from Victoria. They get it over. Hopping for the pipe. That one's in. Get a invitation to finish off the point. 5 2, here we are, in the fourth set. It's a great place to go there when you're in the back row, going to position one. Quite hard to pass and set when you're receiving the ball in that position. And number 14. Picks up an ace for. Canterbury, Invitational. She's been wicked on the service line today. 
Goes for another great spot and it's an overpass. Go through the middle and a big block. Huge block there. Samara Blackwell in the middle. Straight back into the shoulder of Canterbury Invitational setter, Christine Chambers. That one again into the ground on the Canterbury Invitational side. Some great hustle, unable to get it though. Tali, I hope, back there, just picked up an ace. She's back at the line, ready to go again. Victoria running away with this one here. In the fourth set, best of five match. Looking to finish it off. That's a short float serve. Good placement. Great set. And they find it again. Italini Manoa. She had one block out there, just the inside of it, and kills in the centre of the court. Libero able to get a touch on it, but not quite. Send it in the direction that she wanted to. Let's see what Talia Hope can do here from the service line. Floats one in. Just not quite pushing over there on the block. Victoria University getting one down the front. <coughs> Just hits the tape that serve. Doesn't trickle over. So they've lost the point there. It's 9-4 to Victoria. Five-point lead in the fourth set. Fights it again from Victoria. And that overpass. Sends it back at the Libera and says, don't give me that. Victoria Uni seems to have found their rhythm. They're taking the time out here from Canterbury Invitational. Let's see. The back court three, University of Otago woman, Mighty Dunedin, warming up for their women's final, which will be played after this one, against the University of Canterbury. We're warming up down on court four at the moment. So that one won't start too long after this one finishes. And over on court two, we have the fifth and sixth player for the men's draw. We have Massey University up against the University of Otago which looks to be quite a close battle at the moment. All teams here showing some high quality volleyball. on the outside, number seven, the Invitational team, just getting a piece of that block from Val in the uh, Victorian team. And that's alright, they can afford to go one in, one point, one, one point loss at the moment, uh, sitting at 10-5. Goes for the tip, but it's blocked straight back at her from number six. Latita Billy. It's an easy ball over. Let's see what Canterbury Invitational can do. They nail the pass, they go to the outside. Oh, and a net touch there. From Victoria, a bit too close. They've crawled their way back, it's 10-3, they're three points down in the fourth set. They need this set to go to a fifth and have the opportunity to win the game. Was that C quick? Wow. She just put that ball down. 
Great option from the setter, number 30. Val just pops that on the back of her shoulder. Number 20 comes through. Samara Blackwell and finishes it off. She's back at the service line now. That one out the back. Bit too much heat on that, unfortunately. Too excited after the big swing. Far too excited. <laughs> Invitational. The serve. Just using that block again through the middle. Made something out of nothing. That is a creative shot. Substitution here. Talia Hope checking back in. Front court. Some tall timber. Maybe that's what they need. Italini back there serving. Squeezing that one in. There she goes, the oh. substitute. Straight through the hands. Just shanks that ball out the back. Unfortunately, Canterbury Invitational couldn't hold on to that point. Italini Manoa still in the back on the service line. Straight to the libero. She nails the pass and they run the middle. See the replay here. Just popping that ball up. Victoria unable to get a block of that. Number six through the middle. Puts it down. Bit of top spot that serve. Another great pass. We go for a set of tip and she's able to capitalise but it was a great option here's the swing another one sort of a great day big push there it is another point for Canterbury Invitational just tools it off the uh, pass of his hands here the setter's hands oh, dribbles that one that's a tape tickler there Go again, outside. Oh, there's the block. Just gets a big block, but the cover's there. Oh. Ooh. Oh. I'm not going to lie. Yeah. I was on the line, and I thought it might just be in, but so I'm not the I. line judge. One well, judge had different ideas. There's the duty team. It's up to them to make the call. There's a classic uh, example of ball don't lie. Ah. <laughs> uh, that so serve goes into the net. Builds a little bit of character when you think that you are right and the line judges got their own eyes on the on the line and the ball, so you just gotta accept it. Great serve there on the setter. They go to the outside again. She's been swinging. But it's abusing that angle shot. Cannons there. Great heavy, great heavy arm swing there. Put a little bit of heat on it. It's hard to pass. Getting the invitational, just getting their way back into this one. 14 12. They had a slow start, but they're definitely fighting their way back. Big, oh, big block. Big block. This is not today. Get out of here. Big decline right there. Number 14 with the solo block. Consistent player today, number 14 in her whole game, serving, hitting and blocking. She's just gone and scored another one on the right side there. And they've tied it up. 15. Victoria University forced to call a timeout simply because Kennedy Invitational is on a roll at the moment. She, number 14 is playing. It's wicked. Keeps heading her. Exciting set from both teams. They've been pretty close for most of the match here. Third set got away on Canterbury Invitational. Uh, but they're definitely fighting back in the fourth. They need this fourth set to go to a fifth in deciding set. It's the best out of five sets, so they need to win three. 
Victoria have the upper hand here. Spin on that serve, Libero picks that one up nicely. And they find the middle. Talia Hope. Great time out there from the Victoria coach. She's obviously given them some work ons and they've capitalised on that one point there. It's 15 14. And point for point here. Canterbury Invitational answer back. Number 17 on the outside puts the ball away. Down the line, off the block of hands. We did even here 15 or 10 points left to win the match. If they can get to 25. So it's just undercooked that serve. Victoria take the lead. If you're free today. The next match is the women's final for UTSNZ at Pioneer Stadium. And Kashmir come down, bring the family. Should have pushed that one over. Oh, bit of a mishap, that's all right. Number 20. It's quite amused that her mishap, I think, come off her wrist. Not the cleanest shot, but it'll work. <laughs> Give a nice smile there. As long as you score, nobody cares. Point's a point. That's all that matters. Great float serve there. And again. Oh, the setter turns and blocks that. She's not the tallest, but she gets up. Great save by number 14. Nice set to the outside. She's gone for another one. Goes down the line. She's unfortunate there. Corridor of carnage down there. I think she just lost her earring. Earring down, it really is carnage. <laughs> Pick that one up. Get to the time out. <laughs> just clip the side of her head down the line there. It's quite hard to defend that line. It's the fastest travelling ball because you're the closest distance away from the hitter. And if your block don't take that line, you do, so. Exactly. Here with a wee three point buffer. This fourth set. They finish this one off. They take the match. And fifth place here at the University and Tertiary Championship, Volleyball Championships here in Christchurch. If they're unable to take this one, Canterbury Invitational wins it. We'll be going to a fifth set, which is played to 15 points. though back at the line with the serve number 27 Talia Hope has been a main player in this Victoria team she gets the serve in high ball to the outside yeah. that one unfortunately just hitting the antenna She's got one blocker, but she just goes for the roll shot. The ball's up on Victoria's side. They go for the tip. Doesn't work. They've got the ball back. They go for a big swing on the right side. And in the middle, but Canterbury Invitational just giving it back. And oh. off the blocker hands. Canterbury Invitational score that point off of the back of some great defense. Number 17, Beatrice. She's been a solid player today. She has had some wicked serves. Let's see if she can pull some points back here. Big float serve coming in. Victoria almost, scrambled to get it over. See the almost, tips that Libero's waiting there. She almost pulled that ace through. 
unfortunately Victoria just gets through that middle blocker's hands bounces off the net and onto the opposition's floor scores the point 2016 Victoria five points away from taking fifth place at the UTSNZ Championships and uh, looking pretty tidy miscommunication there Get another shot here. They go to the outside. Big swing. Just touches off the libero. And again, Canterbury Invitational. Just finding those tips. They're doing better than the last set. They were down by 10 at the final whistle of the last set. So they're, they're coming back here with some great defense. An execution on their hips. And a beautiful jump serve from number 13. Ah, Great right hustle. Got a few good touches there. Unable to get that one up, unfortunately. Canterbury Invitational. 21 17 to Victoria. Two sets up to one. Just out of five, so this is the. If they can get this here, Victoria will take the game. Oh, Ooh. that one hit him. She's flipped the libero on the chest there. She's not going to be happy about that. See if she puts it there again. Libero now out the back. Fire block to the Float Good serve. Pass. Out to the outside. Great pick up. Ball goes over. And they go to the middle. Straight through the hands. Number six, Philly. Through the middle, puts the ball down. Let's see if they can catch up. They've got four points down. They've got a bit of mongrel in them. Ooh. Oh, there it is. Miss comms there. Lack of communication falls straight through. Avenue of apprehension. The Otago team and the Canterbury team is getting ready on the sideline. It's going to be a big final up next. Stay tuned. Great UTSNZ support here. Wicked to see all the wahine out here supporting women's sport. That foot was just over the line. 24-19, we've got a match point here for Victoria. A substitution coming on. Mr. Crocker, number 19. See if she can make a difference here for what could be the final point. Goes serve. For the short serve. She doesn't get an ace. And Canterbury Invitational just pull another point back there. 24 20. Beatrice on the outside. I can't stop her. Still match point for Victoria here. Float serve comes in. We've got the ball up. Again, Tully Hope, unfortunately unable to get that one over. Canterbury Invitational will stay alive. It's a wee bit of a miss hit there. Quite a high set for the middle and a little bit of uh, miss timing, but they've still got three opportunities to finish the match. They'll use that one. Put it into the floor. Number 22 finishes the game. Daphne. Final score 25 21 in the fourth set. That's three sets to Victoria. Canterbury and Invitational finish. Sixth place. Great game. Thanks for listening. You uh, with Stacey Neal and Spencer Lindsay. Stay tuned for the final of the UTSNZ women's match. Otago versus Canterbury. We'll be back in about five minutes. Thank you.
My world is my storytelling. My world is diverse. Our world. My world is astrophysics. It's always been a dream of mine. I don't know what my career pathway will be. I approach architecture from the point of view of my culture. I want to contribute to my people. It's a way I can give back. I want to change the perception of engineers. I want to take my tohu home when I graduate. Right now, it's about me. And, and this is my chapter. <laughs> Only one New Zealand university is ranked among the top 1% of universities in the world and in the top 40 universities under 50 years of age. Auckland University of Technology, New Zealand's leading modern university. Home to world-class academics, called on for their research expertise here and all over the world making AUT the New Zealand leader in global research impact. Connected to an extraordinary range of organisations worldwide. Focused on a rapidly changing future where creativity, curiosity and collaboration will only become more vital. We inspire, nurture and find the greatness in every single one of our students. We are AUT. New Zealand's leading modern university. This is the University of Waikato, where every day people are making a positive change. Where research helps tackle global challenges and elite athletes can compete at the top of their game. A place where people are given the tools to protect their whenua for future generations. Where talent is nurtured and excellence is celebrated. It's a place where industry, innovation and education converge and where moments are shared with loved ones. It's a place where teaching and learning has no borders and people of all races and cultures work together as one. Our people, our future. Positive change starts here. We believe where you live shouldn't decide your destiny and that any place can be a place of learning. So much of modern life has a handy home delivery option. Why not your education? Maybe you'll start your degree in the same space you share with your whānau or from that corner of the spare room that catches the most sun. Start your new what at the place where where can be anywhere, online or on campus. Massey, New Zealand's leading online university. Apply now at massey.ac.nz. Belief, the emotion that stirs your body into motion. One small drop contains the power of the oceans. And yes, with all this chaos and commotion, you'd be forgiven for thinking, what's my personal motivation? The new normal so abnormal that now normal's an abstraction. What happened to civilization? This world is a distraction. But still, belief will never fail to cause a chemical reaction. Fizzing up your synapses with purpose and possibilities to put into practice. Yet those ones. And so you pause. Breathe. And say... What do I want to do for me? The future me. The one who needs me to believe that I can make a difference unequivocally in whichever way I do. Even if that's flipping me into we. You see, that really is living the dream. So yeah, it's a pretty simple plan. Believe you can. city is just so friendly. It's a big city, it's a big student city. I love that you can walk everywhere and that everything's accessible. 
the campus is just pretty much in the heart of the city as well. What the students offer to the city is something that you don't get too many other places. That's the great thing about this university, you will find your people. It feels like a university with a city attached to it. It's exceeded my expectations in every way. It's unbelievable. Do you want to study with world leaders in future thinking? New Zealand has been ranked the number one English-speaking country for preparing students for the future, and all of our universities are in the top 3% in the world. Start your journey to a high-quality New Zealand education by choosing a recognised study option available in your country. Take the first step towards your New Zealand education now, because the world needs new.
Kia ora and welcome, uh, welcome back to the National Tertiary Championships for Volleyball here in Christchurch at Pioneer Stadium. Uh, I've just uh, taken a leave of absence and just come back now, so um, I'll be commentating. Uh, Tane Grimsey, I'm here with uh, Stacey Yao. Uh, we've got the final on our hands here between uh, University of Otago Women's and University of Canterbury. Um, what are your thoughts uh, here to this game here, uh, Stacey? I know the University of Canterbury, they're coming back with vengeance from last year. They made the finals playing uh, playing the University of Auckland in the final last year and lost in a close, heated match. So they're here with vengeance to take the title. Unfortunately, Auckland couldn't be here, so Otago has made their way up to the top. I'd say predominantly most of the Otago girls probably come from the club team Scorps down in Dunners and then many of the girls from the University of Canterbury are from the Shirley Volleyball Club so again a little bit of a heated match I know there is quite a big competition between those two in the Southern Zone Tournament for South Island Club Volleyball and I'm pretty excited I'm a Shirley girl myself so I might be slightly biased but I try, I try not to uh, I'll be going for the University of Canterbury. I work there too, so my money is on that team. Um, but anything can happen, right? 100%. Anything can happen. And just like that, uh, we've started the game here. Uh, Targo just lead now of 1-0 uh, up. Tiana Cheney on the serve there, number seven. Uh, coming from Nelson College for girls. First year of study. <laughs> Tiana for serve here. Nice pass in there from Lala, a bit tight on the net. A lot of pile able to capitalise on that. Use of Petra Manderson there on the opposite. Oh, three passes now from the libero. Just covering a lot of the court, but they don't manage to capitalise on that point. Fortunately, that was cool for four touches there. Otago 2 0. Same server, she's back there for a third. Unfortunately, served into the net. Canterbury gets served position here. Petra Manderson going back for the serve. Uh, a fellow teammate of yours, Stacey? Petra Manderson, she is a teammate and she's my other outside hitter and she is wicked, so we'll see what she can bring today. She goes for the floater. No middle blocker, but managed to pick it up by Petra in the backcourt. Big swing on the outside and that's out. Emerson Todd there, ex Mamonganui College girl, swinging outside the back there. Petra going back for another serve. Petra's quite, quite good at the short float, but she usually goes deeper. Almost aced on the libero there. They've gone out to the outside, Becky. She is one of the shortest outside hitters I've seen, but she probably can jump higher than most people, so definitely outweighs her height when she can jump that high. Didn't get it over. Looks like an ace there from the University of Otago. Libby Collette going back to serve, number two. Quite a, qu quite a rowdy bunch on the other side there. The University of Otago girls here for a good time, not a long time. Let me just serve again here. And it's into the net this time. Quite a common theme of this uh, tournament, uh, Stacey, has <laughs> been, you know, you get one great serve and you'll notice from the amount of times you've played volleyball too, is you get confident and then all of a sudden you've got too much confidence. Yeah. I'll tell you what, most of the girls who've played with me know that I hate my serves. <laughs> so I'm not a big fan of that. <laughs> but it does happen in volleyball. Sometimes you just got to go for it. Big block there by Eileen in the middle. Canterbury's ball and they've evened the score up four to four. Alana to serve. See where she goes, she's going for a floater. She's gone out the back. Gives the lead up, Otago five four. Quite a good passing line here, Becky, Petra and Libero. 
Great pass. There's a nice swing there from Becky on the outside. Setter takes that. He's gone to the back row. Petra, big Great cannon. Great chase there from Otago. It's a good rally here. Again to Petra. She goes for an off-speed shot. Right side. The defense is outstanding from Otago. Oh! overcooked the set and they've not managed to get it over Canterbury's lucky to get that point the defense was quite outstanding on Otago's side Philantha coming in for Canterbury in the back row number 25 she's serving nice oh. float serve there Ruby Jari there from the University of Otago, unfortunately just hitting the ball out. No spin on the serve, the uh, previous serve from Philantha. See if she can get it again. She's just gone straight down that line on the pass of hitter. She goes for them again, try and take them out of the offensive line. Great pick up there from Petra in the backcourt, sweeping around. Yet again, there she is. Perfect pass to Kelsey Butlin. Ooh. Unfortunate, Becky just trying to swing that line shot there. Coming up a bit short. Kelsey Butlin's just sped the tempo of that set up to the outside. Just got to make sure the hitters are aware of that too, so that they both click. It gets over. That's a serve out. Good comms here from the University of Canterbury. That was pretty close there, Philantha. She almost got tagged there on the line. And Becky comes up with the ace. I quite enjoy watching Becky play, number 15. She's quite dynamic. All over the place. Great serve there. Good pick up there from Kate Carradice though. Big block from Eileen and Kelsey Butlin. I think the setters just love a little bit of blocking when they get there. So we're starting to see Canterbury take that 9-6 lead here. Early in the set. But starting to show a bit more composure. Set a dump and Petra goes off the hands of the right side. Ruby and Jari it's for the tip. Pancake <laughs> off the floor. Philantha saves it and it's just outside the antennas. Kelsey a bit gutted about that. She dove for the floor. <laughs> didn't quite get it in. Ada sub here, love day. Number five serving for Otago. 9-7, two points down Otago, that's not far at all, it's only the start of the set. Bit of a shank there unfortunately from, uh, from Becky in the backcourt. One point to close that gap. Serve straight on the libero, nails the pass. Great swing down the line there from Eileen. And Eileen. Wow, they're just going to give that unlucky. Pitch has just been caught for a net touch. She crushed that ball. We're pretty lucky here today. We've got the Edmondson trio on the uh, bench. Mary, Gabby and Fran. Coaching and managing the, the University of Canterbury team. Which has just undercooked that into the net. Love they still on that serving streak here. Targo now taking the lead, 10 9. Good serve, Becky. Oh. She's just let that ball get on top of her. Kelsey couldn't get to it, it was put pretty low. Targo, two points up on Canterbury. Henry look a wee bit flustered here. They're going to have to get out of the hole. 
Great pass there. She's amended those last two. Eileen, the ability to get up there and have a swing. Eileen's got quite a high arm swing. She often gets over the blocker's hands if she gets a great set. She's managed to put that down. She's back on the service line. Nice floater from her. It's a push out there sort of from Love Day. And they managed to tool it off the block there. Alana blocked that. First year of uni for her. She is studying engineering from Burnside High School. Classic uh, Canterbury degree right there, engineering. <laughs> Comes from a, a great legacy at Burnside High School under Sam Ryburn. They have very good volleyball players come out of that program. Another service error there from Kelsey Butlin. She doesn't look too chuffed with herself about that one. <laughs> it's two back-to-back -back errors here. Let's see if we can get the ball in the court and get a rally going. Here we are, so Tiana Cheney back to serve again. Nice pick up there from Petra, just that out of body pass. Yes, Alana, she goes up and blocks the overpass after a good attempt at a middle swing. Petra back to serve again. Great serve there. Managed to be picked up by Ra Rawinia. Great defense from Petra. She just sat in the middle of that swing. And they've managed to capitalize on that point there. So we're all tied up here at 13 all. It's, uh, you know, kind of been a bit of a power shift dynamic. You get one team that goes up by three or four and then they come back. We'll see if that continues on here. Put a low middle. On out to Becky. She tips. Big oh. swing there from Emerson Todd. Manages to win the point for the University of Otago. 14-13 Otago. Pinch the, pinch the lead here. Number nine coming in for five. So Libby Collette back to serve here yet again. Another girl who's been a part of that Burn Burnside High School legacy. Plus 2018. Not a great pass, but they tidy it up here, go back to Petra. And she scores by some missed comms on the Otago side. Great pick up though. Alana Pohl back here, redemption from her last attempt, and she gets it in. And it's wow, a roll it's a nice shot. roll there. Those points are slightly demoralising when you're in the middle back there, I'd say. Hate a roll shot over the blocks, but it's a great way to score points. And Emerson saw the hole and went for it. Great pass in there from Petra. Great cover there from Lala. Two big blocks from Otago. We get a roll here. Lala coming in and taking that pass. Oh, using the pipe Petra there from the Petra. Back. Emerson with the pickup. Easy ball over, where will they go? And Becky just not over the net there. It's a little bit late on her swing, straight into the net. I'd like to see UC kind of use that right side a little bit more to split the block. Bridget's there, she's quite tall, she's got a high arm swing. Might be, might see it here, yep. Nice. There we are. There As you say, they see it happens. She's managed to pinch a point there. Canterbury's 15 16 down. We've got a sub coming in. Philantha again coming in the back row for Bridget Noble. Four 
unfortunately coming up just a bit short there. Usually quite an effective server. Last game, you know, she really managed to make the difference for uh, Canterbury when they were down a bit against Waikato uh, and putting a lot of pressure on. Unfortunately, she's just come up short there. Good serve there from Otago. They managed to get them out of system. Gone to Petra and she slipped it through the three-man block. Great option from Kelsey. Biggie back to serve here. Great cover there from the University of Taylor Libero. And open space back there in six. That's a great spot for the University of Otago. Nobody there in that deep corner. Here we are, love day. Love day back to serve here. Ex St. Mark's girl. One junior South Islands in 2016. Big push to the outside. Oh, way to get up wow. and swing there from Eileen Dixon. Holy Eileen. hell, she's pretty stoked with herself there. She's chuffed. Eileen Dixon crashes the ball there. She back it up with a serve now. Pegged one point back for Canterbury. There's still one down. Great oh, serve there. Kate Carradis manages to pick that ball up. Down oh. the line there. Down the line. So There's some big hits Libby coming in Collette. now. Swing it down the line. We're at that part of the game now where both teams are a little bit more settled. We're going to get up there and try some things. Targo up 19-17. The back end of the game now, unforced er errors, we don't want them. Kate Carrot is sleeping in there, picked the pass up. High it's swing a touch. there from Anderson. Becky gets it up and it's a great set. Oh. And Petra Manderson puts it down. Not today, she says, not today. Great option from Milana. Often we don't see the middle setting, but she set a dime out there to Petra. Yeah, Kelsey Butler back to serve here. Let's see what Otago's got to say about that. They go to the C. Oh, great pick up there from Kelsey Butler. Don't always see the old set of passing. Yes, that right side, I'm telling you. Crowd's getting up in Andix. We're 19 apiece. is where the pressure builds for a lot of players. We're going to see who can rise to the occasion. Oh, great serve there. Kelsey just notably just starts starting her serve from the middle of the court. Wow, great pick up from Becky, and it's gone to Petra. No blocks there. And There's a chase, but unfortunately, nothing. That's out. That's a timeout called from Otago. It's 2019 to Canterbury. It's a set to 25, it's the best of five sets, so the first team to three sets will take out first place at the UTSNZ Volleyball Championships. Great first set so far from both teams. Interesting to see uh, ex-University of Otago student Hannah Moore in there, who's uh, now currently playing for the East Coast Base Funder up in uh, Northern Zone. Good to see her down here, supporting her team. That's pretty cool. Interesting to note as well, Stacey, that yesterday uh, Canterbury went down in a five-set match against Otago. So uh, there's a little bit of a revenge, revenge match out it's there. It's a grudge match, is it? Oh, there's quite a few people in the crowd. There's quite a few notable people in the building too. Mary Edmondson's actually been asked to be the Southern Ponamu coach for the National Volleyball League. And Sebastian also is in the... Kelsey's on the sideline watching. He is the New Zealand national men's and women's coach. So he's on the sideline here today watching some of the girls. I'm sure he'll be having a look at some of the players and seeing if he can add them to his roster. It's a real shame he can't take some of these players and put them in a Shirley men's team, honestly. <laughs> he's running a bit low at that, at that point in time. Ooh. That's just out there. 
Uh, Otago complaining. Ooh, oh, oh that she's joke. made a, a callback on that decision. <laughs> I'm, I'm not too sure about that. I mean, I feel like we <laughs> yeah. had a pretty good view on it from the commentary box here, Stacey. Yeah, definitely sitting right on this line. So It's happened a few times, actually. I've been commentating this morning, and it has been pretty close on that line for the line judges. Right, here's Tiana Chaney back to serve again for the third time. Lala picking it up with her up. hands. It's out of system, but they go to the outside and get it over. Oh, that's a nice controlled swing there. Petra just putting it up to the outside to Bridget Noble. Bridget gets a good swing on that. Right, Winnie going for the roll. Right, where's the ball going? Safety on Petra. Uh, and a great swing. Can Otago return? Into the crowd they go. <laughs> Otago is just flowing into the crowd. Emerson may have just picked up a wee shin injury. She's shaking it out. She'll be fine. Here we go. Canterbury with the lead. 22-20 here in the first set. Petra on the serve. She goes for the short. She's trying to take out some hitters, but I don't think it worked very well on that one. Just going for that safety roll there. Lala coming in. Back to the captain. D set there to, to Libby Collette. Goes to the right. Bridget. Oh, oh. Get that right side swing again, Stacey. I'm saying the right side's where it's at today. It's 23 20. You're two points away from taking the first set. But I wouldn't count Otago out. They've been playing some massive defense. And they've got a bit of fight and a bit of energy on that side. Great serve Short there from Petra. She's taken Emerson out of the hitting line. Oh, and, and that's a dirty, ball. dirty ball. Jeez, that ball's just dribbled over the you net. You know, they don't call it dirty dunnets for no <laughs> reason, Stacey. <laughs> they brought their ways up to Christchurch, and they've just snagged a point there. 23-21. Great serve. Oh, that's a good pick up there. To the outside with Becky. Oh, oh. getting a, a touch on that block there. Becky just goes and tools off the right side's outside hand. And here we are on set point. Alana Pyle back to serve. Stressful game here. 24-21. Been going back to back the whole game. Got a clap going. Oh, that's uh, a great serve there. Kate Carradis manages to pick it up though. Oh. Emerson tied on the right side. Hey, it's not a bad person to swing at, though, when you've got your middle in backcourt, hey. They're not there to pass. <laughs> They're there to do the job at blocking and getting They're some swings in the middle. <laughs> Emerson, a leader in that Otago team. She's back to serve. Can she pull them back? Oh. Oh, there's a timeout made there, okay, by Canterbury. I thought that was quite a nice serve by Emerson, actually, but uh, she'll be a bit bummed about that. <laughs> yeah. That will be in her head now. <laughs> yeah. She's going to have to come back and serve. Hopefully she doesn't give the coaches a point here because that will be the end of the set. 24-22, Canterbury leads. Yeah, Emerson Todd, definitely the most senior player in this University of Otago side. This is her sixth year at the University of Otago. Sheesh. What's she studying? What's she going uh, into? She's uh, so the reason for that is uh, the, the old law degree. That ah. will keep you around for a while. Yep. Petra Manderson, she's doing her Masters in Applied Psychology. So she's a veteran of the UC teams. The second year, though. Oh, same spot. Good. Using Petra. Oh. And that ball has been swung in. In. I don't know about that one. I thought that one went out, but the Lions judges have given the point to Canterbury. Petra, f Petra finishes that set out 25-22 to Canterbury. They've, they've managed to snag the first set. How did it go yesterday? Did they take the first set? I'm actually unsure about the result of yesterday. I'm, I'm, I'm not sure. I wasn't watching the game. It was over on uh, the other court there. Um, I don't know, but at this moment, you know, you've got that position where, hey, you've taken the first set now, you want to roll with that momentum, don't you? I wouldn't be disappointed if I was Otago. They were quite close. They just let a few points slip in, probably from some poor choices on their defensive positioning, maybe, or just slightly not pressed in their block. But they've definitely served well, and they have had some really strong attacks in the first set. I'd like to see them 
continue that and get a little bit better in this next set. They may be able to snag it. Um, Canterbury's been playing really well though. And they had to fight back for it, they, and they got back in there. They've been going a lot to Petra Madison, number 22. She is putting a lot of points down for them, but like I said in the middle of that set, that right side going out there, they've got uh, number 24, Bridget Noble. She's scored, I think she's scored every time she's touched the ball on the right side, so there she is, there's a the highlight. Just coming in, the blockers aren't really aware of that right side, so they just, you know, seem to have a lot of gaps. Gives you a little bit more options to swing and kill the ball. So here we are getting ready for the second set here. Interesting to see if there's any changes being made. Uh, looks rather the same for Otago. I feel like Canterbury want to keep with what they have. No changes on that Canterbury side. Otago great serving in the first sets. Let's see if they can carry that on. Into the second. This is for the maximum amount of shield points at the U for the UTSNZ Championship. It'll count towards the combined total of the shield points or eight championship events. This is, this is the third event of the year. We've already had three by three basketball and the University Championship rowing event. Kelsey Butlin to serve. Well, running out for the roll there. First year at University of Otago. Next Otago girls girl. And Libby's going back to serve here. 1 0 up for Otago. It's a great serve there. Let's put them out of system. They go to Petra Madison on the right side. Great pick up there from Libby. Ruby Jari just going for a safety roll. Becky picking that ball up. Yet again going to Petra. Oh. And there's definitely some form of a touch there from somebody. Petra just runs into the net there. And we've got the second ref just going over to the first ref. One interesting thing probably they're talking about is you can actually touch the net after the ball has hit the ground, but I think Petra definitely ran into the net that time, so there's no way she would have won that point. Oh no, she just let that one slide. Great serve in there. Just that seam ball, you know, that's where you're going to get a lot of points when you're serving those seams of those players. Great serve there on to uh, number one, the libero. Lovely back there, serving number two. She's three now. Zero four to Otago, strong start. I don't know what the coach said in the set break, but it's definitely lit a fire in the Otago team. That's a great pass there. Kelsey Butler able to get that out to Petra. Great pick up Great from Kate Caritas. They've managed to keep it in. It's a short ball oh. and they score. It's, oh. not, it's not pretty, but it works. Disappointing for the Canterbury team. I hate a shot like that hitting the floor. It's just being prepared for those balls. 5-0. Canterbury's going to have to do a lot of work to catch up. It's not the start they wanted. Great serve there again from Louis Collette. There we go, Lala's fixed up her passing a bit there. Oh, Petra opting for the tip. The Kate Carrot is sending it out to Emerson Todd. It's out of system here. Defense from Otago. Oh, Petra going for the short, short wee cut shot there. The Just watched that on the replay. Yeah, oh, she, oh. Was, she was close. The Libero is putting in a lot of work for the Otago team. She is everywhere on the floor. Unfortunately, making a, a shank there. It's another roll shot from Emerson. Oh, there's that right side. Oh. Ah, fortunately, I think just a bit short, and I can see Kelsey Butlin going there. My bad. My bad. Just didn't get, just didn't get that ball out there. 
not wide enough or high enough to give the right side enough options, but it's a little bit oh, unfortunate. Oh, had a bit Dribbles of a heart attack there. there. Oh, and I think someone just got domed there from Olivia Bowell, <laughs> ex columbia College player. Let's see this replay. Girls seem pretty stoked about that performance. Seven, one, and this time out to Canterbury. They worked hard for the first set, but they're going to have to work even harder for the second set. They're down six points. It's not going to be easy to come back. We know Targo is playing a great game here. Got a few sport coaching degree students here. Kelsey Butlin, Eileen Dixon, Charlotte Lamb, and those three girls all, all studying sport coaching at the University of Canterbury. Here we are, Emerson Todd back to surf here. Can she continue the stream of points that Otago seem to be getting at this current time? Oh, Overcast. Olivia Bowell again. She's soaked with herself there. It's an overpass from the Libero. I wonder if they're going to push her out at, at the minute. She's struggling on this pass. Still serving in another overpass. Oh, and she thought she was going to be, have to get that one. Ruby Jari having to come in. It's a tip. Oh, looks like there is uh, two, two touches there. I think if we watch the replay, she probably hit the ball and no block on that, and then she went for another touch. Canterbury very lucky to get out of that rotation. They struggled a lot. Great serve there. Great pick up, though. Able to be used there by the, by the set of Libby Collette. Oh, nice pick up again. Oh, unfortunately a bit too tight on the net there from Kate Caritas. It's interesting watching right now. Canterbury keeps serving towards the libero and she's passing really well. I'm not sure that's going to be the best option for them moving forward, but... I'll change it up there, pass to, uh, serving to the outside. And she Ooh. also nailed the pass. Oh, oh and I wow, believe... Wow, that is massive. That, that has been deemed as in. That was a massive swing by Petra. Yet again, from this angle, Stacey. It didn't, didn't look good. Didn't look good. <laughs> <laughs> good thing we're not on the lights. Yeah, yeah. I sometimes get a bit too carried away with the flag <laughs> myself. Nice, okay. They've changed it up again. It's almost like they heard your commentary. Stop <laughs> serving on that libero. The, uh, the Otago team actually nailing that super seed. They just... Are not executing. 5 8. Canterbury have pulled back their three points within three points of the Otago team now. There we go. They've surged back on Kate Caritas. Rowani and Namoki going up hey. off the blocks. He's caught that outside hand of the right side. Again, very hard to defend once it's gone off that arm. Almost no way to get that ball. 9 5 to Otago. Here we are, Olivia Bowell here, number four for the University of Otago, back to serve. She's gone centre of the court to Petra Manderson, not the person you want to serve on. Eileen Dixon's managed to pick that up. Becky's put it back into play. Oh. Short tip from Bridget Noble there. Oh, bit of a miss comms. And that just goes long. The miss comms points for me, terrible. It's a I killer. Hurts me right in the heart just a little bit doesn't represent the players at all. Their talent is much better than the mis miscommunication points that drop on the floor. Philantha back there serving. Usually has quite a good, nice top uh, jump float serve. Good pick up there from Kate Caritas. Libby goes to Emerson. Ops for this, uh, the tip there. Oh, and through the, through the gap in the block there between uh, Tiana Cheney and Ruby Jari. If we just watch the replay here, I believe, Reach. yeah, right through that wee gap there. Becky lucky to slip it through that block. It was pretty solid. Pretty solid block there. Good serve there from Philanfa on Libero again. Oh, Becky tries to get it over, but she misses. Lots of safety rolls coming from Winnie and Amoki. Oh, Eileen Dixon just tips there over the block. And 
Canterbury have done well to fight themselves back into this game. Only one point behind now. It looks like uh, Hannah Moore on the sideline there has uh, called a timeout. It's a killer when you're up by 7-1 and then you, you let it slip. You're letting the lead slip. I can't imagine you'd let it slip if it was further along in the set. But when teams start like that, oftentimes the other teams don't lose hope so quickly and they manage to catch up. And the semi-final this morning between the University of Waikato and the University of Canterbury, uh, Waikato put on a display and showed you know, they were about 10 points down. And they managed to come back to two points difference. Jesus. That's pretty massive. I think a lot of it comes down to the service pressure too. When they're out of system, more errors seem to occur. There we go. That's a timeout point for Hannah Moore there on the bench. She's, uh, she's I think she's pretty shocked for Look herself. Her. Coaches are stoked. All right, Otago is still holding that lead. It's as big as it was before. Love day here. Love day Mossman catch pole going back to the baseline for a serve. Served really well in the first set. Let's see if she can back it up. Nice high serve there. Lala passing into Kelsey Butland. It's a block from Otago. Didn't go to the Use floor. Of Petra. Oh, and she's unfortunately tipped into the top of the tape there. Fortunately, to win a point in volleyball, it actually has to go over the net. <laughs> Hopefully, Petra knows that. <laughs> Next time you're at training, you might have to remind her about that one, Stacey. She's not going to be chuffed with herself on that point. And oh, it's out. Of but the ball knows. The ball knows. Yeah. Volleyball is the Nine. winner at the end of the day, ladies and gentlemen. 9 11. Otago, two points ahead of Canterbury here. Yet again, serving on the libero. Don't She's know what that's great. about. She's passing great. No, Kelsey just playing that little bit out of system. <laughs> that deep ball there. The ball oh. Petra opting for that short roll. And Rowania goes up and gets smoked by Petra's block. <laughs> Petra Manson. Woo, didn't realise we were block. having a barbecue <laughs> out there. But things are roasting. She just manages to get her. Hands on that board, drops straight down in front of her. <laughs> Becky yeah. back again for the serve. Oh, all right, opting to serve on Emerson Todd there. Love they sending it out to the outside. Libby Collette unable to capitalise on that ball. And we are 11 all. Canterbury have uh, finally nice. caught up. It's a game, the game's on. Great serve there, but an equally great pickup from Kate Caritas. It's that deep ball. They're out of system, Canterbury, right here, but Petra goes for a massive swing and off the middle's hands. It's hard to play defense off those balls. I think she's a bit of a crowd favorite there by the sounds of things, Stacey. <laughs> Petra Manderson, still in the senior women's New Zealand program. She is, a ma she is one of the leader play leadership players in the team. All right, Otago get a point back there. Rawani and Yamoki Moana back to serve here. Number 11. It's 12 all. She's got a bit of a cannon on her too. And she's gone for a short serve. She's tried to take out Petra, but Petra's just gone and pass and swing. Great option for the outsides. Oh, and they've gone for the deep tip there. Uh, Emerson's uh, just managed that. Vicky's gone to the other corner, and that spot right there nobody absolutely nobody's going to pick that up another serve here for Otago so that seems to be oh that's fantastic nice. work. I still think they're trying to serve on Petra and uh, you know for some people that works you know putting that pressure on the outside they have to transition but I think Petra likes that idea of hey I get to control this pass off the serve and then I can get out and work at my own pace yep they're going to her and again. saying that uh, commentators curse <laughs> Right, winning a, on a bit of a serving streak here, putting a Targo up 15-12. That's uh, this will be her fourth serve, I believe. Oh, that's a great serve. Petra managing to deal with it though. Eileen on the Eileen right side. Eileen loves a line. Kate Carrot is not too pleased for herself there. Good placement. Fortunately, just couldn't get that ball up. 
Eileen's been playing well for them today. She's had a few big swings for the University of Canterbury. Now she's on the service line. Let's see what she can do from here. She's gone for Emerson. It's a great she's pass there pass. from Emerson. And she's gone for that high swing. Bit of a controlled drive. And Petra. Petra aiming for Bang. that deep corner. Wow. She's got some spring in her step, Petra Manderson. 14 15, one point down. Eileen still back at that service line. And she's gone for Emerson again. Great pass from Emerson once again, though. Tiana oh. Cheney, you know, the middle doesn't always have to swing big. It's about playing that smart game, and she's proving that out there. She knew that Eileen was the middle in the back row, and she tipped it where Eileen should have been playing defense. Sometimes, I, Stacey, I don't think middles know what defense <laughs> is. <laughs> well, that's a great serve wow. there from Tiana Cheney. Becky, oh, oh, no, into the net. Oh. Big dynamic approach from Becky. She just into the net. A bit of a late swing there. 14-17, Otago. Serve here. Can she repeat the same? Oh, and she's done wow. it again. She really likes playing it close to the top of the tape. Petra coming off. Hey. Unfortunately, Rawidia not able to get there. Petra's gone off the hands for the last few points. She's uh, she's scored for the University of Can Canterbury. They're two points down, though. They need a little bit of fire under their skin to catch up here. It's getting late into the piece, so they need to catch up now. Well, the ability to have free hitters in the front court now. They've got Bridget Noble on because Kelsey Butler's coming in as a backcourt centre. Oh, oh, Olivia Bowell just cut. You know, she's been you know, phenomenal in the front court today. She's got a couple of kills. She's played some smart balls in. She keeps going for that, that small tip to zone four, just behind the outside blocker's hands. Yeah, let me I mean, back to surf here. If she keeps scoring there, then just keep going there. It's a nice serve. A couple of errors coming in from uh, the University of Canterbury Libero. And they've gone to Emerson. Oh, and well, that's no tight pass. again. Icky picks it up. They go back to Petra, and she kills it on the right side, off, off the hands of the blockers. You know, Stacey, I think this is the most excited you've sounded all day. <laughs> it probably is. <laughs> Yeah, Petra back to serve here. 16, 18. Yet again, Kate Harris nailing that pass in. Go, Alana. She's got it up. Back oh, to yet again, heading into the Kate Harris here. She's picked that ball up nicely on her hands. The University of Canterbury managed to keep it alive, but Otago controlling this. Great pass in there from Kate Harris. Oh, nice swing there. that's a sharp angle from Emerson Todd. They do things differently up in the Bay of Plenty, huh? <laughs> She's just gone and cut that to zone one, zone two. Interesting point to note. I co-coached with uh, Kate Caritas Libera from Otago about a year ago. She always told me she had ugly hands, but she's picking some nice balls up on her hands there. She is. They've just blocked Alana. But she's oh, managed she's to pick it up. The Are blocked. they going to be able to capitalize on this? Nice good block touch there. Outside to Becky. Oh, around the block there. And hey. Alana Pyle coming up on that block. The Otago girls on the ground scrambling. Unlucky Yet again, if you're from ball. Dirty Dunners, you're going to play the dirty game on court. <laughs> I believe that I've heard that they actually just shower you of Billy Mavs. <laughs> There's no actual H2O in the water stream. Oh, unfortunate. That might be one of the first errors she's yeah, made. It is. She's been having a phenomenal passing game. Personal MVP for you, it sounds like, uh, Stacey. She will be, at the moment, playing. She is the best libero at the moment. I mean, there's only two of them, so it's not hard, but 50-50. There we go. Otago uh, going to creep forward on the 20 points yeah, there. Yeah, she is passing well. 18-20. Otago take the lead when we get to the end of the second set. They've got to hold on, though. Canterbury is firing up. Good serve there. And Eileen. Oh, Otago. Blocking that ball down. 
Canterbury are going to need to figure something out in the next couple of points here. A big solid block there. High ball, nothing special. And Becky. Eileen getting blocked out there. And it's just gone an easy ball over. They go to the outside. Otago Ooh. just gets blocked right, there. They found some, some form of solution there. Four hits from the umpire, just didn't get over the net. And that outside attack. Right, Philantha back on. She's in. She's the serving specialist for Canterbury. Let's see where she goes. They love putting that pressure on the libero <laughs> at that wow. time. It's, it's paid off. It's paid off. Philantha, number 25. Gets an ace. It's 2021 in the second set of the UTSNZ Women's Final. Another great serve. They're out of. They're out of. Oh, out, out of the system. back of the court. That's also what's going on. <laughs> out of system and out the back. All right, looks like there's a timeout there from uh, the University of Otago, 21 all. We have yet to see a game, I believe, unless uh, you can correct me from the last game, uh, a game that's actually gone past uh, 25. There is no games gone no past games 25. No games that I've seen go Nothing's past Nothing's gone 25. to win by two, so no. it will be interesting to see if that's the case here. Otago's been controlling the set the entire, this entire set. They've been... They've had control, they've just lost it near the end of the set here now. Let's see if they can regain. Their passing has been great off the serve receive. Which means they've had three options, usually three or two, two or three options each time. Here we are, flapping back to serve here at 21 apiece. Gets it and she oh, goes to the are supposedly ugly hands of Kay Caritas. And they put it away. They went to the back row, Emerson. She uh, roll shot that off her fingertips, but she still scored. Sometimes those miss hits, they score all the time. It doesn't have to look nice. It, it just has to win you the point. It does not look pretty, but it scores. Love day on the serve. Oh, nice serve. Uh, no pass in there Nailed from uh, Petra. Nailed him one on one. Oh, unfortunate head into the roof there. And that goes to 22 apiece. Becky back to serve for uh, University of Canterbury. All the fans on the edge of their seats. Great pass there. Love day sends it to the outside. Great oh. cover from Kate Caritas. It's a roll shot, and it's picked up beautifully by the libero. Unfortunately, sent out to the side by oh. Petra Manners. She goes with a cut shot, cross court, and just sends it wide. Oh. Oh, unfortunately, the <laughs> photographer there at the back. The cameraman uh, the gets told He's, off. Wow. Some firm, firm referee up there. Oh. Oh! And that's been deemed as in, according to the lines person. The lines judges got their work cut out for them today. They gotta keep an eye on the lines. Here is a timeout there from the University of Canterbury. They're gonna have to pull something out of the bag. 22-24, it's match po it's set point, sorry, set point to Otago. So there'll Petra be a huge Madison. power shift there potentially uh, if University of Otago managed to take this set heading into uh, the third set. You know, they'll be the ones with the confidence heading in. And they've already got that game from uh, day one under their, under their belt. They've got the belief. They've done it once before. They can do it again. But if I was, uh, you know, one of the Edmondsons, what I'd be saying is, hey, you've got nothing to lose here. You know, they've got There's something on the line. They've got that victory. Pressure Ooh. builds in Otago. She misses the serve. 
Here we are, Eileen Dixon. Pretty consistent serve in this tournament. Back to service line. 23-24. Considering she's been spending a lot of time in the islands for the past two weeks, you know, she's <laughs> playing bloody well. Great, Great pass, pass in there from Kate Carrot. It's out to Emerson Todd. Oh! And I think, ladies and gentlemen, we have our first game on the live stream court that's going to go to win by two. <laughs> it took it to the final of the girls' matches, but here we are. If you are not familiar with volleyball, you must win by two points. So because it's 24-24, the set needs to be won at 26. Emerson opting for that little tip there. Kelsey Butlin chasing that ball down. Nice little roll, roll there from Becky. Who's going to kill it? Well, it's Another a safety roll. roll. Oh. I love seeing players go after it in these end points. I'm not a big fan of roll shots. I at was the end. just about to make a comment, Stacey. That yeah, I would say that when you're playing, uh, you're not one for taking it softly. No. When you're when you're 24, 20. Five, you got to hit the hell out of that ball. Just take a big swing, but I mean, roll shot just scored, so you got to do what you got to do. Canterbury got to want it. They've got to want it. Oh, that's too easy. It's too easy. They've Use to the right side, oh. and she's managed to get on top of her. And the crowd are yeah. up. They're up. There. And there's a roar Seats. in the stadium. Manderson with the block. University of Canterbury men absolutely cheering <laughs> on their women's team there. It is 25 apiece here at Pioneer Stadium in Christchurch, ladies and gentlemen. We're going for 27 now for the win. Again, two points to win the set. Second set of the women's final. Kelsey oh, Butlin. Great deep serve there. Serve. Love day sending it out to Emerson. And she's swung there. And she's kept them in the game to say the 26 25. Emerson takes a big swing here through the seam of the block. Kalana just late on that, closing that block up. Here we are, Libby Collette on the serve here. She's been pretty consistent today. It's the pressure building. Interesting to see who she's going to serve on here. It's a pretty solid lineup in that backcourt. She gets it in, goes for the libero. Nice but pass it's a great there. pass and out to... Oh, good block touch here. Emerson goes up. Oh, that's nice. a great pass Nick. from Lala there. Petra wants it. Out to oh, oh, down is four touches. Kelsey Butler did not look too happy about that. He did not get that. Ah, the University of Tiger men's team clapping the clapping the girls on there. One set apiece here at Pioneer Stadium for the women's final of the UTSNZ Championship. Second set went to 25-27. Otago snagging the lead at the end there. They did have the lead for most of the game, so they finished strong. And I mean, this is why those these teams are in the final, right? They, you know, they're taking it down to the wire. They're proving right now why they're here. Some great blocks in that last set. You've seen some highlights here. A lot of uh, control from Kendra Manderson on the University of Canterbury side. A lot of points scored from Emerson Todd on the University of Otago side. Highlight for me probably the passing, the serve receive from Otago. They're giving their hitters options when they're nailing their pass. University of Canterbury keep going to the libero. I don't know if that's part of their game plan or not, but I'm not sure it's working at the moment. So it's one all here. Uh, anything could happen now. Uh, potentially it's going to be a four setter, it could be a five setter. Both teams are both capable. The capability they're showing that, you know, and honestly for a performance match, you know, I know that Otago came in here knowing that they've had a five, five, you know, a five set game and they won it three two. But I, I look at, you know, this University of Canterbury side and there's just so much, uh, you know, in particular for the strength of Shirley Volleyball Club in there. Um, I just thought they would be a, a, t a tuck above the rest, but they're not quite there, this game. Uh, they're actually getting, you know, their money's worth. Definitely. They're letting the Otago team stay in it, even when they could capitalise on more points, but Otago's playing a really good game, so they definitely deserve to win that set. And I think a big testament has to go to Libero Kate Caritas for the University of Otago. She's just, you know, serve receive. You know, yes, she's made a few errors, etc. But you know, majority of the time, she's banging those dimes in. She has played 
two very good sets. I'd like to see both teams involve their middles a little bit more in the third set. Got the third set starting here in a few seconds. Kelsey Butlin on the service line, number 29 from the University of Canterbury. Nope, the University of Otago serving. Here we go. We go to the libero and out to Petra Manderson. Great pick up there from Rowini and Namoki Moana in the backcourt. Oh, Becky just, oh. just tried to get a one-handed touch on that ball. I think Bridget would have had that if she just kept following her feet there. Just stop. 1-0 to Otago. We'll take the lead. The first point of the third set. Ooh. Oh, unfortunately, that's a, a shank from Petra, uh, which is uh, pretty... <laughs> Uncommon to see that kind of thing. I don't know, Stacey, you've she's known her longer than I have. She's not going to be happy with that. Petra Manderson, she'll be kicking herself there. Maybe a lapse of concentration. And that's what happens, ladies and gentlemen, when a setter tries <laughs> to take the first touch. Kelsey Butler won't be too pleased with herself there. She's running in to take that second ball, but she just managed to run in the same line as the serve. 3-0, it kind of seems like the same at the start of the second set. Otago went up 7-1. Now they're 3-0 in the third set. And 4-0 in the third set. Serve received from the University of Canterbury. Needs a little tidying up if they want to stay in this set. They do fight back, but they're not helping themselves here. After a 4 0 start here from uh, Otago. Nice serve there. Having to go out of body pass. Nice incorporation in the middle there with Alana Pyle. As you said at the start there, Stacey, you know, uh, incorporating the middles in this set, you know, it'd be good to see that. And there it is. She's been pretty reliable in the middle, Alana. She's a Brentside High School kid. Plays for Shirley Volleyball Club. Nice serve there. Emerson takes that though. Nice. Good oh, read there from Alana. Oh, unfortunately, swung out the side of the court there from uh, Emerson Todd. 2 4, the University of Otago leads the third set. Petra Manderson on the serve. Great serve there. And they've gone for a bit of the C slide. Hasn't quite paid off. Oh. Uh, got a bit messy there. Alana has been quite dominant at the net this third set. She's just gone and got a block there. After she scored a point on her attack in the middle. Petra with the serve. What a great serve. And that's going to be over. She's gone back to Petra and she's opted for the tip. And another tip. Messi, who's going to clean it up? Unfortunately, Emerson. Emerson heading into the net there. <laughs> Unforced errors creep again from the University of Otago side. That's two errors in a row from her here. Swinging out and then swinging into the net. You can see who some of the favourite hitters are. The setters are choosing to go to. Go to hitters. Oh, <laughs> opting for the roll there. Hey. Oh. Petra really committing herself there. Her knee pads are not over her knees. Maybe she should pull them up. Cross court served there. Nice. Oh, oh, way to go. Unfortunately, that looks like it's just gone out. Becky sending it out the back there. She's got to be quite smart, Becky. She's shorter than most most outside or pin hitters, so she has to have a lot of shots in her toolbox. 
Just went long, just a little bit long, but that was great. Use of Petra nice there. Spin. Swing it to the net. It's going to be 4 7 to the University of Otago. Definitely a better start from Canterbury, but Otago again leading the game. Oh, that's nice. a nice pick up there from Lala. Um, to a quick ball on the arm. Oh, yet again, a lot of pile, getting some of that ball action there, getting that block. And it's a roll shot. Pitch has got it up. Great pass. And out to Becky. Oh, and it's, yet again, there's that toolbox, you know. She's just pulling that tip out. Petra, a great spot there. Go to the oh, right side. Oh, to the right side. She's been blocked out that time. Oh, Alana oh, sending it to uh, Becky. Alana and she's gone for the tip again. Otago keeping the ball alive. Nailed the pass. Oh! oh! Crowd goes wild. Alana through the middle on a quick ball. I know I can't say it, but she made that ball her B word. <laughs> she made the ball bounce. Is that what you're going for? Oh, uh, yeah. I'll leave the uh, audience <laughs> to interpret that at home. Back to serve after a great swing. Oh! oh! Oh, but safe. That's Don't two points tickler. for Alana Pyle. Alana's putting the team on her back right now. 6-7. One point behind the University of Canterbury. Oh, oh. she tried to go for it again, I think. But she's just missed. That's right. Shaking it off. And now 8-6 to Otago. Emerson Todd for the serve here. Nice pick up there from uh, Lala. Oh, unfortunately, Eileen just not quite making that connection. Those fast balls in the middle are quite tough if your timing's off. Ball's over. Bit Becky. of a shank there out of system play. Petra still going for the swing. Goes through the middle, it's a tip, and they score 6 9, and it's going to be 6 10. What are they going to do here to come back? Good pass good in pass. there from Petra. It's gone out. Oh, look at that. Becky getting up there and having a good swing. La La sweep again for that short ball. It's gone back. Oh. Petra Manderson puts it down from the back row. Just great timing there. It's not a high ball. The, the blockers have already committed to the middle hitter, so basically an open net for Petra. She just has to find that court on the other side. Flanford back to serve here. Yet again, a bit of a specialist in terms of the serving. Nice float serve, hopefully coming. There it is. Oh, opting for the D there. And it's oh, up. It's come through. And oh. unfortunately, Petra had too many weed picks this morning and <laughs> sends it into the roof there. That one just went flying into the roof. 7-11 to the University of Otago. Four points up early in the set. I hear a lot of complaints about the Pioneer roof. Lots of people say it's a bit too low. Should be interesting to see what happens next year when uh, Metro hopefully opens up. Yeah, we've been waiting a long time in Canterbury for Metro to open up. Hopefully there's no more delays. It'd be wicked to see that stadium bring in a lot of games and tournaments for volleyball. That ball's over. Great serve and pass. Oh, it's a nice pick up that. there. It's Petra. And she goes for the line shot. She just saw that open court there. Over the block. Roll shot, score. Becky back to par. Uh, sorry, back to serve here. Again. Petra playing quite a sp smart game at the moment. Nice serve from Becky. They've gotten out of system and it's roll shot over. Philantha saved the day there. Bit too easy of a ball. Rawinia and it's handed in the court there and also come off the top of the blocks.
9-12 to Otago, coming into the middle of the third set. One set apiece. Both teams gunning to get this third set, get the upper hand. Love day back to serve here. Good pass. Great pass in there. Oh, Eileen. Showing that she's got a toolkit herself, you know. She's got the ability to be able to swing down the line, run through the middle, you know, hit those nice angle shots like that too. I think that might have floated off her hand. Quite hard to pass from those ones. Yeah, but it's 10-12. Still early. Oh, that's a nice cross-court serve there. Oh. oh, unfortunately, Alana not able to close that block. Great lineup, just slipped through the center of her hands. Way to get up there from Petra. Tyre managed to pick that ball up. Great pass in. And it's gone back to Petra again. She's finding that ways to there. score. She hasn't. And that looked a bit ugly call. there, but it works. And we go into her again. She's tidying up some some pretty average sets here. Oh wow, the blocking came is strong here. And we're going back to Becky. Oh, and oh, manages to get it up. Long round here. And a here. tip. Oh, yet again, Becky just going sweeping in the backcourt there. Oh, University of Otago doing so and well on defense. What a rally! can tell you those long rallies, they kick your lungs when you're on the court. May not feel very long watching. 10, 15, 20 seconds, but it's a lot of max jumping. Quick movement. Kelsey Button with the serve. Goes straight to the libero. They're out of system, though. And that's a great and pick up there. Can Becky, Becky get it? Oh, it. wow. What a great return. It's over. Let's see what they do. Big applaud from the crowd, the crowd there. It's a too easy of a ball. Alana oh, a fantastic the pick up from Kate Caritas. And, and again, again Becky. Becky. Petra Manderson. Oh. This is the ball. The crowd is excited. I'm excited. I think Stacey's yeah, excited. Yeah, let's go. Kelsey taking her time to get wow. back to the service line here after that long, long rally. But man, uh, I tell you what, Becky Colson, she's honestly she been, she's my player of the day at the moment. Was everywhere on that point. Oh, great pick up there. Emerson. Oh, yeah. empty, empty space in the back corner. Just think the uh, defense there, just uh, they weren't quite ready to move. Uh, they're sitting behind the block right there. They should be on the outside of the blockers. Moving a little bit too early. Uh, Tiana Chaney back to serve here, number 14, seven. 14 12, Otago still controlling the set. Great pass there from Petra. Oh, Lana. way to use the middle. The University of Canterbury in system, unstoppable. But unfortunately, their passing hasn't been the greatest, so they haven't been able to run all the options. Good serve there from Petra. Big serve there. And oh, and that's a big swing. Slate on the block. 15 13 to Otago. Let's watch that replay here. Lana Pyle, you know, you know, she always commits to it though. That's the thing I actually really rate about her. Yep. She always gets up there, she reads the ball well. Sometimes you're just not gonna unfortunately be able to get both hands on that ball and shut it down. Big serve from Otago. Oh, just goes long there. She's had a solid serving game. Number two, Libby. Uh, Lana Pyle back to serve again. Great serve Goes there. The deep corner and Eileen, Eileen is able to capitalize on that. Hey. Uh, Bridget Noble up there for the swing. Great defense from Otago. They get it over. Oh, oh. Becky just wanted to hit that line. She saw it. Unfortunately, you know, uh, maybe if she was just a bit taller, it would have came off nicely. <laughs> I think a lot of people who, you know, I fall under that uh, that club of the, especially for men's, uh, the, the six foot <laughs> under club, where you just wish oh, I could just be a little bit taller, I would have been able to execute that skill. Yeah. And gone to the right side. Yes. Great pick up Great there, swing. though. Yep, and it's up, and it's saved. Vicky bumps it over. over. 
Let's see what Otago has. Oh, just don't get it quite over the net. Canterbury have been playing chase most of the set and they're nearly there. Quite similar to Becky's point, they're just, just slightly low on the net. Coming, creeping in some unforced errors. Philanthropy back to serve again. Wow, nice short serve there. It's gone back row. Got the back there. Petra nice pick up there. from Petra. Oh, great Becky. pass though from Kat Carradis. Way to position herself. There. Oh, Petra's. And unsure what was going to happen there. But uh, the linesman, uh, last person is called in, but the, the referee is caught it out. out. Wow, Kate Carradis was pretty stoked to be like, yeah, that was definitely out, ref. Number four. That'll be a bubble big serve here for Otago. 17 15 up. Third set. And that oh, was, dropping wow, short. Wow, that was a great serve. Pitcher managed to get it up, and it's, it's a, a roll easy shot. easy roll. Libby Collette opting for outside Rowani and Namoki. Yes, and it goes to Eileen. Good good block touch from Seven. Good block touch from Eileen. We're going back to Petra. Oh, oh she <laughs> scores. 16-17. It's a it's a close game. It's been close every single set. Canterbury still have not been able to take the lead in this game yet. Nice serve there from Becky. Uh, and that's a tip there. Petra's in the front row, so they'll probably utilise her a lot more. As you say it, it happens. And then I, through Eileen, wow. she managed to get there. Great set there from Kelsey Butland. Eileen. Great. Great set and way to be up Eileen. She's managed to pull Canterbury back. 17-17, but Otago's defence just been outstanding. They are definitely fighting for every point. I think a little bit of service pressure from both teams will go well. They uh, they can put the front foot on if they have good service pressure and reduce the amount of options the other team has. Quite a young team for the University of Canterbury. They've got half of their team are first in second years and then they've got some veterans in the team. Kelsey Butland's probably played the most UTSNZ tournaments on the court here along with Emerson Todd. Becky back to serve at 17 apiece to Canterbury to serve and it's one set apiece on the third set now. Tip and Petra nails the pass. They've, they've tipped it over. Kelsey using Eileen again. Eileen managed to get a nice swing there. Oh, good pop up, up from again. the libero. Petra Manderson just roll shots it over. Who are they going to now? The right side. Philanthro, Way to get there, touch. Becky. Oh. Wow. Great rally. So, I think for the first time this set, uh, Canterbury have finally taken a lead here. 18-17, it's come late in the set. Can they see it through to 25? Goes for the log. Float serve. Great pick up there. Out to Petra. And oh, what a swing. The line. Wow. Sounds like Petra's got her own fan club on the sideline. Vicky once again to serve. Otago has been nailing the serve receive. That's a great serve there, but yet again on Kate Carrot is nailing an awesome pass. Oh, and wow, that's, it's, it's, I it's still up, it's still up. That's still going. Ah, he's called the roof. Yes, so. It's just it's just, just scrape that pipe up the there. Roof. <laughs> Putting a targo, they're only one point behind, 18-19. Love day back to serve here. Let's see what she does with the serve. 
Pressure's on. The points are very close. They pass him. And it's out to Petra, and she's oh, got a save. Oh, what a swing. She absolutely destroys it. Just a rocket through there. You know, I feel really sorry for the pioneer volleyball court today with Petra <laughs> Madison on there. Are they swiping sweat or are they just filling the hole that Petra left on the floor? 2018 to Canterbury. And Eileen nice crushes that serve. There. What a great set. Oh, though. there's That's an a open spot, spot back there for Lamphur. Kind of went, oh, you know, she came up to take that tip just in case, but unfortunately, Becky couldn't quite get there. I think we've got Kelsey Butlin if to jump on her block there. And Alana couldn't seal any, so just a couple of things to tidy up on that side. We've got a big serve here from Otago. That's a great, great cross, serve. Oh, cross court serve. Petra, Petra is just off the top on of the fire. Hands. And we've got Bridget coming back in for Philantha. She did a great job in the back row and on her serve. Let's yeah. see what Bridget can do, blocking. We've got Emerson Todd out there. She's been a key weapon for Otago. Great pass. It's gone to the right side, down the line. No, not today. Alana and Petty up there. Canterbury up, 22 Shut her down. This is not a good place to be. Just like the last set, Otago had the upper hand. It's flipped the switch here. Kelsey just taking her time on her serve there. Good serve. Kelsey Butlin is taking her time back into the court. Oh, and it's a Alana. great swing there from Alana. They've got it up. Oh, oh. there from Love Day. And oh, it's no. Just... Kelsey Butlin's on the ground. Stacey's face is on the desk. <laughs> <laughs> you know, those shots, I think it's just maybe a lack in concentration or preparedness. Those are easy balls over the net, they just look way harder than they should. It's a high and serve there. Becky's able to play it in. Great set out there. And Petra is just, she's an unstoppable force. I'd love to see the stats on Petra Manderson, how many kills she's had compared to the amount of kills that Emerson Todd has had. Seems like both those players will be leading point scorers on their team. Good pass in there, love that uses. Oh, oh, that's a great swing there from Libby Collette on the opposite. She crushes it. Cross court, not ready in the defensive position. Interesting to note here that the University of Otago have been playing a bit of a 6 2 system here. Yeah, they tend to bring on Ruby Jari in front court to now to hit D, and Libby Collette continues to set, but she shows that hey, she's got the ability to swing as well. Oh. But apparently not the ability <laughs> to serve the ball over the damn net. <laughs> she will be kicking herself for that one. It's pretty late in the set uh, to be missing a serve. It's like a bit of an unspoken rule in volleyball that you just, you know, you can go for a hard serve, but you need to get those serves Great in Great serve the there end. from Alana Pyle. Big seam. Oh. It's coming into the commentator box and nearly squished my Peter Pitt lunch. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm very glad it did it because that would have gone everywhere. <laughs> Replay that into the table. <laughs> Here we are, Targo, two points down. Emerson Todd, probably the person you want serving. A bit of aggression behind her serve there. Choose to serve on Petra. She's gone back to Petra and Petra. Oh, it's heading into Emerson Todd. Three. And it's another, it's just a rivalry <laughs> there. Oh, yes, Kelsey's Petra. telling Eileen, get out of the way. <laughs> There's right, a save, else, is and it's up, back to Petra, and she's blocked. And they go for Eileen. And it's, oh, Eileen oh. with the tip to finish the third set, 25-22. That last rally wasn't pretty stacy, <laughs> but it did the trick for Canterbury. It was a bit of an Emerson versus Petra Manderson rally there, and you know what? All they needed was Eileen. <laughs> <laughs> Eileen with the tip, you know, I'm telling you, it's not pretty, but it scores. To think Canterbury had to climb their way back that entire set, it was 17 all, and they just took that lead. Great resilience from the...
Canterbury players there. They'll be stoked to go 2-1 up. They've One got... of my favourite R words in the business there, Stacey. <laughs> Resilience. The Canterbury uh, players obviously probably come from a lot of resi resilience with the amount of things that have ha happened in Canterbury. Um, a lot of good team effort, but definitely standout um, performances from a few players. Emerson's been putting some balls down. Number two from Otago has been doing really great on the serve and some right side ball. Um, Eileen. Just when you need her, she pops up and she just puts some balls down, puts some good serves in, gets the balls up. So she's definitely played well this set. But the serve received again from Otago has just been phenomenal. Calm and composed is how I define Eileen. Calm, Calm and composed. And composed. She, she, come, she comes when you need her to. <laughs> yeah. She shows up on the right occasion. <laughs> She definitely does. We're still in a time uh, set time here. They'll be on the court in about a, a minute here, 30 seconds. Right, heading into the fourth set here as well. So Canterbury up 2-1. Again, if you've been listening up um, and you're not too sure what UTSNZ is, the U University Tertiary Sport NZ Championship, uh, fostering homegrown greatness. This is the third event of the year from eight. We've already done rowing and three by three basketball. We have Lincoln University leading 15 with 15 points, followed by the University of Waikato and the University of Otago. That's for the shield points. UTSNZ also recognises the champion, uh, the Spirit Award, Te Kaitiaki, which all the teams, all the tertiary institutions vote for their most spirited team, and in the lead. After the first um, event of the year is Victoria University with eight points, Messi with seven, and AUT with six. So not only are we working towards championship shield points, but Spirit Award points. First point here in the fourth set. Kate Carradis, nice bump set there. Wow. Oh, unfortunately, she got a touch. Couldn't quite get the ball back up into play. Eileen puts the ball down for the first point of the fourth set in the middle on a quick ball. A few smiles there from the Canterbury team. They'll be stoked their two, two sets up. Ooh, oh, swing into the net there from number 11 from the University of Otago, Rawini Onyamoki Moana. This is a bit of a change. Canterbury is up 2-0. We haven't seen this all game. Libby opting for the sit out to Emerson. High contact there. Absolutely. Oh, that's a great wow. touch there. Eileen on the block. Oh. You know, it's hard like moments <laughs> like that as a libero. I've played libero for a few years. You do the mahi and you think you got the treat and unfortunately you just miss out. <laughs> and you don't get any treats. Great pass, and that's just going to go out there. It's 4 0. I think she was trying to opt for that, uh, you know, little tip into position four that she's tended to be doing. Yeah. Unfortunately, just too wide. Turn of events with uh, Canterbury just taking the lead, similar to what Otago done last set. It's 5 0. If we get to seven then it'll just almost be exactly like the second set, just tables turned. And Becky Great back serve there. there. Let's see what Emerson can do. She takes a good swing on that and she scores. Nothing Great. special from Emerson there, but just rolling that ball over just um, to the side of Lala there, or Ribeiro, just, she was just a little bit unsure of where to go. 
Liberty to serve here. Good. Nice cross court, court serve. serve. Oh. oh! Looks like that's been deemed as in. I don't know about that one. <laughs> again, again, Stacey. I think that's the third time that we've looked at those uh, line calls. Oh, no. 5-2. University of Canterbury still in the lead, but Otago is coming back. She's great done another serve, great yeah. serve. That's a fantastic pass, though. Eileen walks in and she manages to creep past the blocks on that one. Yeah, she made that look easy. Eileen, anything she touches turns to gold at the moment. Lala just on the bench for a, a little break here while Eileen serves and she's oh, gone. Oh, it's a chase here from Kate Harris hey. and uh, nearly into the National Tertiary Championship signs there. She's just, she's just pinched another ace there, Eileen. After she scored. I think Canterbury are starting to run away with it a little bit here. She's got the boys warming up at the back there. For their final. Great set. Oh, that was a great hit. But it's oh, just gone long. Unfortunately, that's gone long. Ruby Jari a little bit disappointed in herself there. The number nine uh, from the University of Otago. First year at university. She had the right idea going down the line. Just went slightly long. Oh, great pick up. Here we go. Emerson, Emerson just getting blocked out. A little bit too yeah. predictable. You know, uh, Emerson's right out there, there on the right side. They know that's, her, that, that's their bailout. A uh, bit of a timeout there, though. Um, Canterbury up 9-2. This is a massive lead for Canterbury. I don't think they've had a lead like this at all during the game. What will they do? Will they let them come back in? You know, if, if they want to play some more volleyball, why not? <laughs> You know, we all we all love playing a five set, don't we, Stacey? <laughs> but I think we try to avoid it if possible. We've got Eileen still on the service line. She's been there for a while now. Wonder if she's getting bored. And actually, she's, she's still pretty entertained. <laughs> That was a great serve. They're out of system. Oh, they've just got and that block on Emerson now. It's over. And it's yes. it's a free ball. They've got to capitalise on this. Oh! oh. It's Oh, up. and I thought it was up, but unfortunately yeah. it's gone out. <laughs> Eileen's off and Lala's back in. Libero's back on the court. It's 9-3 to the University of Canterbury. Emerson to serve. And nice nailed pass, the pass. Yeah. Petra just ripping that angle. Rip over the blocks. Petra Manderson. Kate Carradice in the right spot there. Just got it quiet. If we just watch that replay. She's just <sighs> got a cannon on the arm of hers. In the right spot. Just couldn't get it up. Too much heat. Kelsey Butlin for the serve. We've gone to the right side. <laughs> oh, unfortunately, a lot of pile having a bit of a panic pass here. <laughs> Unsure what to do in the middle. Yet again, like I've said before, uh, they don't know how to use that, put the arms together and go, hold on, I've got to actually pass this ball. The middle's not the best passes of the team, but definitely the, the good blockers there. We won't hold that on her, Alana, but... Oh, oh, no! Oh, communication breakdown in the backcourt there. We had a breakdown with our outside hitters. They're letting the other team creep back in. It's 10 5. Olivia Bowell here back to serve. Number four for University Otago. of Otago. Putting their foot down, getting back into Great the game. Great pass there, though. Sending it to Petra. It was a bit oh, short. Yes. It's managed to. It's the trick. She's just got gone and caught the top of the blocker's hands there. Just on that replay. Might not have seen it. Very effective way to score points. Here we are, Petra back to serve. She's gone down the line, taking out the pass of hitter. Ruby Jari for wow, the cross Wow, great pass. Nice pass there oh, from Emerson. Oh, there's another good pass. Oh! Oh! Right, what are you getting up there and having a crack at that? You know, Otago want to fight back into this. They want to get back in the game. Targo taking a massive swing, just drops through the inside of Alana's block. 
Needs to press her arms over the net if she wants that ball to go back. 11-6, Otago to serve. Nice serve there from Loveday. Use of uh, Petra. And she scores. On that back row pipe attack. Just on the outside of the blocker's hands. I've been trying to get three blockers on her in the back row, but just only had two that time. There we are, a lot of pile back for the serve again. Good oh. serve. Yet again, Kate Caritas just nailing that pass. Libby with the sideline kill right there. Down the line, over the setter's head. Into the deep corner. Great spot to score points. 12-7. Otago to serve. Creeping back into this game. Don't count him out. Nice serve there. Hey, that's, in. that's an ace. Fastest point right there. Only four points away from the catching up now. It's a big ask, but, uh, you know, just like we saw in the, uh, the last set and the set before, you know, Canterbury called their way to pick in. Maybe Otago can do the same. Another great serve. Aiming for that back spot. And Eileen, oh great With touch! No block. Hey, Caritas again. And that's in that deep corner. You'd hope that Petra Manderson, Manderson would sweep into that spot. She kind of knows, looks disappointed. Three points down, Otago to serve, and same spot. Great serve. Kelsey sending out it out. Ricky. Nice, nice hit there from Becky. Oh, that yeah, out of system play. I'm going to try and hit that ball to zone one, get it over the net. Philantha. Specialist server coming in. Let's see what she can do. Number 25 for the University of Canterbury. 13 9 in the fourth set. See the University of Waikato men there warming up. That's it. It's up and it's over line. Great pass. I lean again with an empty net. The middle just is not lining up on her. She's giving her free reign. There we are. Canterbury out 14 9. Still holding that lead. Nice five point buffer there. Sending it out to Emerson. Oh, Petra just coming in a bit short there. If we just uh, have a look at this wee replay. It's a bit of a miss hit, and it just it dies is. in front of her. <laughs> That's the splits almost. And here comes a jump float, quite short. And it's going back to... Petra Manderson who swipes it off the blocks. Three man block up there. You get to see a replay. I don't want to jinx anything, but Canterbury are running away with it right now. 15 10. Gabby Emerson on the pitch there seems so pretty content. She's pretty happy. She's sitting there. No nervous ticks from the Edmondson trio on the bench. Oh, wow. that's a high free ball, and unfortunately it's gone out. Just sending the game get away from them a little bit. Any time to turn the game around, it would be right now. Great pass. Oh, good, good cover off the oh, block. It's gone out and to that's a roll the shot. Right Libby Collette. Oh, hey. and she's just, you know, Libby's almost just been a battering. She's like got three, three hits in a row with it's just come off her. <laughs> I don't think that the Canterbury team has taken the foot off. The throttle. Becky back to serve here. 17 10. Little tip there from the middle on Octago. Oh, Eileen. I believe that would have been out if they had left there. She's Eileen using again. the middle. I'm having a slight feeling someone said something on the bench. Let's <laughs> use our middle. 
Tago can't get there. Oh, that's too easy of a ball. Especially when you've got a front court set up. Oh! He split the blocks. Eileen has pulled the blocker. Hannah Moore there Dylan calling Petra a timeout. Madison. University of Otago. It's an eight point lead there for Canterbury. Do you think they'll be able to catch up? It's a long way to go. 18 10. That is a big fight. I don't see many happy faces in the Otago side. This is going to be very challenging for their mindset and their ability to come back. I'm just getting a bit of a read there from uh, the University of Otago players after that time out there. They're looking a bit defeated. <laughs> yeah, when you're down eight points in a volleyball match, it's not very fun. That's a great pass. It's just unfortunate they weren't able to run a very good Yet again, Eileen, and it's into the roof. Now just Eileen's just come to play. Eileen is coming to put some points on the board. She was a part of the team that lost in the final last year. So was Kelsey Butlin and Petra Manderson. And Lala, four of the six girls on the court have played in the final and know what it's like to lose. They and are I'm not feeling back. that Canterbury are in a very comfortable position now. Five points left to go this game. Ten points ahead. I think we're going to see some subs come in. Gary Jin, the manager for the University of Canterbury, is looking pretty stoked on the sideline. Oh, that's a nice little roll shot there for Anderson. And Petra again. It's going to Petra. Her shoulder's going to be done after this weekend. And there we go. Otago have a point to put them on 11. 11-20. Olivia Collette going back for the serve here. All I can think about is what's going through my head. What's going through here? here going, oh, I've got to get this ball over. I've got to get this ball over. Can't afford on. these errors yes. now. Great serve. And yet again, going to Eileen down the line. Great pick up there from Kate Caritas. Jump set. Scramble play from the University oh, of Canterbury. Oh, Petra just putting that down the line there. Nice tip. She just seems like she's one step ahead. Alana, she's in the front row. Eileen back to serve. There we go, 21-11, up by 10 points. Oh, Eileen almost. Things are just falling apart here for Otago. Pulled in an ace and oh, Alana. Oh, there it is, Alana. It doesn't matter if it's Eileen, it doesn't matter if it's Alana in the middle. It's just, it's money all day. Kelsey <laughs> Butlin must be, you know, getting all these touches on the ball. She must be loving it out there. Dishing out some great options and some good sets from Kelsey Butlin. The University of Canterbury is taking, away, taking this lead away. Petra. Oh, and they managed to get a block there. She goes, goes again. Oh. And she again. Got a ball in the commentary box there earlier. 23-11. I don't think... The University of Otago is coming back from this one. Two points away from winning the Women's Championship of UTC. What a blowout game here. It's gone back to Emerson Todd. It's gone through the blocks. Eileen's picked that ball up. It's just a free ball over. Alana trying to get up on that. Alana to the setter. Out to pitcher man. Oh! And destroys it. I felt it. that over here. Oh, oh there's, there's some kind of forward here. Oh! Canterbury giveaway in error. Alana and Kelsey, one of those two in the net. Great swing from Petra down the line, but number two from Otago. Libby picks it up. And wow, great, great serve. serve yeah. It's an overpass and a kill for Emerson Todd. Two points for Canterbury. All they need to do is side out and get a serve in. Imagine if they lost it now. I'd be screaming on the sideline. Great serve. Great serve yeah. Oh, Outs great set. Oh! She opts for the tip. Great vision there from Petra. Here we are, Kelsey Butlin. 
Here to serve. We're one point away from the University of Canterbury taking the women's final. Got a big clap here in the crowd. And that and it's gone up the out back. Down. Oh, apparently Kelsey Butler is not the person you want on the service <laughs> line when it comes to 24 13 in a four set match. <laughs> She's probably going to hit me for that one later on. <laughs> Nice serve there. Gets it in and goes Kelsey to Petra. Kelsey just plays it safe to Petra. Oh, and that's in. It. Petra's pretty content with that. So there we have it, ladies and gentlemen. The University of Canterbury women's team taking out the National Tertiary Championship Volleyball Final here uh, in Christchurch. Congratulations to the Edmondson Trio. Mary Gabriella and Francesca Edmondson coaching and managing the University of Canterbury Women's volleyball team, second year, and they've managed to snag first place. Great job for the University of Canterbury. And it was great to see, you know, those first three sets, Stacey, they were pretty tight. And something changed in that fourth. Something yeah. clicked for Canterbury. They just, I don't think the main difference was those medals. They got the medals running. They just got Eileen, the medals running. I'll tell you, Eileen. Phenomenal third and fourth set from Eileen. She had a wonderful game. So looks like we're about to just uh, wrap up this here and uh, the University of Canterbury men's team is about to take on the University of Waikato. Uh, that will probably be starting in about 20 or so minutes time. So we'll catch you back then. that stirs your body into motion. One small drop contains the power of the oceans. And yes, with all this chaos and commotion, you'd be forgiven for thinking, what's my personal motivation? The new normal so abnormal that now normal's an abstraction. What happened to civilization? This world is a distraction. But still, belief will never fail to cause a chemical reaction. Fizzing up your synapses with purpose and possibilities to put into practice. Yet those ones. And so you pause. Breathe. And say, what do I want to do for me? The future me. The one who needs me to believe that I can make a difference unequivocally in whichever way I do. Even if that's flipping me into we. You see, that really is living the dream. So yeah, it's a pretty simple plan. Believe you can. City is just so friendly. It's a big city, it's a big student city. I love that you can walk everywhere and that everything's accessible. The campus is just pretty much in the heart of the city as well. What the students offer to the city is something that you don't get too many other places. That's the great thing about this university, you will find your people. It feels like a university with a city attached to it. It's exceeded my expectations in every way. It's unbelievable. My world is my storytelling. My world is diverse. Our world. My world 
is astrophysics. It's always been a dream of mine. I don't know what my career path will be. I approach architecture from the point of view of my culture. I want to contribute to my people. It's a way I can give back. I want to change the perception of engineers. I want to take my tohu home when I graduate. Right now, it's about me. And, and this is my chapter. <laughs> Only one New Zealand university is ranked among the top 1% of universities in the world and in the top 40 universities under 50 years of age. Auckland University of Technology, New Zealand's leading modern university. Home to world-class academics, called on for their research expertise here and all over the world making AUT the New Zealand leader in global research impact. Connected to an extraordinary range of organisations worldwide. Focused on a rapidly changing future where creativity, curiosity and collaboration will only become more vital. We inspire, nurture and find the greatness in every single one of our students. We are AUT. New Zealand's leading modern university. This is the University of Waikato, where every day people are making a positive change. Where research helps tackle global challenges and elite athletes can compete at the top of their game. A place where people are given the tools to protect their whenua for future generations. Where talent is nurtured and excellence is celebrated. It's a place where industry, innovation and education converge and where moments are shared with loved ones. It's a place where teaching and learning has no borders and people of all races and cultures work together as one. Our people, our future, positive change starts here. We believe where you live shouldn't decide your destiny and that any place can be a place of learning. So much of modern life has a handy home delivery option. Why not your education? Maybe you'll start your degree in the same space you share with your Fano, or from that corner of the spare room that catches the most sun. Start your new what at the place where where can be anywhere, online or on campus. Massey, New Zealand's leading online university. Apply now at massey.ac.nz. Emotion that stirs your body into motion. One small drop contains the power of the oceans. And yes, with all this chaos and commotion, you'd be forgiven for thinking, what's my personal motivation? The new normal so abnormal that now normal's an abstraction. What happened to civilization? This world is a distraction. But still, belief will never fail to cause a chemical reaction. Fizzing up your synapses with purpose and possibilities to put into practice. Yet those ones. And so you pause. Breathe. And say, what do I want to do for me? The future me. The one who needs me to believe that. I can make a difference unequivocally in whichever way I do. Even if that's flipping me into we. You see, that really is living the dream. So yeah, it's a pretty simple plan. Believe you can. city is just so friendly. It's a big city, it's a big student city. I love that you can walk everywhere and that everything's accessible. The campus is just pretty much in the heart of the city as well. What the students offer to the city is something that you don't get too many other places. That's the great thing about this university, you will find your people. It feels like 
a university with a city attached to it. It's exceeded my expectations in every way. It's unbelievable. Do you want to study with world leaders in future thinking? New Zealand has been ranked the number one English-speaking country for preparing students for the future, and all of our universities are in the top 3% in the world. Start your journey to a high-quality New Zealand education by choosing a recognised study option available in your country. Take the first step towards your New Zealand education now, because the world needs new.
Uh, kia ora, it's Fano. Uh, welcome back. This is the final match of the day at the National Tertiary Championships hosted by UTSNZ. Uh, so I'm, I'm back here with uh, Luke August, uh, myself, Tan Grimsy, uh, and we've got a hell of a final on our hands here. Um, if you've been watching, you would have seen a hell of a warm up between University of Canterbury and the University of Waikato. It's a bit of a deck measuring contest out there on the court <laughs> and the warm up, I think, uh, particularly with Jack McManaway. Uh, I think he's actually broken the court a few times already. Uh, so, yeah, uh, we'll be commentating as we go here. Um, this is for the gold medal. Uh, we've just come off the women's final where the University of Canterbury have won that against the University of Otago. So, you see it going for two here. Yeah, it'll be good for these men uh, uh, to, to go back to back, uh, follow, follow up the, the women's squad. Uh, they had a great final, uh, great, great last set, I heard. Uh, uh, and it just, just rolled through them through the last set. But, um, yeah, the, the, the men's here will be looking forward to... Uh, Playing on the show court, they haven't had a show court game uh, the whole tournament. They went from having two in the first day to to not even having one until the final. That's so it. I know they're pumped to be on uh, uh, Sky Sport, and uh, uh, yeah, here they are. They have arrived. No, so looking at our starting lineup on this side of the court from UC, it looks like we've got uh, Toby Gardner, Kyle Smith. Uh, we've got Carrot Corson, Corson, we've got Tom Dunlop there, Stephen Hockey, and we've got Josh Mead, and it looks like we've got Alex Limbaugh, uh, fellow teammate of mine at uh, Shirley Graybacks, uh, fantastic libero, so he'll be coming on in the back court there, uh, most likely for the likes of uh, Carrot Corson and Steve Hockey. And on the other side of the court, it looks like it's the traditional lineup that we've seen from uh, Waikato so far, Luke. Obviously, you can't start without. Uh, Jack McMahon away on the court there. Yeah, he's, he's really their star player. You've got Javan, likes of Jack Shepard. Lewis White in the backcourt opposite uh, Jack McMahon away for the outside there. Number prediction, 24. give me your prediction. This, prediction. Is, this is the final, it's a this big game. That. These two teams have definitely been the, the standout of, of the tournament so far. Indeed, so this is why they deserve to be here. If we're talking predictions, Luke, I'm thinking, you know, we've talked about bias, but I, I, I'm thinking you see, they've just got the depth. They've got the depth, look at that, straight away, they're stacking. They know they've got a game plan here. Stacking on Jack McMahon away. Oh! I can't have come to play, ladies and gentlemen at home. I oh, my socks are blown off. I don't even have socks on, but that's somehow blown off. <laughs> Holy hell! That was a hell of a side out there. Yeah, great attack through the middle there. That's one of those things, you know. Go through the middle right on the first point. Really gives the the middle blocker something to think about, and it, it just takes an extra second for them to. Oh, oh and another one. Toby Gardner thinking he could be an opposite, heading on the outside. Traditionally a setter. Not really working for him thus far, Luke. <laughs> <laughs> no, he'll be looking to get one back on that. Great hustle there from Josh Mead. Stephen Hockey, Stephen Hockey throwing the ball down. Called for a carry there. Called for a bit of a lift. Yeah, that. Uh, wow. He really a, grabbed at that ball. Bit of a two handed dunk, if I might say. Uh, must have been watching some of the Summer League, uh, supporting the, the Kings fans. Any Kings fans out there, uh, you know how I feel. Oh, that's a great set there. Oh, no. Kyle Smith, unfortunately, getting blocked out there. Why can't I have just got this energy about them this they're, game they're here? They're putting on a defensive display right now. Look, five points, and the majority of them have been blocks or kills. It's just very impressive. They're, they're looking like a really well-rounded team, and they're out to win. There we go! That's your point there for first point for Canterbury. Stephen Hockey, pretty happy with that. Yeah, and you might be able to hear uh, uh, the bench. They, whenever Steve gets a kill, it's a uh, tradition to yell, Steve! Here we are, Kyle Smith, ex Hillcrest High School boy here. All right, uh, played a lot of beach with Jared Robert, who's just headed over to Canada. Fantastic toss for a jump serve there from Kyle. Part of the Pioneer A squad this season, is that right, Luke? Oh, correct, correct. Kyle's a very, very valuable member of the uh, Pioneer A team. He's also uh, was won MVP at uh, IPC this year. Um, and, yeah, he'll be looking to add another, another medal to his cabinet. That looked grounded to me, that one. And here we go. Toby Garner getting ready for the offset. And it goes through Steve. Steve again. Steve. Big fans. 
Got a bit of a crowd here. It's good to see that down here, you know, especially in COVID times. Yeah, it's awesome. Awesome to see some some people in the crowd, some familiar faces, uh, ex players, uh, uh, club players too. Great serve there. Oh, is that a shag from Jack McManaway? <laughs> Kyle Smith with the great Totsman jump serves there. Yeah, UC have really turned it around here. They they started off, uh, uh, I think, out, just a bit outplayed by uh, uh, Waikato, but but now that I think they found their own. Took them a minute to get warmed up in. Uh, Kyle's serve is uh, really, really helping there. Oh, there he is. That's what he's there to do, ladies and gentlemen. Jack McMahon away. He's looking to expose the gap in that block. A little hesitation from Steve Hockey. Opened up a little line in the, in the block. Jack's had a really strong serve all day. Oh, that's a great pass there from Alex Limbaugh. Todd Dunlop off the block there. Off the block. So Steve Hockey back to serve. That means Carrot Corson coming on to the court here. Uh, 2021 NVL uh, winner with Ponamu last year. Uh, and also apparently, uh, Luke, he likes his chicken cooked medium rare. Wow, I've never had medium rare chicken. Don't think I ever planned to. But uh, whatever floats your boat, Carrick. Uh, a bit of a shank there from Kyle Smith. I believe the call's a net touch, actually. Oh. There we go. So it looks like uh, Waikato are up 6-5 here. Very close game. Point to Canterbury. Toby Gardner back to serve here on the service line. Uh... Fellow teammate of mine, plays for the Shirley Greybacks, but started off at Pioneer. Yeah, I, I heard there's rumours about him returning. Uh, he, uh, he said he really wanted to come play opposite uh, wow. for Pioneer B. Uh, so we'll, we'll see where he ends up next season. Disappointed with that. Now he has to go sit in the back corner there. Traditionally where the uh, opposite goes. Back right corner and, and make some calls. Right, number 24 here, Ratia Vatia. You know, uh, he's been a character actually for Waikato. Big points. Great hustle from Alex Lembon there into the commentary box. I think Alex just wanted to come say hi. We didn't forget about you, Alex. <laughs> Great hustle though, love to see it. Great hustle. That's what you want from a libero. Chasing the ball right into the end of the crowd. X Y Mia boy, coached by Colin Redpath. Oh, that's a great serve there. Josh Bean sending it to, to Carrick. Unfortunately, just heading it to the net there, I think. Yeah, it was great positioning on the block from Javan. And apparently to prepare for this event, uh, Carrick has actually watched highlights of Joe Baxter. Joe Baxter. I, uh, Joe Baxter, uh, a very... That's another, <laughs> another name uh, uh, that floats around IPC quite a bit too, I believe... Uh, I believe he was in tournament team. I believe he was too. And just going off that, Josh Mead. What a fantastic left hand double. We just watched the highlight here. Look at that. That's straight out of Nelson College. Here we go. You can see here. So we can see that the Canterbury have a, they've got a, a certain tactic here to stack in certain positions. Ton Dublock, yeah, uh, ex uh, Rickson boy here, serving down there. Oh, Alex, look at that. That commitment. Jack will trade to you, a footballer, a basketballer. Oh, and into the net. There. Jack McManaway running that pipe and not quite hitting the ball high enough. Straight into the net. And, and you mentioned before the, the stacking and, and that they've got a very clear uh, service plan. And, and that's something that uh, Coach Angus Borlo really stresses within the Pioneer Club is uh, serving with intention and, and letting everyone else know where you're serving. 100%. I've definitely seen your face through the net a few times, Luke. Waiting to receive a ball. And then, you know, I only see it as soon as it hits maybe the top of the playing field in the net. Here we are. Tom back to serve here. It's 9 all between Canterbury and Waikato. It's a bit of a spectacle so far. That's a shank there for the libero. Oh, Carrick getting up there. McMahon away. Great take there from Tom. And, oh, Carrick yet again swinging into the net, Luke. Yeah, I think he's just trying to hit too much down on it. But also, if we look at it, 
it's right in, in the path of uh, Javon's block. So he's he's sitting up, to his credit, he's sitting up in the right spot and, and getting in front of that ball. May have something to do with his partner being on the sideline, Felicity Hatcher, you know. It's really, it's, you know, really eager to mold. His testosterone's flowing there. Oh, that's a great pass, though. Josh Mead sits to Kyle Smith off the top of the blocks. Kyle Smith just flying through that ball. Holy hell, that man's got hops. Yet again, these Waikato players, eh? Kara Corson back to serve here. Uh, traditionally is a very strong topspin, uh, jump serve. So uh, he'll look to repeat that uh, in this game. And that is unfortunately served out. Carrick's a bit disappointed about that one. Now you have to sit on the sideline for the next three rotations and uh, uh, think about that point. And just a shout out to Carrick's mum, Briar Corson. You know, I'm sure she's probably watching right now. You know, he really appreciates your work, you know, bringing him up in the almighty Napier. Short ball there. Oh, oh what a up from Toby Gardner. Oh, and he's a disappointed man. That's a great touch there, get it up. Also, let's talk about that roll. That's a nice option. You know, big block up in the way. You see Kyle sitting a little bit too far back. And Jack just uh, utilised that opportunity. We haven't actually got the chance yet to see Jack really hit a ball. You know, Canterbury have done a good job at keeping it away from him. Oh, Steve Hockey. This could be the chance here. No, it's gone wide. Good way to slow it down off the blocks there from Steve Hockey. Tom Dunlop. And it's unfortunately out. Yeah, I think I think uh, one issue with this Canterbury team right now is that they're hitting a lot of balls out. It's it's not that they're, they're not swinging hard. It's, it's they're just not swinging into the right places. Ooh, low take there from Tom Dunlop. Oh, great up there from Josh Mead. Toby's there to back him up. Oh, way to have a swing at that, Kyle. Oh, and, and it's he out. It out. Toby follows it all the way to the line. What a man. You know, and it's funny because Carrick said here as well that he wants to, his career goal post-university is actually to convince Toby Garner to grow his mullet back. But if Toby had a mullet in that situation, I don't think he would have been able to see that well. You know, you're, you and your hate for mullets is just a... Uh Oh, I know. That fella of the Victoria team, I, I, I'm actually really sorry, man. Uh, you know, you, you do you, buddy. Oh, I think there's a bit of an argument there about who's, who's the captain. I think uh, tra traditionally Jack McManaway's uh, uh, been conversing with the ref, but... Uh, it's like uh, Jack Shepard that time. And that's an out ball. Canterbury crawling themselves back into this. Already down by one point, 12-13. Close game. That's what we we're going to expect out of this game is, is a, a bit of a battle, you know, uh, uh, power versus power, you know, and who's, who's going to have the best defense and offense. Josh Mead for the serve there. Great pass. Tap. Oh, Alex Limbaugh, great pick up there. And Toby Gardner, I'm not sure what he's up to there. Uh, looked like he was just trying to uh, uh, tip it towards the, the Waikato girls team, but uh, yeah. I don't know what's going on there. Easily distracted that man is sometimes. Here we go. So Jack McMahon away for the swing. Finds the gap on the outside. And takes Tom, Tom Dunlop sitting on that line at the back there. But unfortunately, if we just watch that, yeah, it just hits around there. Yeah, that's a nice shot. He's coming from out, outside on the aerial and then cutting the ball back in. It's not quite a, it's a line shot, but it's coming on the inside of uh, the one passer. Great set there from Josh Mead. And Toby manages to seal a point there for Canterbury. They're, they're still in the fight here, Luke. They're still in the fight. Waikato are up. Two points. There's two points in the game. Still would you early say, days. Would you say this is the fastest paced game that we've seen though? Oh, 100%. And, and that's, that's what we're expecting out of this game is uh, the calibre of these players and, and the speed and, and that they, they play the game is, is a lot faster. And we've seen that in other, uh, in other games this tournament. Um, we have a lot of club players here, uh, a, lot of, a lot of Div 1 club players. Um, I know Hamilton Huskies has been very strong this year and in, in looking to improve on well, they can't really improve on what they did last year because I'm pretty sure they finished a, a top in uh, Midlands. Correct. Yes, I believe. 
but yeah, they'll be looking to continue continue that effort this year. And they've got another point there. Looks like it's a net touch call, I believe. And just to mention a few of the schools that these uh, young men are from here on the UC men team. The likes of, as I've mentioned, Napier Boys High School. We've got a few Rickerton High School boys players. Uh, the likes of Todd Dublop and Spencer Lindsay. Nelson College as well. And Matt Mann and uh, Josh Mead. Hillcrest High represented by Kyle Smith. Alex Limbaugh from Waimea College. Um, oh, great. Great use of the block there. Toby Gardner falling away and uh, manages to swing his arm around from the side and, and wipe the ball off that block. Beautiful, beautiful. Canterbury take the lead here. I think this is their first lead this game. That's a big point. Kyle for the top spin and it's into the net. Spencer, Spencer Lindsay. <laughs> not, not happy about that. Yeah, Spencer L Lindsay wasn't happy about that one. Uh, we look forward to uh, seeing his uh, jump serve when he uh, makes it on the court. Oh, tight pass there, but great! Oh! And Steve! There's a hole in the floor! There's a hole in the floor! Oh, this it's man is an animal, number 10. He's a falcon, he's flying. There's a hole in the floor and Steve Hockey put it there. He's stoked about that. Holy You may hell. be able to hear him through our microphones. Uh, he's, he's very happy and uh, fair play. He should be very happy. It was, a, it was a great attack. Nice serve there. Let's see. Oh, and Carrick oh, to get up there. Carrick just getting so far over the net on that, on that block. To, to, he blocked a, a, a dump. <laughs> he did. <laughs> The man, he isn't the tallest fella on the court. You know, he's a middle, but he's got limbs. He's, a, he's, a, he's got the, the arm width. And, and not, the, not to mention his vertical. His vertical, something else. He, uh, he just floats through the air. It's almost like when he jumps, he, he pauses in mid-air and, and, <laughs> and waits for the ball to come to him, and then he'll swing. He's a special type of human being, that man is, uh, Luke. Angus Gourlay just saying something there. I'm sure what he's probably saying. And that's a serve oh, out a for Waikato. Serve. Canterbury are in the lead here. Toby Gardner, Stack alumni. Probably the most successful player besides uh, Angus Gourlay to come out of St Andrews College in the past uh, 15 years. Well, he had a, a very successful uh, career in, uh, in 2019. Uh, won the uh, under-21s uh, IPC uh, with Canterbury. Um, won tertiaries. Gold medal at tertiaries, and then uh, went on to win club uh, club champs at the end of the year. So uh, he did the big three. He did the big three. Holy hell! He's he's, he's got a lot of uh, a lot of attributes up his sleeve, Toby Gardner. He's seen a lot in his time. He's still a young buck at the age of 22. Oh, a service error there from Waikato. That's the second uh, second service error in a row. We are Tom Dunlop here, back to serve. So we should probably mention as well that this is a combination mostly of uh, Pioneer and Shirley Volleyball Club players uh, on the court currently. I believe it is, everyone. We've got, yeah, it's a good mix here, isn't it? We've got free and free. Carrick with a big block in the middle there. Oh, that's an easy roll there from Jack McMattaway. Toby's pushing deep, probably not on the libero. Using the Jack McManaway and he's hit it out. Swing it out. Their, their block's just in the right place, but Jack's making smart decisions on, on their pipe attack where he's starting to roll the ball a little bit. Um, and he's trying to expose the passers uh, who are covering that block. And it, it, is, it is working to an extent. Waikato calling a timeout here. Uh, Canterbury up 21-18. Still. Whilst uh, whilst we're in this time out here, Luke, I just want to, um, a couple of the players just wanted to shout out their mums. Uh, th that includes uh, the likes of Cheryl Limbaum, uh, Alex Limbaum, the libero here for the UC team, uh, the likes of uh, Kirsty Gardner as well, uh, to Toby Gardner's mum, 
uh, Linda Mead, jo- Josh Mead's mother. And uh, a special mention as well needs to go out to Tom Eggers, who is a uh, you know, previous uh, University of Canterbury Falcons player, but uh, he can't be uh, with us right now. Probably sitting at home with his girlfriend, to be honest. You know, dogging the boys, and uh, that's just not cool. Yes. <laughs> uh, I don't even think, I don't think he trialled this year, um, but he's a, a very strong, another very strong Shirley player. Uh, he has a ridiculous C slide. Um, that's given me a lot of problems in uh, in the past. Well, jack, of all, the game. jack of all trades, that man. Here we are. Great serve. Jack Shepard goes to McManaway. Good time out there from University of Waikato. Yeah, nice work from Jack. Just to just to, just enough power to drop it down the front of the block. Here we are. Okay, we've got. Uh, the likes of uh, Lewis Wyatt here, okay, serving it to the net, okay. Waikato just can't afford to be making these errors at this part of the game. Yeah, too many consecutive uh, missed serves here. Uh, they need to improve upon that if they're trying to, especially uh, at 22-19, these aren't the times to be making those mistakes. Here we are, Karen Courtson. Wow, holy hell. That man is getting some action tonight, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, yeah, some, <laughs> some very... Very impressed people in the crowd. Uh, uh, it's a very strong serve. It's a fantastic serve. His girlfriend on the sideline there, quite impressed. Another great serve there. Here we are, Jack McManaway going for the roll. Tom Dunlop, great positioning. Josh Mee goes to the outside. Costa sends the ball out the back, unfortunately. Derek Corson coming off here, and of course, Alex Limbon Libero bobbing on the court here. For Waikato. Toby Gardner just sneaks around the side of that block. He's pretty stoked with himself there, isn't he, Luke? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Him and uh, coach Angus Gourlay sharing a laugh. Josh Mead here to serve for set point. Oh, fantastic serve there from Josh Mead. Oh, that's a great angle. And that ball is in. Called in nicely from the lines there. So that's 21-24 here. Canterbury do hold a three-point lead. We've got uh, number 15, Jack Shepard from uh, University of Waikato going back to serve here. It's a nice serve there. Tom Dunlop, unfortunately, just making a bit of a shank. Toby Gardner sending it out into the Waikato women's team yet again, Luke. I don't, I don't know what that's about. Yeah, maybe maybe a bit of... <laughs> but, uh, I don't want to say hatred. That's not the right word. Uh, maybe a bit of negative feelings <laughs> towards their bench. I don't know. Yes, great take there from Tom Dunlop. Sending it out to Toby. Oh, He's gone for the tap. Up there. Jack McManaway. And that is apparently out. called out from my position. I couldn't tell, but I mean, I'm blind. So that wraps up the first set here at Pioneer Stadium in Christchurch, Otatahi, 25-22 to Canterbury over Waikato. Yeah, great set. Great first set. I think we saw uh, a great start from Waikato, but after those first four or five points, I think they just kind of switched off a little bit. They were very dominant and... and in the fact that they're trying to uh, block everything, attack everything. They didn't even let the ball come back over. Uh, I'd love to see them come back and, and do that throughout the more, like the rest of the set. Um, again, it's those service errors, those service errors, they, they missed three serves in a row um, at a really crucial time in the game. Uh, can't be doing that. Um, yeah, I think, I think Coach will have a, a chat about that. So here's a few highlights that we have here. Obviously, you know, Jack McManaway, not, not getting the best use. Uh, they're not getting the best use of him as they have in previous games where, you know, he's had the chance to just swing. Swing at the ball as hard as he can, get those points. But Canterbury's defense is a bit stronger than the rest of the teams that they've come up against so far. So it will be a big challenge for Waikato to uh, overcome. Yeah, I think I think you hit the nail on the head there, their defense. They're, putting, they're getting two blocks up on, on Jack almost every time and especially it's especially hard for him when they're out of system and, and he's not getting the right ball and then there's two blocks there and we're seeing him trying to work with something uh, 
even when that power shot's not there. It, we're seeing him tipping short and even rolling that, that he did a nice little roll uh, which forced Kyle Smith to come in and uh, take a pancake. So here we are, the team's about to take the court here at uh, Christchurch, in Christchurch Pioneer Stadium. Uh, Canterbury are up 1-0. One, one University of Waikato down, it looks like. They've made a bit of a change here with uh, the setter. Uh, number 10 from University of Waikato is about to come on, Blake Hunter. So uh, we didn't see him appear at all in the semi-final, did we, Luke? No, we didn't. But uh, uh, they, they're running uh, Jack Shepard as setter. And uh, we saw a really great connection uh, with him and outside hitter Jack McManaway. And that's where the, the Jack attack was born, you know. Uh, they played a lot of these power shots. Uh, we, we, we like to call it the Jack attack. Um, looks like we won't be seeing too much of that this set. However, Blake Hanna really good at uh, spreading the ball throughout the court and using his middles. That's it. I think you're just going to see a bit more of a cool hit here from Blake Hanna. Uh, from, that's what we've noticed from his gameplay so far. <coughs> Trent Webby just talking to Jack Shepard here on the sideline. It's a real stance there from Trent Webby, by the way. Power stance. Like a man yeah, really yeah. knows what he's talking about, right? Yeah. Even when I know what I'm talking about, I don't stand like that, unfortunately. <coughs> here we are. Blake Hanna starting. Nice serve there to start the game. Toby Gardner sending it out the back of the court. Yeah, nice little float too here from uh, Blake Hanna. He likes to play this serve quite short. And uh, we have seen quite a lot of success with the short serve. And he also loves to change up the topspin. And yet again... Uh, from Competence Coast <laughs> Yep. <clears throat> Josh Mead back to serve here for University of Canterbury. Canterbury up 1-0 after... Sorry, sorry. Canterbury up 1-0 after that first set. And it's 1-0. Uh, and that is out. If I was standing on that line, I think I would have called something different. But luckily, you know, I'm not the person who's standing <laughs> on the line. <laughs> Just a little update from the bronze medal match. Uh... It's all, it's all tied up. It's uh, a one set apiece and uh, six all. So uh, Canterbury Invitational really giving them a run for their money uh, old Victoria University. Kara Corson un unable to capitalise on that overpass there, unfortunately. <coughs> Waikato lead 3-1 here in the second set. Big topspin here from Jack. Massive toss bin, but hey, oh, and it's an overshoot. Josh Mead sends it to Kyle Smith, and Kyle smacks that into the court there. Yeah, running, it looks like he was running a bit shorter, running the wrong line. But look, I'm very impressive the, still, the way he's still able to put a shot up and, and kill the ball from there. Now, Kyle's a very versatile player, having played at Hillcrest High School for five years. He's also been a Hamilton Huskies player, currently playing for the Pioneer A team as well. Ability to play sitter ability to play uh, opposite and outside you know he's got a lot of skills up his sleeve and apparently one of those skills is not putting the ball over the net when you first go back to the baseline Setter, I didn't I did not know that Kyle yeah was so uh, Kyle was actually the setter for the under 19 Waikato men's team last year at IPC Toby Gardner almost getting a bit of a float Low contact on that ball there, Luke. Yeah, we're starting to see it, see, see this pattern forming where, where Toby's getting set uh, and uh, it's coming out the back. He's hit, it's almost like he's not getting on top of the ball. Maybe the ball's coming too fast and he's not there. Um, but he's going to look to correct that soon. And he's gone to him again and he's hit it to the net. Toby's not a happy man about this. He's getting frustrated here. It's a shame that Toby can't slice pizza as well as he can hit a ball in a game. Here we are, number 23 from the University of Waikato. Uh, Lauli Alfred serving the ball out, unfortunately. Yeah, Waikato have uh, shot off with an early lead here. 6-3 uh, up on uh, Canterbury. Here we are, we've got uh, Garrett Corson back to serve here, number 16 on the University of Canterbury team. 
Big top spin coming. And unfortunately served out the back of the court. I think uh, what we're seeing here with both teams is, is a lot of miss serves early. And uh, it's, it, <laughs> I'd like to think that they're getting them out of the way early and saving, saving uh, the good serves for the end of the set. Um, nice serve there. Just coming off of tape. And man, Steve Hockey. What a man. Yeah, big swing. As an aggressive player there, also another person who's come out of uh, Hillcrest High School as well. I'm not only feeding them in the white cutter, you know, we keep going back to this, you know. <laughs> I don't understand, you know, that white cutter river, something, something special's in there. Something in the water. Oh, that's a great play there from Blake Hunter, using the middle. If we just watch that replay here. Yeah, he said that backwards. That's impressive. Well, yeah, he said a C. Very impressive. He said an A quick, but facing backwards uh, uh, and great execution from uh, Javan Wehuppi. Trent Webby must be really pleased with his change, uh, bringing Blake Hunter on here. <laughs> he seems just just give me a little cheeky nod there. And unfortunately, Canterbury have just uh, taken the point. Bit of a net touch from Jack McManaway on that block. As you can see there. Canterbury men's, they've got a serving plan. You see the entire team shifting across, setting that screen. Javan just trying to get a touch on it. Unfortunately, I think that's gone down as four touches. Yes, that's correct. Maybe a bit of a miscommunication there on, on what, what they were running. Uh, set a B quick, but uh, running an A quick happens all the time, happens to the best of us. Here we go, Jack McManaway taking that left side of the core. Oh. That's, that's gone out. They, so they had the plan. Unfortunately, it wasn't executed well. Yeah, it was a good thought there from uh, Tun, uh, Tom Dun, Dunlop to serve cross court. Everyone was stacked up almost from uh, uh, position six to, to position one. And it left the entire court on the from five on uh, wide open. Oh, what a swing there from Kyle Smith. He's a happy man after that swing. We just watched the replay back here. One-on-one, on one. unfortunately, I think Blake Hunter's a bit mismatched there. Yeah, they're about the same height, but uh, uh, Kyle's vertical is just ridiculous. We uh, we played them uh, recently in, in, in a game, uh, <laughs> and he uh, somehow managed to jump over the libero. Jump over the libero, you say? Like. He jumped over the libero on a pipe. Uh, you, you'd have, you have to believe it to, uh, see it to believe it. Holy hell. Here we are, Waikato is still holding a lead here, 9-8. I feel like the game's calming down a little bit more now. Jack McManaway taking that. Got a bit of out-of-system play here. It's gone to the outside. And Kyle's just unfortunately rolled it out the back of the court there. Waikato are up 10-8 here. <coughs> Blake Hunter back to serve. Great float serve there from Blake Hunter. Oh! Garrett oh! oh! Corson making that ball his, I can't say it, but you know the word to finish that sentence. Yeah, there you go. Look, be quick, and he's just sitting up there, sees the gap, swings at five. <laughs> Blake Hunter still remain up here, 10 9 in the second set. Good serve there from Josh Mead. Javan's passing in the backcourt. The block there from Carrick Corson. Great hustle from Ravi there, the, the libero for Waikato. Oh, and that's a slam into the court there from Kyle Smith. Back to serve setter Josh Mead. Nice serve there, dropping short there onto Jack McManaway. And there we go. Jack's just tooled it off the, the top of the block there. And we see it 11 10. Yeah, it's still anyone's game here. I know Waikato are down a set, but they're, they're playing some really well, good volleyball. They're, they're not letting uh, Canterbury getting any open attacks and, and shutting down that middle as well. They're trying to shut down that middle. They have a lot of strong hitters through the middle. Unfortunately, Jake McManaway just making a service there. 
ties up the game. 11 apiece. Speaking of 11 apiece, 11's also serving, Luke. Coincidence? I think not. Great serve there from Kyle Smith. That's all. But that's an ace serve coming off. And now you can see Steve Hockey in the back line there. Number 10, he's flying like a falcon. He's a big, big fan favourite, Steve Hockey. Oh, yeah, he's, he's the real hype man of this team. When, when, I, when I first met Steve, he was very quiet, wouldn't, wouldn't say a word, but he's really coming to his own. And uh, you might have seen pass. him on the, side, uh, on the sidelines in the, uh, uh, the, the women's final. Uh, he was chatting away, making up all the chants, and uh, yeah, he's, he's really the hype man of the team. Here we are, 13 11 up now for Canterbury. The White Cutter needing to find some answers to Kyle Smith's amazing uh, topspin jump serve here. Really is something to watch. Oh, unfortunately, service error into the net. Hey, that was a pretty good run from Kyle Smith. A very uh, uh, a powerful serve, and uh, yeah, he'd, he'd be looking to extend some of those, uh, those streaks. We are number 23 here for the University of Waikato, Lauli Alfred again. He loves those, you know, standing and facing exactly oh. like so Unfortunately, uh, heading into the commentator's box. Our poor technician just got his uh, uh, headphones knocked <laughs> off. <laughs> but uh, Carrick will be happy about that swing. Bit of a ball coming onto the court there. Carrick coming in here. And it's another great toss for jump serve. Oh, great little tip there. Unfortunately, no pancake. Well, it was executed there, I don't think. Yeah, nice way to use the little finesse tip. Uh, find the open spot. All right, number 24 here. Uh, Raitia Vatia Herman. He's back here to give another float serve. Oh, what a great float serve, too, it is. Off the top. Use of Jack McManaway off the top of the blocks there. And that makes Waikato and Canterbury 14 apiece. Yeah, Jack firing up after that uh, that point. Look at him. He's an angry man. He's a passionate man. Passion. I, I think it's passion. I don't think Jack's... He's not an angry man. I think he's just very passionate. He just really wants to win. Great set there from Josh Mead. Toby oh. Gardner. Hey, look at him. He's pretty impressed with himself there, Toby Gardner. He's pretty chuffed. Number five there, walking away on the opposite. Just watching the replay. Look at him. He's going, yeah, I know what I'm doing. I may be a setter, but I know how to hit a thing or two. He's back to serve now. And unfortunately, I think he was still living off the adrenaline from that, that last point. Yeah, another, another unforced error there for the Canterbury team. Oh, Josh Mead trying to bring that left hand up there. Fortunately, Waikato get the point. I think he played it a bit short on the net. And that puts Waikato up 16-15. Angus Gourlay just having a look at the score there. Not quite ready to use his timeouts. Nice serve there. Todd Dunlop. Oh, Tom Dunlop. Oh, look at him. He's bloody. He's bow and arrow right there. They call him the Terminator. He just hit the hell off that guy's face. That libero. I feel for him. Here we are. Here's that classic stack again. Back for the serve. And yet again, we're just seeing that there seems to be this uh, common theme of the, the header does something really good, Luke, and then they go back and make a service here. Yeah, that, that has been the, the theme for the past few points. <laughs> I think we're getting too caught up in maybe celebrating through the net and then uh, not forgetting about the next point. Yeah, and there's another service here there from Javan, uh, making it 17 apiece here. So Steve Hockey. Uh, let's hope he can change the amount of service errors uh, Canary have uh, had in the last couple of points here. Traditionally, Steve uh, does a cross-court serve, uh, normally from position 5 to position 5. And you've had it on the dime there, Luke. Oh, 
Oh, unfortunately, that's just been hit out there by Tom Dunlop. And Waikato again take the lead here. 18-17 in the second set. Looks like we've got a bit of a substitution occurring here. Number 15, Jack Shepard coming off of Blake Hunter. Might we see the Jack attack come into play here? I hope so. Here we are. We've got Jack McManaway in the front courts. Jack Shepard in the back playing a bit of backcourt setup. Good serve there. Dropping short. Josh Mead sends it to Carrick. Carrick does what he's there to do. Yeah, Carrick really likes to hit that five ball, uh, uh, especially when he's running that B quick. It likes to come across on the ball. It's a lot easier to change the direction than uh, hitting a power shot towards one. Yeah, number four here, Josh Mead. Back to serve. Good pass here from Libero. And Jack oh, McManaway. Jack McManaway. <laughs> He's running away with that serve. With that hit, sorry. Big smash into the block. Looks yeah, like down the line, off the outside of the blocker. All right, interesting to see what happens here with Jack McManaway in the backcourt here. Great swing there. Oh, Dawson. oh my goodness. Tom Dunlop's in shock right now over that massive swing. Steve Hockey's flying away over there on the sideline. I've never seen a, a team so happy about their successes on the court yet in this tournament. Yeah, I, I think that one, he'll be adding that one to his highlight reel. Uh, uh, <laughs> maybe using it to bump up his draft, sto uh, draft stock in the NVL. 100%. Uh, <laughs> oh! Another big block from Carrick. There we go. The Waikato managed to get it up again. Oh! 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 oh, 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 oh holding him down. The roof's on fire. Right up, Atia. Oh, it looks like, hold on. Toby Gardner's making an argument here for, uh, for the call for a carry, but unfortunately, I don't think he's successful. Hey, that was a great block. Back great block. Way to seal. A huge penetration, what like really far over the net, and that makes it so much harder for the hitter to find an open gap. And yet again, we're seeing the common theme: he got a block, and then he's hit it out the back of the, of the side of the court. I believe I heard a few calls. Uh, uh, ball nose. Uh, <laughs> for those for those of you uh, who don't know, ball nose is uh, uh, traditionally when when a call doesn't go your way, and then uh, the opposing team makes an error on the next point. Uh, they're saying that the original call was right. That's it. So here we are, we have 21-20, Waikato up now by one point in the second set. Looking to run away with the lead here. Yeah, number 24 here, right to Vatia, back to the service line. Nice high float serve there, bit of a struggle for Kyle Smith. Toby Garner planting that ball back in the court. Oh, Jarman getting up there, number seven, Springs. Oh, Kyle Smith just finds that back corner. There's a lot of love on that side of the UC court. <laughs> a lot of love. They get look at this. That that huddle straight away. All the boys come in. A lot of support. Yeah, I think a lot of the, the it's come from this club culture as well. Uh, you see the likes of uh, uh, Pessa Morrison, who stresses the the relationship between the boys. You know, um, it, it's all about that connection. Jack McManaway pumping one deep into the backcourt. Here we are, Waikato up 22-21. This has been a neck and neck set, hasn't it, Luke? It sure has. It's still anyone's game. Yeah, Carl Smith, great pass there into Josh Mead. Goes out to Todd Dunlop. It's just a cheeky roll. Oh, Jack McManaway playing that roll. Back. Oh, look at those levels from Jack McManaway. Oh. And he gets carried away with himself there. <laughs> He's laughing it off now, though. It is 22 apiece. All right, Jack's going back. He's going back to reset. We're looking for that Jack attack, aren't we, Luke? Jack attack. Is it going to come this point? Here we go, Tom, Lund Tom Dunlop here. Number 12 to serve. High serve, quite easy. Jack Shepard sending it to Jack McManaway oh, oh, oh. off the head of Josh Mead. Hopefully he's not concussed after that one. Yeah, off the top of the head, you know, that's uh, always always a little bit of a humbling experience I, I found in uh, in the game of volleyball as a blocker. 
Jarvin back to serve here. And unfortunately into the net, making it 23 all here. Such a such a rough time to make a service error. You make that serve win the point, then you're you're on set point. Just a quick update from the bronze medal match. Canterbury Invitational are up 2-1 set score. Um, yeah, one one set away from uh, bronze medal for uh, a bunch of young fellas. Awesome to hear. Oh, Jack, Jack McAnaway has something to say about that. And with that, Waikato 24-23 on Canterbury. Jack Shepard looking, looking to end the set here. Angus Gourlay calling a timeout. Well used. Very well used. Trying to ice the server. Now, I don't, I don't know what... I don't think there's a lot going wrong. I think there's just a lot going right for both teams. 100%. Uh, playing good volleyball. Yeah, I think through the middle, uh, Canterbury's working really well. They're running a lot of attacks through the middle, and they've got a lot of power hitters in the middle, uh, which you don't see that often. Uh, having having super strong attacks through the middle in, in both your front court and back court middles, um, I think that's working very well for them. I think um, there's something wrong with the connection between uh, uh, the setter and the opposite. Um, it might be that the, sh the set's coming too fast. A lot of those balls are getting hit out the back, uh, and they'll look to correct that here. Great serve there from Jack Shepard hitting the tape. Great up there, and a oh, it's gone to the opposite. Good pass, Tom Dunlop sitting deep. Jack McManaway takes that ball. Jack attack coming in. Oh, Toby and Gardner! Toby Gardner! Oh, oh, Jack McManaway! The scenes, ladies and gentlemen. Jack McManaway, potential man of the tournament. You know, that's a great, there's a great play there. He hits the ball. Toby Gardner pops the ball back up and then overpass to finish the game. Sorry, set. <laughs> it's one apiece. <laughs> it is one apiece. Don't get too ahead of yourself, Luke. We're at least here for another two sets, buddy. This is uh, this is something we've seen uh, in the last last game. They they love to finish on a big point, finish their sets on a huge point. We saw uh, in their semi final, uh, <laughs> Jack and uh, the middle both running a a dead at the same time. I've stunning. never seen that one before. They were pretty much touching each other in the middle of the air. I, was, I didn't know what to think of it, but again, that was the end of the second set. Um, they also won that set. Anyway, a very passionate man, you can see from the highlights here. Oh, that's that one where, yeah, the little libero here from, uh, I kind of took it in the face uh, from Tom Dunlop's hit. So, one, one apiece here in Christchurch. What's the game plan here? Are, are, we, are we expecting to see any changes? How, how did we... How did you think uh, Jack Shepard came in and made, made an impact uh, on the Waikato squad? Uh, you know, I thought Jack did a really good job coming on that late in the set. I'm um, not sure about the, what, it's my entry with his change there. I felt Blake, uh, Blake Hunter was actually running really good, you know, just ridding it. Uh, maybe it was just that chemistry between Jack Shepard and Jack Manaway. Uh, yeah, that, it might have been that. It also might have been uh, uh, the blocking on the outside. Uh, they might have wanted to put a, a, a little bit bigger of a player on the outside. 100%. That's a really good point there, Luke, that I didn't think of. Just solidify those blocks. Two big hitters um, for uh, University of Canterbury, Todd Dunlop and Kyle Smith. Yeah, Waikato have just taken uh, the second set here in Pioneer Stadium in Christchurch. So if you're tuning in, uh, it is one all, and we're about to start the third set. Doesn't look like there's much of a change happening to the lineup that's going on. It's I think uh, oh. uh, we have Jaden uh, Jaden Cundy oh, Jayden coming Cundy. in an opposite potentially making an appearance. I saw Toby Gardner run away. I don't know. I don't know where he's going, but uh, might be going to fill up the water bottles or. Uh, uh, but yeah, Jaden Cundy uh, making his uh, a finals debut. Um, a man who's recently just been uh, bumped up to the Shirley Silverback squad uh, team uh, by Sebastian Gonzalez, uh, current NZ uh, men's and women's national uh, team coach. He's also the Shirley Silverbacks coach for men's. Uh, so Jaden's uh, just been bumped up a team, but a solid teammate. Uh, played actually in a team with Jack McManaway. 
uh, back in the day in 2019, Tauranga Boys College uh, won 2019 Nationals, Western Heights final. We've just seen uh, Toby Gardner walk past with an ice pack complaining about his elbow, so maybe there's a slight injury there from that uh, uh, big dive he got on the last point. Blake Hanna back on the back on the court here. Looks like that's gone and hit the aerial there. Great start for the Canterbury team. Josh Mead back to serve here, number four from University of Canterbury. Oh! oh! Blake Hanna with the sneaky little tip. Well, if you we know, just watch that on the replay again, Luke. Oh, that's impressive. Nobody saw that coming. Well, also, that came off of a, a quite a fast serve. Uh, uh, it looked like um, Jack McManaway was still still having a chat when uh, uh, the whistle had already gone, so the ball was in play. Um, but, yeah, it looked like he was a bit a bit shocked that it was coming over. Oh, that's a fast ball out there. Coming off the front of Kyle Smith and going out there. Blake Hanna back to serve. Yeah, I can see actually he's got a bit of gum in his mouth. <laughs> That's how relaxed he is out there, Luke. Oh, great swing there. I don't know if you heard that, that, but the bang of, of Carrick's swing. That's actually ridiculous. That was a cannon. Sounded like a gunshot. Who are Kyle Smith here, number 11, back to serve. Into the net, unfortunately. Spencer Livy, Lindsay giving me a bit of a shake of the head there, thinking, you know what, I could have put that over. Jack McManaway looking to return a big top spin here. And that's just gone out the back. I don't know. I don't know if you heard what I heard, but it, it sounds it sounds like the front corner almost like hissing. Like yeah, I, I definitely did hear that. Yeah, a bit of uh, snake noises going on. A bit of mental games coming there, yeah. maybe. Yeah, I uh, I quite like that. I like to say that a lot of my players that are coaching high school, Luke, eighty percent mental, twenty percent skill. Josh Mead for the splits. Unfortunately, sending it out the back there, Jaden Cundy. You know, maybe he's just a bit raw. He's just come off the bench. He's got to find his uh, his rhythm out there. Yeah, I did like that set. That set was a, a, a nice option. Uh, the way it comes in and then shoots off the back. Tom Dunlop taking that. Nice. Use of Jaden Cundy. This is just a safety roll there. Seen some great blocking here from. Oh, uh, looks like a two touch potentially. Right here, Vatia, great block. Not so great setting in that point. But uh, yeah, really getting up in, uh, in those one on one blocks. Here we are, we're at 4 3 here. Jaden Cundy, a bit of a, a, bit of a serving specialist uh, in uh, my Shirley Greybacks team over this season. He, uh, he's been trying to nail the top spin jump serve. Interesting to see what he's going to go for here. Oh, and he's definitely going for the top spin. Man, that's a great serve there. Warren Smith would be proud. Oh, that was a great up, but unfortunately there's a net touch there uh, from the likes of ton, uh, to, oh, Tom Dunlop. Man, getting too used to calling him Timmy. <laughs> yeah, number 24 from the University of Waikato. Raitia Vatia. Use the middle from Stephen Hockey. Steve right through the middle. Through the middle of the block. Just powers it through. Bit of a push. Jaden Cundy just kind of looking at the ball there in amazement that, oh, hold on, is this a volleyball? Sometimes we call him a bit of a space head in our team. Uh, <laughs> and we refer to him as Neil, named after Neil Armstrong. Oh, great oh, serve there. Great hustle there. Oh, Alex Limbaugh getting under that ball. Oh, oh big Wow, tip. there's a bit of that Wyman Nelson College connection coming through. Bit of rivalry back in the day. Still on the court here, though. I think uh, uh, Josh Mead saw uh, Blake Hanna's tip before and said, hey, I can do that. Let can, me show yeah, you. I can do it better. <laughs> Tom Dunlop back to serve here. Fortunately, out the back. We've got a few service here this game. 
A lot of there's a lot of a lot of big servers on on this court right now, and, and a lot of jump serves. But I I I personally love a float serve, uh, a well uh, position and um, a high pressure uh, float serve can uh, often work better than a jump serve in some situations against really strong passing teams. Number 17, Paul Lager. Serve here. Got a smile on his face for his serves. Oh, great pick up there from Alex Limbaum. Oh, and Jaden Cundy, unfortunately, roofed. Jack McManaway adding another block to his stat sheet. That's uh, a bit of a Tauranga boys uh, into rivalry there from back in the day, by the looks of it. He's looking for a triple-double here, I hear. He's looking for the, the, the service aces, uh, uh, the kills and the blocks. Bit of a tip there. Oh, Steve Hockey managing to play it off the net. Oh, oh! Nice little fist from Steve. Oh, the corner got an overpass. Oh. The referee's just ushering to Jack McManaway. I need to come and you need to come and talk to me. Oh. I think uh, I think uh, uh, coach uh, <laughs> you know, the, the Waikato coach might be getting a warning here. a uh, bit of a bit of an argument with the coach on uh, whether or not it was a reach or not. It was very adamant it was a reach. Uh, but we'll see I've what the a, ref got says. Got a character here from uh, oh, looks like uh, Canterbury have uh, yep got, got the point after all. Steve Hockey would be very very happy about that one. Jack McManaway still arguing with the referee there. He's walking away saying, all right, fine, let's get on with the game. Steve Hockey's just sitting here waiting to serve. He's, he's confident. He knows, he knows what his, uh, where his body was on the court when he hit that ball. I think we're going to see another good serve here. Between McMahon away and the libero. Fantastic. Great call there, Luke. Great call there. Oh, and that is a big solid block. block from Josh Mead. Oh, and Carrick just getting out there and having a big swing. Great cover there by Steve Hockey. See it to Jaden Cundy. And, and the net touch. The net touch <laughs> saved him on that one. I think that last minute block uh, drag on the doesn't way doesn't look too happy about it, but hey, they'll take the point, won't they? Again, Steve's been serving very well, that cross-court attack. Looking to pick the scene between the libero. It's 8 all here. Canterbury versus Waikato. And that's a service error again. I think, I think trying to change it up too much. I think he was serving the right spot and it was working. Um, Sometimes you, you want to change it up and mix it up a little bit, but I think stick with what, what's, what's, what's working. Javan to serve, and into, not even into the net, under the net. That's what we call in the industry a jug serve. Josh Mead back to serve here, number four. Oh, that's a great serve there. Jack McManaway kind of going, oh, I'll give you that. Few lamb shanks on the <laughs> on the side. <laughs> Josh Mead's happy about that one. Great serve there from Josh Mead. Fantastic! There we go. Jaden Cundy, he's pretty stoked with himself there. He finally got a point. You know, he, he got a block. He's had a few errors, and I think he's just finding his rhythm now on the court. Yeah, that'll that'll definitely inspire some confidence in him. That's sad. He was just lacking that, and he's, he's building it back up here. Great serve there again from Josh Mead. Oh, unfortunately, 24. Waikato Raitia Batia just heading into that uh, in the net. And, you know, that's something that we've seen today as well and yesterday. Is sometimes the set's not there for him. He tends to drop that shoulder and swing low. Mm, another substitution coming on here. Swapping the setters again. Uh, bringing Jack Shepard in uh, for Blake Hanna. Looking for that Jack attack. Jack, Jack McManaway, big grin on his face, ready for the ball. Here we are. Jack Shepard sends it. And there and it is, the that. Jack attack. Whoa, whoa. Yeah, right down through the middle of that block.
Jack Shipper back to serve. Great pass there from Alex Limbob. Oh, way to tall it off the top of the blocks there from Jaden Cundy. Yeah, just bullying it through to the outside of block. We're starting to see a little bit more confidence now with Jaden Cundy. Yeah, I think he's really found his own uh, uh, in this set. He's, he's starting to get a lot more comfortable now, and uh, it's only going to do good things for his game. Kyle Smith back to serve here. And unfortunately into the net. Yeah, they were seeing, starting to see a few errors uh, in the service from uh, Kyle Smith here. Uh, I think dropping dropping his shoulder a bit too much. Maybe it's the toss. A lot of things could be going wrong uh, or could just be one thing. Jack McMahon away back to serve here for the Waikato. But a fantastic pass there by Kyle Smith. There he, there is. he is. That confidence is just inspired. I look at a man like Jaden Cundy and I think, man, holy hell. You know, what a man. <laughs> what a man. Here we are. Okay, Carrick Corson here back to serve. Going for the traditional topspin jump serve that he goes for. And wow, it sounds like a cannon when he hits that thing. Managing to play it off. Oh, Jack McManaway just putting a little bit too much torque on that. Carrick Corson going back to serve. Interesting fact about Carrick, he's a fourth year electrical engineer. Tough degree that. There it is. Another service error. All right, Waikato going to climb back here. 12 15 down. Yeah, I think these service errors are just allowing Waikato sort of creep back in a little bit, close that gap a little bit. Great pass there from Carl Smith. Steve, oh, Steve Hockey. Look at the man. <laughs> Powering it through again. Fly like an eagle, sting like a Steve. <laughs> I think it's a bit more fly like a falcon. <laughs> here we are, Jaden Cundy for the serve here. I believe that was a uh, foot fault there from Jaden Cundy. Oh, he's not too happy with himself. I don't know what they teach in there at Tauranga boys, but hey. Ooh. Maybe it might have been one of those learned uh, attributes. Maybe it was uh, maybe it might have been a Shirley, Shirley thing. Learned it at Shirley. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a couple of the boys here on the sideline think we should go to a VAR. <laughs> Oh, I believe it's off the top there. Yep, the line thrift there. She's just called out. Yes, that was indeed a touch off the top of Tom Dunlop, Tom Dunlop's hit there. Another bit of... I'm, I'm a bit confused here. I don't know who, who, the, who the captain is. Well, I believe because Toby Gardner is not on the court currently, uh, it means that... Tom Dunlop is now nominated captain. Oh, but but with the Waikato squad, they're, but there's two times now that, that they've had uh, uh, Jack Shepard and Jack McMalloway oh, both I go see, up. I so. see. Great serve there. Oh, I think that was two touches, but they play on. Javan's pretty pleased with himself for the opposite set. Serve there. Oh, Kyle Smith unfortunately sitting it a bit wide. Be looking for a big pass here, change change the tempo of this game. Uh, stop wide cut off for Crawley back into this. Again, another little tip from Josh Me. Beautiful. He's picking the, he's picking his shots well. He's going the right time. Uh, love to see it. Here we are, Steve Hockey back to serve. I feel like we've seen Steve on the service line a lot today. Bit of an icon. That was a safety serve there from Steve by the looks of it. Just building that confidence back to the serve. 
Oh, yeah, that big is, angle. Wow, apparently in. Yeah, first origin, original call was tip, but I think uh, they're calling it in. I think uh, there was a tip there as well. Yeah, Javad back to serve here for the University of Waikato. Garrett Corson rolling that one in. Here we are, Canterbury starting to just build, build a little bit of a lead here, 1916. Not letting Waikato back in the game. Josh Mead back to serve. Great take there. Oh, oh it's up, it's up. Check me, man, away, man, just get it over. Oh. That's a great up there. And, uh, Trent Webby very excited on the sideline. Yeah, great job from the, <laughs> I believe the middle, <laughs> to pick that ball. Javan was pretty stoked with himself there. Right place, right time. Jack Sheba back to serve here. Down the line. Great pass there though still. Jaden Cundy, unfortunately, there's that space to get in him. He likes to make balls rocket out the back. Second ref signalling for a net touch, but... Uh, oh, no, net touch was called. Yeah, net touch was called. Lucky. Jaden will be, uh, you know, he'll be relieved there. <laughs> Saved again, you know. Kyle Smith back for the serve. Into the net. Kyle's made quite a few service errors today. Yeah, he had a good run in the first set, and he just hasn't found that connection again this set. Here we go, number 16, Jack McManaway, star player of this uh, University of Waikato side, back to serve again. Taking his time to serve as well. Just so, uh, for those who are unaware, great pass there by Alex Limbaugh, actually. And there we go, <laughs> Jaden Cundy, his confidence is back again. Yeah, that's a great swing by Jaden Cundy, uh, coming inside, exposing that shorter blocker. Nice to see the right side usage. Substitution here. Looks like Lewis White coming onto the court. Oh, Big what a swing. cannon. Jack McManaway picks that ball up though nicely. Lewis White putting the ball over there. Josh Mead comes in for the set, sends it out to Todd Dunlop. Oh, they're blocking them out nicely on the D there. Jack McManaway gets Steve. blocked by Steve Hockey. Yes, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> He's stoned with himself. <laughs> a little bit of a celebration through the net there. <laughs> oh, Jack McManaway calling the boys in. Hey, this is what we need to do here. We're down four points. Canterbury are down four. Uh, sorry, Canterbury are up four points. But, you know, Jack McManaway probably said, guys, we're down four. We need to fix this right now. And unfortunately, <laughs> Garrett Corson swinging into the net there. Missed serve there from Garrett Corson. Right, going back to serve, Lowly Alfred. Uh, <laughs> fun fact about him, he, he told me this one. He said uh, uh, he's actually, in fact, Dwayne The Rock Johnson's son. Wow, I could totally believe that. So we, uh, we've got a celebrity here. <laughs> that looks like uh, Simon Vesti chasing a ball from the Canterbury Invitational Men's uh, <laughs> court. I don't think I've ever seen Simon move so fast. Well, believe it or not, he used to be a bit of a pro back in his day. I have heard these things. A bit, a bit of a setter. I believe he played for New Zealand for a few years. All right, here we are. Now. Back, back to the game here. 23, uh, 22 19. Waikato's still down. Josh Mead opting for Jaden Cundy. Oh, that's a great jump. There he is. Perfect timing there. Swinging down on the ball. Replay doesn't do it justice. <laughs> All right. Canterbury up. 23-19. Two points left to go this game. Sorry, this set. Jaden taking his time on the serve. And that yeah, is that ace. Me. Stoked with that one. Ace right on the line. The Match point here. Arrived. Looking for set point here. Looking to repeat that again. Here we go. The crowd is clapping. If you can hear that through the microphones there. And he hits it in. That's a free, free ball. ball. 
No and ball. That'll do it. That is 25 19 in the third set there to Canterbury. Yeah, great set there from Canterbury. I think they got a lot of calls going their way, but they also did a lot of good things. Again, running through that middle uh, with uh, Steve Hockey and Carrick Corson there. Um, and Jaden Cundy really finding his own on the court. Uh, it started off a little bit uh, rusty and then, and then edged his way back in, built up a bit of confidence, got a few blocks, got a few hits, and yeah, finishing strong. Now the question is, Luke, can Canterbury continue that momentum into the set? I believe so. <laughs> I'll be I'll be interested to see whether they make any changes again. Because Canterbury is a very deep squad. Um, Players sitting on the bench, such as Spencer Lindsay, just come back from the uh, under 20s uh, men's team in Aussie, uh, alongside Steve Hockey and Kyle Smith. Um, but then again, you got like Nathaniel Mann, played for the played for the Canterbury Invitational team last year, and uh, he's really really been out to prove himself uh, this year. Um, he's been playing very well in, in, in the previous games. I'd love to see him get on the court. Uh, tell me your thoughts. What what do the Waikato team need to do to? to get this set back to start off strong. Well, firstly, you know, like both teams are doing at the moment, but the service here is just all over the show. All over the show. And I mean, what you're starting to see now as well, Luke, is that Canterbury are using the right side. You know, Jaden Cundy's actually getting up. The difference between him and Toby Gardner, Toby Gardner tended to roll that ball. He was hitting a lot of balls out. Jaden Cundy, he's just hitting that ball cross court. They've got to try to deal with that. I felt like that's where they won a lot of points as well as through Steve Hockey. So shutting down that right side will force the outside set. Mm. Yeah, I think I think another thing too is, is they're playing a lot of out-of-system stuff. Um, they're, they're, I think they're struggling a bit with, with some of this out-of-system stuff, forcing it to Jack where it, when it's not quite there um, and forcing him to hit into the uh, two or even sometimes a three-man block. Um, I think they do need to use their middles more in uh, in system plays and, and just mix it up a little bit. Uh, get get the UC middles uh, thinking about the quick attack. Um, the likes yeah. of Javan. Javan yeah. should be up there. You know, he's got springs. Using him a bit more. Yeah, he's got a great vertical and he's, he's really long. He's got really long limbs. So he, he hits that ball quite high. It's quite a high contact point. Got another substitution here. Cody Tanner coming in in the middle. We love to see Cody Tanner on the court. Yeah, man's got uh, uh, some of the softest hands in the game, you know. Uh, as a middle, he's uh, quite often forced to set the ball, and, and whenever he's set the ball, it's a kill. Jack Shepard starting on this time. Blake Hanna on the bench here. Nice serve there, Alex Lebon. Great pass there. Off the top from Kyle Smith. Wow, it looks to me like the Canterbury Invitational team are about to take the dub here. Match point 24-18, up 2-1. Could be a bronze and a gold for Canterbury. Big roar sounds like they won the point, so it looks like Canterbury Invitational have done it. They've come out and won the bronze medal. Oh, unfortunately, Josh Bede sending it a bit long there. Yeah, a bit too much power on that float surf. Yeah, Jack McMahon away to serve the ball here. Great serve. Unfortunately, a bit of a miscomps there, but Cundy great gets the hustle from Jaden Cundy. Running all the way back into the corner to the outside position. Oh, oh That's a great save there. As we say, Luke, do the mahi, get the treats. Yeah, and I think I think that was the wrong option to set post there. Jaden's front court, uh, he's blocking at the net, and he's still coming in from almost all the way at the baseline. That's so it. You've got your opposite in the front. Yeah, you should look to set that ball backwards and, and take the open serve. Kyle Smith with several serving errors today. Yeah, I, 
there's a saying in golf, like when you have a slice, you, you hit the ball right the whole time. Um, Kyle's been hitting it at the net, but at least the shape's different. So he's not hitting it at the net anymore, he's, he's hitting it deep, so now he's time to find the, the middle ground between it. Amen. Cody Tanner, nice little serve there. Oh, oh. number 17 there from University of Waikato, Poor Laga. Just getting up there and uh, just, you know, showing that ball who's boss. Here we are, it's free all here in the fourth set. Cody Tanner back to serve here. Fortunately, just served into the net there. That was a, a, a pretty big cross-court serve. It, uh, it almost hit the net uh, quite close to the aerial, so maybe maybe he's looking for a float back in. Looks like it's also that uh, Waikato have made a change to the fact that uh, Raiti Avatia now is uh, actually playing out on the opposite. He was, on the, he was in the middle for the first couple of minutes. Ooh, there we are. Out the back. Again, yeah, it's early in, in Canterbury still making these service errors. Just letting Waikato have easy free points. He's turned into like a nice serve down the line. And he's actually gone for the, for the middle there onto Kyle Smith. Chad and Cundy opted for that roll. Yeah, great little roll. And I believe that the ref is called... The ball is dead. And Canterbury out 5-4 here. 2-1 and set score. Best of five. Canterbury looking to win this set to claim the gold. All attention is now on this game as the third and fourth playoff is finished up. Yeah, this being the last game of the day. Gold medal match, the men's. Uh, this has been a, a long-awaited game, I think, uh, throughout this tournament. These, te these two teams have really shown that uh, they're just at the next level. Number 17 here, Paul Lager, back to serve. I think he, he's, he's the one that's been uh, initiating the, the hissing in the front court. <laughs> Tom Dunlop with a great swing on the outside there, down the line. Canterbury lead, 6-5. Tom Dunlop for the serve here, number 12. Very serious man, Tom Dunlop. He has quite a, a successful cricket career, I believe. Explains the arm swing. <laughs> There's another point for Canterbury to take them to 7-5 here. Stephen Hockey smiling. He's a happy man. They're stacking to the right there. Check me anyway, just able to use that off the top of the blocks. Yeah, he's been a bit quiet this set, but I'd like to see him uh, uh, pipe up a little bit more and, and get more active in the game. Because he's really their go-to and their, their power hitter. All right, here we are. We have Cody Turner coming back on the court here. The Jarvin in the backcourt here, number seven. Kyle Smith able to execute that pass. And that oh. is straight through that gap. Kyle Smith. Might need to get his autograph after the game, I think, <laughs> Luke. I think there's a bit of confusion about who's serving here. Not sure what's going on. Oh, it's Steve Hockey. We're looking to put another cross-court serve in here. Second ref got something to say to the first ref. There's been quite a bit of discussion between referees this game as well. It's discussions with the captain, haven't they, Luke? Yeah, a lot of, a lot of discussions with the captains, and, and I'm, I'm okay with that. But, you know, it, it gets to a point where it's... Uh, oh, ho, ho. Uh, <laughs> out of rotation has been called. Uh, oh, holy hell, okay. The University of Taylor women's team here on... Uh, Judy have uh, designated that actually is out of rotation for University of Canterbury. Now the question is, is if, have they been out of rotation for multiple plays? Because if that's the case, uh, then they'll lose all the points they, they've been out of rotation for uh, since, uh, since, I've, since they've been out of rotation. So that could be since the start of the set. They could have started out of rotation. And that would mean they'd lose all seven of their points. Just 
Lawrence waiting patiently here for us to be clarified by the second referee for the University of Otago. She's just trying to sort out what the, the deal is. And it seems like it's been cleared and it's fine. Jarvin back to serve here. Seven all. Alex Limbon picks that ball up. Roll over the top by Kyle Smith. Oh, Cody Tanner. Oh, Cody there Tanner he is. put in the way of the set there, I think. <laughs> Steve Hockey. Needs a name change, doesn't he, Luke? <laughs> Steve, Steve Volleyball. volleyball. <laughs> I love that. There's that cross court. Drops short onto Jack McManaway. They send it out to Jack. Oh, through the middle of the block. That's the energy we've been looking for from Jack. Cody Tanner coming in. But they knew where that ball was going. They just unfortunately couldn't shut it down. 8 all. Oh, Canterbury versus Waikato. Fourth set. Alex Limbaugh, nice pass in there to Josh Mead. Oh, oh another big block. Carrick Corson. Jack McManaway's running away with it. The roof is on fire. That's a huge block. Oh, man. Sorry, we've been corrected. It was Cody. We give Cody the credit. He drew that. <laughs> Go for that short ball. Oh, Waikato are getting excited here. Yeah, this is the momentum we've been wanting to see. They're starting to run off of the lead a little bit. 10-8. The whole team started piping up now, and, and, and this is a, a lot better of a, a, a culture of volleyball that they want to play. That's it. Here we go. Josh Mead sends it out to the outside to Kyle Smith. Again. And yet again, the blocking game for the University of Waikato. Unreal. Jack McManaway, very excited about that block. <laughs> More blocks than at an ice cream shop. Come on. The defense from Waikato here has been immaculate. Oh, there we go. Carl Swift found the answer there. Letting one slip through there. Right, here we are. Josh Mead back to the service line. Canterbury are uh, 8 11 down. 9-11 down. Josh Mead serving here. Check the matter way to use the ball here. Three-man block. Gets the touch off uh, Jaden Cundy. Oh, <laughs> Jaden Cundy getting roofed. <laughs> right here of a tear. Again with these massive blocks. One-on-one. -on -one. He loves the one-on-one. -on -one. I think uh, in the celebration on the sideline, uh, the <laughs> Waikato bench may have broken the floor. <laughs> Here we are. Jake McManus. Oh, what an eight eight. serve. He knows it too. He's heating up like the temperature outside. He will look to repeat that one. They want a clean lead here, 13-9 up on Canterbury. Oh, that's another great serve. Kyle Smith able to take that power off. Goes to Kyle, and he gets blocked. Trent Webby very excited on the sideline there. The call on the, on the court is a two-touch off the set. But that again, that was another great block. Check with Manaway just showing. Look at that power. Yeah, they're really showing here that they're, they're, they've stepped up their game on the blocking side and uh, uh, yeah, become a much more defensive team. Great touch there. Garrett Corson putting that in the court. We just watched the replay here, and he just goes for that, you know, cross shot there. Heading for the back left. I think that might be the big point they need to turn the momentum and, and shift the tide of this game. Carl Smith opting for a float serve. Yeah, and I, I respect that. You know, when, you're, when your topspin serve's not working and not working, and in a big game like this especially, 
Uh, you've got to know when to pull the plug. That's it. So you have to give him credit for that. Kyle Smith. Jaden Cundy. Swing. Oh, what a great pass there from Jack McManaway. And, and transitioning in. And it looks like two touches has been called on Jack Shepard there. That's really unfortunate because Jack McManaway, he's passing better than a straight-A student right now. It's not easy to go from a pass into a transition to hit, uh, but Jack makes it look so damn flawless. That's one thing these uh, uh, oh. beach volleyball players uh, do really well, is uh, pass the ball and then hit the same ball. Cody Tanner there, unfortunately, getting a wee touch on the net. Kyle looking to put this float serve in again. Number 11, Kyle Smith, here we go. Goes McMahon away, and it's out, unfortunately. Oh, but the referee has rejected what's happened here. Someone second here. ref called out, linesman called, sorry, second ref called in, linesman called out. Trent, where we just uh, signaling over to me that I've got a pretty good shot of the line there, and uh, fortunately I'm not the one holding the flag. <laughs> it's a tough gig, you know. <laughs> Tough gig, it being is. a linesman. Here we go, Cody Tanner for the serve. See, there's Great that uh, there. nice cross-court serve executed. Oh, well. Jada getting blocked out. So, as I said before, Luke, you asked me, what do I kind of need to do? And I said, hey, you know, they're going out to Jada now on the right side, and they're successfully blocking him out now. That's the third time in a row they've done that to him. Yeah, they've had a, a, a blocking spectacular this set. It's a, it's a big step up from the last set, in the, or the first two sets even. Josh Reed using Carrot Corson. Nice little knuckleball on that one. Maybe maybe a little beach technique there. I think we're still yet to see uh, <laughs> Carrot Corson take the beach scene. Would love to see it though. I'd love to see it. There he goes. Back to serve the man himself. Great up there out of and system. There you go. Steve Hockey with a big block there. Three-man block. It was quite a widespread block, but uh, uh, Steve Hockey gets his hands on the ball. Very stoked with himself there, Steve is. Waikato still lead here, 16-14. Pioneer Stadium in Canterbury. Number 16, Carrot Course, and back to serve again. Topspin. Great pass there. Jarvin getting up on top of that. Number four, Josh Mead sending out to Todd Dunlop. And Todd Dunlop... Putting oh. the ball outside the court, no tips. I've seen no tips. The ball is out. Yes, linesman called out. Uh, not sure if there was any tip there at all, uh, or if there was any question about a tip. Um, yeah, yeah, rough, rough, uh, rough little tip there. Should have dropped it in a little bit shorter, but that's a tough ball. Right, Tia Vatia back to serve here. Yeah, he's had a spectacular blocking game today. Josh Mead sending it to Tom Dunn off a chance. Oh, Steve Hockey. Little little chicken wing to uh, fist. Put this man away. He <laughs> shouldn't legally be allowed on this court right now. You know, we've, we've seen this quite a lot from uh, Steve Hockey today. I think that might be the third or fourth time he's uh, hit one of those big overpasses, and he's loving it. Here we are, Jaden Cundy back for the serve. Oh, that's a shank there from the University of Waikato. Jack McManaway going up the swing. Fortunately hitting into the net there. Canterbury are finding their way back into this game. Angus Gourlay on the bench there, pretty happy about that. 16-17. You're looking to close the gap here, tie it all up. It's theirs to lose. Jack McManaway off the roll. Oh, unfortunately, Alex Limbaugh just couldn't quite get there. Just watch that replay here. That's a great shot. Oh, two players both go for it. The likes of Jaden Cundy and Alex Limbaugh, two fantastic teammates of mine. That ball just, just couldn't quite get there. That ball just dropping with the block. It's a, it's a tough shot. Oh, we've got Toby Gardner returning to the court here, Luke. No, must have, must have passed his HIA. <laughs> um, but no, good to see him back on the court. Hopefully he can uh, uh, make Darling a bit of an impact. A touch there. Right here for Tia, managed to roll that back in. Oh, getting blocked oh, out. Still alive. Steve Hockey redeems. Jack Shepard to Jarvin. And the Kim is there. And it goes to 19-16 to the Waikato. It's a big swing through the middle. Really uh, looping, coming from the side and swinging across his body. And no block. 
you got to love that it's the middle, don't you, Luke? No blocks. Oh, you know, sometimes they're the best thing, but also, like, you have no excuse to miss there, right? No excuse. <laughs> Great serve there from Paul Langer. Tom opting for a short roll. Jack Shepard, unfortunately, tripping over his teammate on the floor there. Right, 17-19 down for Canterbury. Tom Dunlop to serve here. Good pass to McManaway. And there's a chase on here. Oh! oh great touch from Tom Dunlop there to keep it alive. And Jack Shepard's able to play oh, it in. still alive. Alex Limbaugh makes a shank. Oh, there's Toby Gardner's setting skills. This is a great covering game. Great... Jack McManaway for the roll. And that ball goes dead on the floor, leading Waikato to get to the first to 20. That's a beautiful rally there, you know. Just a lot of tipping stuff, a lot of short, out of, out of system. You heard a, the call earlier on the court. As soon as their ball went up, they called out of system. Um, and, yeah, they, they played a lot of out of system ball. And, and you can see this, all this little tippy stuff, tippy tappy, just put it in. Um, but, yeah, Waikato executed on that play. Oh, and yet again. Alive. Okay, the ball's come back over there. Trent Webby's not happy about that. Jack McMahon away. There's the Jack attack. <laughs> there I heard, it is. I heard Coach Trent Webby say that it came off the outside of the, uh, the ball came off the outside of the ear, uh, net, uh, which is technically out. Out. Um, but it didn't matter. Uh, Jack McMahon away put that ball away. Angus Gourlay calling a timeout here. 21-17 to Waikato. Looks like Lewis Hofflet's got it on the action. He's got, he's got something to say. You know, I think he's trying to bring in his coaching skills uh, just with, uh, with, with that under, well, not under, sorry, that Canterbury Invitational team um, winning a medal with them. You know, he'll be uh, wanting to put his, uh, his two cents in. That's it, Luke. So, hey, we, we could have our first five-seater on the, uh, the, court, the live court here for the, for the over the, for these two days and and what better way to do it than in the gold medal match you know it's, this has been a big a uh, bit of a, a dog fight to uh to see who's going to come out on top uh and you know if you're a fan of volleyball this is what you love getting your money's worth here oh no Tom, Tom Dunlop making the shank leaving uh Toby Gardner to uh run into the uh the signage at the back there. Yeah, great hustle from Toby, but man. I think the signage did more damage to Toby than Toby did to the signage there, Luke. Yeah, I think he's still nursing a bit of an injury from... Well, oh. back and forth. Don't know what's going on there. I think he's still nursing a bit of an uh, elbow injury from, from the end of the second set? First set? Yes, second um, set, I believe. Into the first set, he came when he came off. Oh, and, uh, that's right. Yeah, you're correct. And there's there's that tip there, the signature tip from Josh Mead. Yeah, he's been finding a lot of success there with that uh, little short tip behind his head. Um, yeah, I don't think he's been stopped yet on one of them. So he's finding the right time to do it. Here we go, Steve Hockey, cross court shot, most likely coming as this way. Yet again, Jack McMahon away, just giving him that left side. Jack takes that nicely. It's out to Jack. It's a Jack oh, attack! That's a big spike there. And the oh. bench is going crazy. You cannot complain with that. If you're Coach Trent Webby right now, you're pretty happy with that. Pretty content going into potentially the fourth set. They're two points away from it. Up by five. It's a tough ask for uh, University of Canterbury here to come back. They don't want to go to a five. They want to win it in four. I think we've lost the ball. We have uh, found the ball. We've found the ball. Or did the ball find us? <laughs> here we go. Jack Shepard back to serve here. I think it might have been Daniel Malcolm uh, having, a, having a few hits with the ball on the other court. Oh, Carrick's been lucky there. And Still the ball's alive. a play, but it looks like the referee's called 4-4. No, it looks like a carry. Well, she's in a better position than us to call it, so got to respect the call. I think Canterbury will be happy with that. Josh Mead here to serve, 19-23 down. Big Ang ask for Canterbury to come back here. Angus Gourlay bringing back in Jaden Cundy for the front court attack. I think that's a great option 
leaving Jaden in the front court and uh, uh, Toby in the back because he's got that option to run Toby as the setter because Toby has traditionally been a setter. Great set there, Kyle Smith playing it a bit safe just with a safety roll. Looks like there's going to be a roll there from the, the setter, Jack Shepard. Jack McManaway, it goes up and it's off the block. Leaving Waikato to 24-19. Yeah, it's just that high contact off the top of uh, uh, Kyle Smith's hands. He'll be looking to uh, put it away here. Big jump serve. The crowd clapping him in here. Great serve. Oh, Alex Lamont trying to take a bit off that. And such the aerial on the way over. And ladies and gentlemen, we have a five-setter game ahead of us here. 25-19 uh, to Waikato in the fourth set of the University uh, Tertiary Champs uh, here in Christchurch at Pioneer Stadium. Uh, we're about to get into the fifth set. Yeah, so the fifth set, for those of you who don't know, has played a little bit different. It's uh, the, the team's only played a 15 points, so first to 15, win by two. Um, and the team swap sides at eight points. So the first play, uh, the first team to get to eight points, and then the teams will swap sides. So it'll be interesting to see what happens here because this has been a fairly evenly matched game throughout the whole time. Um, we've seen the defense from Waikato in the front court, the big blocks. Uh, what's going to happen here? Well, <laughs> what's your what's your what's your pick? I'm going to be completely honest with you, Luke. This is the first time I actually have no clue what's going to happen. <laughs> I don't know what's going to happen because both both teams have shown if you're too old, anything could happen at the fifth. Exactly. My my call is that whichever team makes it to eight first is going to win. That's a classic right there, isn't it? You know that's the that's the rule of thumb. Whichever team makes it to eight first is going to win, and that just because it puts you in a better situation. You're you're swapping sides. You've got the serve. You know what more can you ask for? Angus Gourlay really uh, uh, vocal in this set I'd say um, really looking to rec reclaim the title from uh, 2019 which they were stolen away by uh, University of Auckland in the last uh, the last tertiary games in 2021 a lot to prove on this court right now here we are ladies and gentlemen the first five set match on the show court and what a way to do it in the goal final Trent Webby giving over the, uh, the slip there to the second referee for the rotations. Javon Weehuppi uh, <laughs> going on the court a little bit early there. I think he was uh, a bit too eager. I hope that's not the only thing he's premature at. And they're uh, leaving on uh, Cody Tanner, and I think that's a great decision. He's been uh, uh, exceptional in this blocking lineup. And I think that's that's what his role should be going forward uh, in this, the rest of the set is big power in the blocking position, um, and you're yeah, running running that block around. Hundred percent agree with you there, Luke. So let's see how this is going to play out here. Right, Libero is entering the court. Waikato have the serve. Looks like we're starting with Javan serving. Bit of confusion here. Bit of confusion on whose serve it is. Something that you'd think would be a very simple job, proving to be quite difficult. Question is, who won the toss? From where we're sitting, we don't know. Jack Shepard going back. Uh, referee, first ref here, is not really having uh, any of it. I think uh, Jack McManaway is, uh, uh, Jack Shepard is acting as a bit of a, uh, uh, I don't know, like a... A conduit. Yeah, a conduit. That's a great word. Just talking through to Jack as Jack <laughs> McManaway, you know. <laughs> Kyle Smith uh, said he's had enough. I'm sitting down, rest my legs for a little bit. It's the Hillcrest way. Jaden Cundy. What a power stance from Jaden Cundy right there, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like he heard you there. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of waiting. Sometimes this can happen in volleyball. There, there seems to be a lot of waiting. Check me, Manaway's coming there for some reason. Jarvin's just wanting to have a serve. <laughs> Kyle Smith needing help up there from uh, Steve Hockey and uh, 
<laughs> Jaden Cundy a bit stuck on the ground. Let's hope it's not his legs gone for the set. Okay, here we go. Start of the fifth set here. What a way to finish it. It's 5.25 p.m., Luke. Wow, the time has really gotten away with us today. I think so. It's been decided. It's University of Canterbury serve. Carrick Corson back to serve. Big top spin coming uh, University of Waikato's way. And that's an accidental float, oh. I think, there. But what an up from the libero. And he's back up already. And Josh Mee getting blocked out on his signature tip already. Yeah, that's, a, that's the first time we've said it before. Josh, Josh has been executing well, but that's the first time he's been blocked. Jack read him like a oh. block there. Jeepers. He's a newspaper. Get up there and read him. But yeah, there was a bit of a freaky survey. That had the power and it was dropping, but, but no spin. It's crazy. The fact that the libero took that off his face is quite impressive. Yeah. <laughs> Jack Shepard there for the serve. Tom Dunlop, nice receive there. Steve, Steve Hockey! And the bench roars, Steve. That'll get them hyped up. Josh Mead back to serve here. Trent Webby just informing them about uh, what type of serve to expect here. Use of Jack McManaway. Oh, going Short for the cut. cut. Great cover from Jaden Cundy there. Oh, coming up short there from Tundon, Tom Dunlop. Yeah, I think he had the right option there, but uh, uh, just not enough, uh, not enough money in that little push there. I like the use of that. Bit of a bit of a water bottle on the court there from Javan. Uh, <laughs> What's following him? <laughs> oh, being very aggressive for the Lions person there. Oh, great serve there from Jack McManaway. Just short of the roof. The ball's still in play. Oh, Kyle there Smith. There we go. Kyle Smith does the job. Pumping it through the middle of the, uh, of the block. Um, the crowd's going crazy right now. Stomping on the stands. I think there's something to say about that that hometown uh, support, you know. It really gets you going. It makes it Definitely. a lot easier to get going. Home court advantage here. Jack McManaway taking that pass. He says, Cody I Tanner want unsure of what was happening there. Oh, Todd Dunlop, sit down. There That's what is. they're saying. Number 24. Right here of a tear. Man, this guy's had a great one-on-one -on -one blocking game all day. He's been a standout for me. You know, he's telling everyone to sit down, and, and <laughs> he's backing it up. Don't bother heading, because I'm going to be there. Oh, looking like it was going to be a great serve there from Cody Tanner. It's free all here in the fifth set. He switched it up. He switched it up. He started serving the line. Uh, normally he serves that cross court to five, and uh, yeah, just it didn't go that time. Here we go. Steve Hockey, fan favorite. Going for the cross. There it is, putting that serve on Jack McMahon away. Jack Shepard hit, oh. oh, nice touch off the chest. Canterbury keep going, but it looks like it's been called for a carry potentially. Yep, there's a lift being called there from the first referee. I believe that carry's called on Carrick. Yeah, Steve did a great job just being in the right spot, lifting that shoulder, a little bit of a chicken wing. Here we are, right Tia Vatia back to serve here. Nice serve there. Oh, oh that's a Carrick huge block. Getting absolutely blocked out. That's a you huge know. block. Javon Wee, Wee Huppy, that's massive. That's massive. The springs on that man. I keep going back to it, but the springs on him. He's, this is, Waikato have shown their biggest strength is their blocking ability. Yeah, the, defensively, they're just so sound. Great call there from uh, Alex Lindbon. Here we are. Canterbury 4-5 down here in the fifth. Jaden Cundy back to serve. Angus Gourlay just trying to relay some information there. Tom Dunlop going over to listen in to the, to the ref. No, I'm still confused. I don't know who the captain is. Yeah, I, I don't. Uh, well, Jack's I know it's captain? Jack. Hey, well, it's one of them. <laughs> it's it's got to be one of them, right? It's got to be one of them. I Here suppose we we'll find out after the game. Jaden Cundy unfortunately serving into the net there. Now, your prediction before was whatever team gets to eight first, it could closing, be the team to win. We're closing in on eight here. 
I think what they were talking about before with uh, what, what Jack McManaway was talking with the ref about before was, is the screening. He thinks that they're, they're moving the screen around, uh, which is technically illegal. Um, but what Canterbury have been doing is fine. Oh, Jack uh, McManaway getting blocked there by Josh Mead. Josh Mead. <laughs> You've got to be happy with that. That's a big point. He here. got a bit of revenge on Jack from earlier on <laughs> when he blocked his, uh, his cheeky tip there. Yeah, Tom Dunlop looking to serve down the line here. Putting on number 17. And unfortunately, that is a service error for Tom Dunlop. Waikato one point off the, off the swap here. Here we are. Javan Weehuppi on to serve. Cody Tanner, big block star, back in the middle. That's a great serve there. Tom Dunlop having to take it high on the hands. Kyle Swift getting out there having a swing. Not a bad pass. Jack McManaway going for the corner, but unfortunately couldn't quite hit that line shot. Toby Gardner calling that out early. Love the communication. Following the ball out too, that's another thing. You know, especially in those 50-50 calls, if you're following the ball out and, and it, it does happen to be going in, then, then you can take that. Here we are, number 16. Carrick Horsen back to serve here. And a great serve! That's great on serve. the back line, ladies and gentlemen. We have a game among us now, seven all. That's the ace, the ace of spades right there. Yeah, Trent Webby's got to try to figure something to do here. All right, Canterbury have fought their way back into it. For, this is for the swap over here. Whichever team wins this point is going to be leading at the changeover. There it is. Jack McManaman! Oh, absolutely! The crowd is going wild, people here. Steve. This is crazy. He put the hands up. He said, Roof, this Holy is my foot. Hell. This is my house, Panther Dome. It is not the house that Jack built. It is the house that Steve built. You know, this is a great game. This is exactly what you want out of a gold medal match. Fantastic block there. This is the best volleyball I think we've seen played all weekend. Lewis Hoffman just coming over into the commentary box here. Yeah, some great volleyball being played here. You know... Oh, looks like we're getting the captain ushered over here. So we got it. This is uh, potentially uh, just a warning about uh, celebrating a little bit too much. You know, there's a fine line between uh, uh, celebrating and then, you know, just oh, but maybe uh, rubbing it in the other team's face. You want to show good sportsmanship at all times. And of course, you'd understand that at Pioneer. We pride ourselves on being uh, great sportsmen. Oh, unfortunately, Carrick says hit into the net. I think he just had a bit too long to wait for his serve. <laughs> Broke that momentum that he had before. Uh, and it's 8 all. He's uh, laughing it off. There we go. Nice serve there from Jack Shepard. Josh Mead sending it out to Kyle Smith. That's a tip there. Libero sends it up high. And it's a ball in. And I, I <laughs> managed to catch that ball. It's that, that big block. It all starts from uh, uh, that tip. It, Kyle was forced to tip that because of uh, Ratea Vitea's great block. He's, he's, left them, he's left them nothing. He's penetrated so far over the net. He's taken up so much more space Jack in the backcourt. The serve. Left out there. Great lead by Alex Limbaum. Some people say that he's got eyes like a praying mantis. Well, I think he's got eyes like a falcon. Here we go, Josh Mead with the serve here. It's it's all tied up at 9 all. So uh, as Luke said at the beginning of this uh, set, uh, the set only goes to 15, or if it's got goes down the wire, win by two. Jaden Cundy back in the front court, little chop there from uh, Jack McManaway. Set from the libero. That ball's been hit out. No touches, Carl Smith saying no touches. Angus Gourlay's up and antics. He's saying, talk to the backcourt. Talk with your backcourt. Tell them what you're doing. There we are. Josh Mead, very consistent with the serve. Nice little short serve there. Oh, forcing that little bit of pressure. I think... Uh, Canterbury, 11-9 up here. I think UC are in a great position here. I think with Jack McManaway... Uh, 
sorry, he's almost in uh, backcourt. He's, he's still front court. got one could, more rotation Could be court. a deadly threat if he gets a hold of that serve, though, Luke. He sure could. He's been executing on it all day. Use of Jack McManaway on the D. Yeah, there he is. All right. It's the mini arm wrestle. First to 15 from here. Yeah, Jaden Cundy, I think, sitting a bit sitting a bit too tight to the net there. Um, not too many of those balls are going to come down right along the net. Um, I think he might be too used to uh, uh, taking hits from uh, the likes of AJ Salmon with his monster angle. Uh, <laughs> Here we are, Jack McMahon away for the serve. The crowd's gone quiet. Oh, that's a great serve there from Jack McManaway. Unfortunately, Kyle Smith didn't get touched, and it was a bit of a shank. Yeah, last minute call for him to take that. I think, uh, yeah, I think he needs to push up a little bit on this ball and uh, take a little bit more of the line. We know it's a top spin, and it's coming, coming cross court. Great pass there from Alex Lindbaum, and just split the block in there. One on one, Kyle Smith, very happy man. Executing Steve Hockey, getting the crowd to hype up. Those Canterbury Invitational boys just standing up in the crowds, going crazy. Oh, loss of passion. Loss of passion in the crowd here. 12 11 to Canterbury over Waikato. It's a one point game here. Oh, it's an ace serve there from Kyle Smith, a Waikato import. <laughs> Yeah, Kyle will be stoked with that one. Uh, <laughs> dropping just short, nice little float. He hasn't found much success in this game with his uh, topspin, and now he's finding a lot of success with his floater. Here he goes. And unfortunately, he set that out the back. You've, I think, hopefully that's the last time today, Luke, you're ever going to have commentators <laughs> You know, I, I'll, I'll apologise to Kyle after the game for that one. Uh, <laughs> oh, you put a curse on him. <laughs> All right, here we are. Pretty reliable uh, server here, Cody, Cody Tanner. Looks like uh, he might be looking to go back down the line. And that's a great serve there. Alex Limbaugh with a bit of a shank. Todd Dunlop on the Tom top Dunlop. of the hands. Using it and abusing it. Here it is, 14-12. Off the set from Kyle Smith. He oh, and if there's no man to finish it, Steve Hockey on Big the Steve. baseline. Calling for the clap. Looking to put it away here. It's charged up here, ladies and gentlemen. Steve's about to put the hockey in volleyball. That's a shank there. Falls to the line. Oh, there we go. Ladies and gentlemen, we have our National Tertiary Champs winners of 2022, the University of Canterbury. Wow. Uh, wow. What a great game. What, what a great game. game. What a way to finish it. Steve Hockey had a great game. He's the energy and the life of this team. Man, what more could you ask for for a gold medal match? I know these Waikato boys will be disappointed. They, they put up a great fight, and uh, uh, there's, there's nothing they should be disappointed about. They played a great game. Fantastic game there. Waikato making the, uh, taking out the uh, silver, and then uh, the Canterbury Invitational uh, will claim the bronze medal. Uh, so just look at that. Look at that etiquette right there, Luke. You know, making sure the referee's making sure, hey, second ref, come over here. You've got to make sure you shake hands with everybody. They're coming through now. Um, it's going to be a bit of an award ceremony, I believe. And so everyone will be dished their, their medals. Uh, so... You know, uh, thanks for tuning in to all those people who have been watching. You know, with, uh, me and Luke have been here since 8 o'clock this morning. Well, Luke a little bit later than that due to some technical difficulties. Uh, we've seen some really good volleyball here today. So just to kind of recap, though, with, uh, in the women's competition, we had uh, first place went to the Canterbury Women's. Uh, second place was Targo. Uh, I believe, do you know who came out uh, third in the third and fourth playoff for the women's? Uh, I know that Matthew University lost. Okay, so Waikato woman took it, Waikato took that out, be it. and then we have uh, Canterbury Invitational third place for the men's, Waikato second, and Canterbury first place.
nzsport.tv and Digital Vision Live work together to create multiple solutions for online broadcasting of sport events. We can interface seamlessly with all broadcast options including Sky Sport Live and Sky Sport Next and simulcast to social media and other live TV. Digital Vision Live has also developed our own platform that provides a reliable and consistent stream with superior quality and unlimited viewership as well as on-demand playback. Best of all, however, with everything we do, we can provide off-site production via remote studio or virtual server with mixing of multiple cameras, remote commentary and online scoring. This means a lower footprint at the venue and reduced costs. Anything live streaming and sport, you should be talking to us. We are sure we can help.